Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll start in three minutes. Thank you. You can all hear this in the WebEx session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we please take our seats? We're about to start. It's quarter past 10. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second day of the um, multi-stakeholder advisor group meeting. Uh, and let's just start. Uh, I'll hand it over to Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I don't need to go over the, um, you know, orders of speaking and how to attract attention. Just please remember to um, say your names clearly for the scribes and also for the um, remote participation. Thank you. Thank you, Chengatai. Um, I, yeah, I, I like just getting into the work as well. Um, having said that, I do want to make one um, kind of intervention specific to the online participation. Um, I, I, 
I think there's still, you know, a, a concern or a thought that somehow the online participants are being grouped and, and put at the back end of the list. Um, and I want to say that that's not what we're trying to do, and we don't think it's what our process is. Um, what tends to happen here in the physical room is that, you know, a, a topic will come up and it's open, and all of a sudden ten flags go up. And those are, of course, the flags that are noted here on the list that the Secretariat is keeping. And then maybe by the time the online participants, you know, note in the WebEx room that they'd actually like the floor, there's already 10 and it feels like they are at the back end. I'm not quite sure how we, how we fix that. I'm open to any suggestions, um, particularly from uh, the Secretariat or people in the, in the list. But I will say that, you know, the Secretariat is sitting right here in front of us and when we get a request from them, it goes right in the place in the list in which we've received, received the request. But um, perhaps um, Ginger and I had some emails last night. Perhaps we can find a way to kind of do that a little bit better. But I, I just want to make it very clear that there is no intent to just put the online participants, you know, at the, at the back end of the list. And if there are any suggestions um, over the course of the day here with respect to how to improve that, then um, please get them in and we'll weave them in as we can. Um, so with that... Um, I'm posting the first order of business, of course, is to um, adopt the agenda for the day. These two days' agendas all kind of overlap, and they run together, and the topics are in and out. And I tried to um, put just a bulleted agenda up that would identify the things that we um, need to get through for the course of the day today. I think in, in doing this last night, it also kind of indicated to me that I think we could probably follow um, uh, what I would say, at least the more usual practices I'm aware of in setting agendas, which is set the agenda and make it clear what the purpose is of the agenda item. Do we need a decision? Is it for discussion? Is it brainstorming? Is So I think we can do that for future agendas and maybe make that more clear. Um, so it should be um, in the WebEx chat room and displayed here. What I'm proposing is um, I've got just a couple of um, remarks to try and just kind of organize us for the day a little bit. Um, give Thomas the opportunity um, to see if there's anything he wants to add or, of course, comment on here specific to the agenda. One of the things we need to do is to come to the main theme or the title. If you've been following the discussion on the MAG list, I think we have sort of moved away from a theme discussion to a title. And, and um, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. I think that may allow us a little more room to really develop some interesting themes, real good themes. And Ginger had an excellent point on the... Um, uh, Maglis yesterday. Um, we have an open question on whether or not we want to allow the workshop proposers to tag their proposals as we did last year and once the MAG has made their selection that sort of determines the, the tracks or sub-themes or do we want to go back to the previous year's practice where we had a small number of themes and ask the workshop proposals to identify which ones they saw their proposal aligning with. Um, I just think we need to make that a, a conscious decision. Um, we need a discussion on, uh, and I hope that's a short discussion. Um, we need a discussion of possible intercessional activities. Um, we have some assumptions around some of the BPFs that we'll get, get to. Um, we want to hear from Constance on the connecting and enabling the next billion, a possible phase three. Um, she sent a document to the MAG list a few weeks ago, which actually reminds me, I'm not sure that the new MAG members that came on the list three or four days ago would have seen that. So if you can recirculate it, if not. Um, DCs, um, maybe review those um, at a virtual meeting soon. Um, I think that's actually a, a very significant piece of work and not one that we're actually prepared to do here today yet. Um, lunch break. Um, there is a <coughs> doodle poll open to schedule the time for our second face-to-face -face MAG meeting. Um, it closes at 1 today, uh, Central European time, which would be 12 o'clock UTC. And we will um, then, is that right? We will then close it, um, we'll then bring the decision back into the room here. And of course, that will affect the timetable for the call for proposals in the workshop. So we'll update that appropriately as well. Um, one of the buried in the agenda items here over the last couple of days, there's lots of look at the NRIs, BPFs, DCs, figure out the integration, um, that sort of thing. Um, I know the NRIs have a meeting at lunch. I put in NRIs and just synergies um, there. I'm, you know, this is really to give the NRIs some time to 
talk to the MAG with respect to the things that are of, of interest to them, and that may end up being kind of more how do we actually work together in the future than specific requests. But if they have specific requests, that's good as well. Um, maybe take this opportunity to say, Anya, when she read out the NRI, that was not the secretariat doing the work. She was reading direct from a submission from the NRIs to the MAG. Um, I know there was a little bit of confusion at some point, um, but that was an NRI submission that Anya simply read out by, on the request of some of the NRI coordinators that were here to just kind of move the whole process along. Um, we need to come back to the working group on workshop evaluation and timetable. Um, quick discussion on formats, new formats. That obviously an, uh, impacts the um, call for proposal. And at this point in time, I'd like to ask if anybody has any other business or if they see anything um, substantial missing that we must get through today. We will likely start our two-week um, virtual calls effective leading here, so in, a, in not next week but the week after, and that's where we'll pick up a lot of this other work. So let me, um, I'm, I'm calling for approval of the agenda, but I'm not specifically calling you to approve this agenda. I'm asking if there are any other AOB, if there's anything else we think we need to get done today. So I have Thomas and then Leah. Chengatai, can you keep the list if it goes? Thank you, and, and good morning. There's just one, one thing I, that I don't think we can spend time today, but um, the issue of the strategic planning is, is a separate track probably that I would just ask everybody to think about how, how to somehow start moving this along. It, we will not do this by, by June or whatever, but whether you want to create a, a working group or some substructure that would start thinking about what, what this could be for the next nine years and, 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 and maybe develop some timelines or ideas what we would want to achieve or you would want to achieve on the strategic planning because the, if not there's always another urgency that would prevent that from happening and we won't have any strategic planning by 2024 uh, so I think that should could be a parallel track somehow just that we don't forget this thank you yeah, no I, I have a proposal for that in my opening remarks so um, I'll, I'll come to that. I don't want to open that discussion up yeah. now. I really want to see if there are any specific comments on the agenda. So I had Leah and then Elizabeth in the queue. Leah, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for preparing the agenda. Good morning, everyone. Uh, perhaps it's a similar comment to the one that, that, that Thomas made, and uh, it was a question around when would be an appropriate time to discuss potential other working groups or, um, well, intersessional activities uh, that do not fall under the, the ones that you listed there. Th this might include the working group on communications, any working group to, to look at implementing uh, improvements to the IGF, uh, um, and which could potentially be subsumed under the strategic planning. And I'm not sure, but I can see that relate, relates to each other. So if um, you could clarify when we would be able to discuss that, I think it would be important to get through that today. Thank you. I was thinking that we would do that under the MAG chair section, um, but if we need another section later on in the agenda, we can just slot it in. Is there anybody online, Anya? No? Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, so I think uh, we definitely feel very strongly that the strategic planning is essential and needs to be prioritized. And, um, uh, in addition to looking at um, the, the ideas that were discussed yesterday and having a separate working group track, I think is, is, is important to have um, that work both started and taken very you know, seriously and, and advanced forward. And, and, and I will offer um, to contribute and help with that. And I hear Thomas is very interesting, interested as well. So perhaps there's a, a proposal that we could explore in, in, in moving forward on that. I would also say that I think we've spoken about budget, but we haven't put anything into the thinking around how we address that. And, and um, it feels like an elephant sitting on a lot of lungs when we're talking about what projects we're, we're trying to achieve. And so I would, I would like us to somehow integrate that into that topic as well. Thank you. Are we okay moving forward with this agenda? And looking around the room, I see yes. Call the agenda approved. Thank you. Um, so let me address the, the question that obviously is top of people's mind, given, 
given um, how we've fallen into it here. There's a lot of work um, that the MAG and the community have in various ways, sometimes through their stock taking submissions, sometimes through the work and activities of last year, have indicated they think it's really important for the MAG to do. Um, some of that, and I use the word strategic work plan as the first step. Um, a lot of people I hear saying we need a strategic plan. Um, just to be clear that that may be what we decide we need, but that's not what we're setting out to do. And I think strategic plan means something very specific in some communities, business community or, or other communities. The first thing we need to do, I think, is recognize some of the very strategic key pieces of work in front of us. And they cover making sure we're progressing against the CSGD working group on improvements. They cover um, some of the retreat um, activities. Um, they cover certainly the funding um, and what activities we might do here. They absolutely cover outreach. How do we get, m they cover the um, WISIS plus 10 call for us to specifically um, increase um, outreach and specifically to developing countries. It called for improvement in the <coughs> modalities for uh, the working of the MAG. Um, we, I've got a whole list here of, of things that we need to find a way to, um, to address. What I would um, like to do is um, give Changatai and I a little bit of time to just map out for the MAG and the communities, review and approval, the pieces of work that we see, define what we see the pieces of work are from the stock taking, from all these discussions, and then put it in front of the MAG so we're all having the same discussion. There's a lot of things around what should the relationship be with the NRIs to the MAG. I think there's the same discussion on what should the relationship be between the BPFs and the MAG. Um, so I'd like to put all those pieces together in a way that we can have the discussion here about what the priorities are and how we address the priorities. And I think if we just charter a working group in the way we've traditionally chartered a working group and say they're going to go off and do these things, I'm not sure that's actually going to um, appropriately capture everything and appropriately prioritize everything. So I'm not suggesting we define it. I'm suggesting that Chengata and I, with the help of, you know, of various people, but it's not a formal working group, um, get organized so that we can put that discussion properly in front of the MAG and the community. That would say that we don't charter today a working group to go look at CSD, and we don't even specifically charter the working group on communications today. Um, I mean, I, I'm not sure I would say today that some of the things we were imagining doing in communications really should take priority over funding, for instance, or priority over um, some of the outreach activities, which is how do we get all the outputs of the um, IGF into the places where it can make a difference. We all say repeatedly we have limited resources, and I think if we just charter four or five working groups and send them off, it, it's not going to necessarily thoughtfully address the priorities we see here. So. Again, just to be clear, all we're asking is that um, Cheng and I and I work to pull those various threads together and try and prepare um, a discussion for the MAG, which would um, um, outline kind of a possible roadmap for how we actually work through those activities over the course of the year. Um, so I will um, stop there, I think. Um, I mean, I could talk about any one of those key things in pieces, but it's more a matter of how do we all get to the point where we know enough what the work is in front of us, we're agreed on the priorities, and um, we can figure out how we're going to structure the work across all the resources we have, you know, the MAG, but then also certainly the, the community as well. So um, Changatai has started a list here. Um, Miguel, Elizabeth, and Leah, that's a new flag. Miguel, you have the floor. It's Miguel Candia from Paraguay. Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning, everybody. Um, it's just uh, a general comment from now, uh, uh, particularly from and asking permission to make procedural mistakes now that it's uh, my first MAG meeting. Um, first, uh, what I can do offer is manpower, being here in Geneva. So I put myself on the line to, to be on, on the working groups that we may decide or not to create today, or even those who are already in, in place. I'm open to to work with uh, with everybody, so uh, let's trade on that. But and uh, according to the the way we see the issues, um, yes, uh, we I'm fully 
with you with the idea of giving you a bit more time to work with Chinatai on, on this structure. So put me on the list on that. And um, I think what one of the principles we have to follow is just uh, coherence between the different uh, organizations, sectors. And so we have to try and outreach as much as we can to reach out, not outreach, to reach out to, to the others as much as we can in order to fit from them and make our work a bit easier and more informed so we can have very good decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I very much appreciate the um, reflection and the proposal to um, work with the uh, different inputs and, and the comments of the MAG. Um, but I would like to add a suggestion perhaps to um, enrich or adapt that process a little bit. Uh, in the past, when we've had um, uh, work that we've been trying to do, whether it was on the intercessional, how do we move forward on these activities, we've actually used our presence here um, in, in, in one place to do meetings on the side and have you know, a bit of a brainstorm or, or some of the things that, that we've still done to a little extent. And, and I think it would be um, really useful, perhaps, rather than just leave it for you and, and, and the Secretariat to, to go off and digest all of those things, that we first have an interaction perhaps over a lunch period where um, a number of people could sit and work with you and talk about um, those uh, inputs that have come in and do a bit of a bouncing and back in terms of prioritization and discussion. because. I think one of the things that um, is, is difficult to understand in the process, at least for the time that I've been participating, is at what point are we actually making those priorities? And I kind of feel like that strategic uh, work plan discussion actually needs to factor in what is considered even among that list of priorities and, and um, to, to what end. And so I think to benefit from the, the communities that are here um, in, in person and to the extent that we can incorporate those online in, in, a, in a discussion and then come back um, with, a, with a further enriched um, thought process on that, um, I'd just like to put that out there. And I think we can see whether or not we can accommodate that. This room is already booked for a community grouping that was organized some weeks ago. So in terms of the online, that's probably not a possibility. Um, but just because we weren't going to go away and then appear a month later from a document without, you know, it, we wanted to be fully transparent and really um, get input, certainly from the MAG members um, and the community as well in terms of those priorities. And it's to, it's to think thoughtfully about that process. Um, you know, if there's, if there's people that can meet today and pull some things together, then I think, you know, that would be very, very helpful. Um, but I just want to make it clear that it's not, it's not a black box or something will appear in a, in, a, in a week or two. So it really is meant to properly engage. <coughs> we have Leah next. We have, sorry, Leah next in the queue, then Aubrey, and then we'll come back to the room here. Leah, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Oh, the red means that I'm on. Uh, yeah. Got it. It's early. First coffee. Um, so yes, thank you, thank you, Chair. I do appreciate um, that that um, it's important to to have a thoughtful approach to this and uh, for, for you and the Secretariat to think about how you are going to manage this process as well. We haven't done this before, um, so I, I I fully appreciate that. Um, Perhaps to add, um, I, I like Elizabeth's approach, and uh, I do think that it's important to actually have a completely open discussion among members about this, and perhaps to input into that process in an open way, rather than as a side session, if, if that's what Elizabeth, you were suggesting. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm understanding, uh, if I understood that well. Um, even in the process around how that happens, I think should be an open, open discussion. Um, I want to stress that I think it's important that we leave this meeting today with at least an agreement in principle that a MAG working group that will look at how we can support the improvements of the IGF is set up. And it, that, doesn't need to, that doesn't have to mean that we come up with it, go away and start drafting a charter. Uh, we could se sequence it in a way that once uh, there is a document that, uh, or a framework that you and Secretariat come up with in thinking how we can approach this, 
um, but that there's an agreement in principle so that people can go away and have in their heads that they'll be working on this so that we start um, building momentum. This is like the third year that we've talked about this and in 2015 I remember we said we can't do this because the WISIS review is coming up. In 2016 it was, well, let's, let's wait, the retreat is coming up, we can't do it, let's wait until, you know, the outputs of the retreat are done. Now we're saying, well, we need to come up with a document which will come and put all this together and to see what the priorities are. I'm just afraid that, you know, if we don't agree to do this and to have a group of MAG members who will dedicate their time, at least in principle at this point, to, to this work, that we will postpone this process further. And I would like to um, uh, dedicate my time and, uh, you know, say that I'm, I'm uh, happy to, to put time into that um, uh, into that work, as well as to assist you and the Secretariat and uh, contribute to the broader conversation about what the best way around this is. Thank you. No, then thank you, Leah. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that there will be some working groups um, actually established. There may be some other ways to do the work as well with, with kind of um, people more directly committed to taking the lead for this, depending on which particular task we're talking about. Um, you know, but I know sitting in this room today that if I say we need to go look at uh, item X, um, that I saw something in stock taking, a fairly, fairly significant piece of this room won't really understand what that work is or what it entails. So I think the first thing we have to do is to say these are the key pieces of work we think we've heard the MAG say need to get done. There's been a lot of topics around emerging, a lot of discussion around emerging topics and how we might do that. There's been um, a number of very clear statements that says we really want to understand um, how we take advantage of international Geneva and how we take advantage of international Geneva so that it helps us advance our work, build more outreach, build more partnerships, be more relevant, and obviously, um, you know, support um, objectives of the Swiss hosts as well. So I think we need to think some of those those things through. And it really is just to outline kind of the major pieces of work so we can start to understand what's in front of us and then figure out how we structure and organize it. Don't intend to do this in a, in a black box. So I'm sure there will be working groups. I think there's some things we might be able to, to move forward even a little more, you know, more maybe informally or, or directly. Um, Aubrey, you have the floor. Aubrey's online, so you'll need the mic. Okay, waiting for people to put on the mic. Tell me when it's okay to speak. Am I okay to speak? We can hear you, and we have okay, uh, earphones fine. on. Thank you. Uh, th this, this, this is uh, Ari Doria joining you from what we euphemistically call online participation. I've started to think of it more as aspirational participation. I recommend to all of you that you take a, a meeting uh, maybe one a year, maybe every couple of years, as an online participant and, and see what it feels like. It, it has a very different feeling th than being there. Uh, in terms of people going off and having discussions at lunch and doing stuff, I know it's wonderful. I love doing it myself. But I think one of the things we should think about is there's lots of portable ways for us to make mini uh, online participation uh, possibilities using a laptop and an external speaker slash microphone. Those things exist. So I'm suggesting that perhaps in the future some of us bring some of that gear along so that when we want to have an impromptu meeting, we can gather online people as well as the people who are lucky enough to have funding to get to the to to get to be in the room. So, you know, and often I can scratch together the funding or you know, deficit finance from credit cards to get there. This time I couldn't, so fine. Um, on the DCs, had been ready to talk about what's going on, but certainly willing to push that off to our next meeting. I'll let the DC, you know, coordinating uh, group know that that there there wasn't time for it in, in this consultation and, and that it's moved to another uh, meeting. I, I'm sure they'll understand. Uh, I had, while well, people at the cocktail party last night, I had started work on a very bare bones charter for a working group on improvements. And I have sent it out to the mag list at this point, realizing that it's not something we're going to do. But perhaps when, uh, 
you know, Lin and Chengatai are sitting there figuring out what we should do. It's something that they can use as input. I'm starting to believe that we're making working groups too heavy duty so that we can't just sort of start a group with a basic charter and, and have it evolve and actually get work started. I very much endorse what I said about, it's been three years. I guess it was my frustration last night that said, let me start a charter. This would be the second one I've started for this work because last year when a charter was started, was, no, 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 no. We have the DESA retreat. We can't do it until we've had that. Then we can't do it until we've had the report from the retreat. Then, and, 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 I, and I very much, you know, hope that uh, when Changatai and Lynn start work on what our priorities are, it will be high on the list. Thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. Um, I mean, it is indeed high on the list, and in fact, I think um, would help us all move forward through the IGF work if, in fact, we were able to address it quickly. Um, so I have Igor in the room, Brazil. Thank you. Uh, well, Brazil strongly supports the idea that we discuss a little bit about this collectively here. I don't know uh, what is the best shape we can find one here, I'm certain. And, uh, there are issues that we think are particularly interesting to, to consider. Uh, uh, for example, we have mentioned here uh, the interaction between the IGF and the WISIS process. Uh, of course, the WISIS plus 10 is already passed, uh, but there are still aspects of, of the WISIS process that are very important at this moment. And the IGF is itself a result, uh, one of the most important results, in my opinion, of the WISIS process. But there's another ongoing discussion, which is the working group on enhanced cooperation, which is, of course, a totally separate track with a different proposal or different objectives. But uh, Brazil is uh, very much interested in exploring uh, a discussion about what the IGF this year could uh, contribute to the uh, working group on enhanced cooperation in terms of promoting discussion. And we are actually pretty open to ideas. We don't have any specific expectations. But I think the, that even the international atmosphere, atmosphere of Geneva might be a helpful uh, input to this possibility, and then maybe we could gather more views, more opinions, because as, as people who follow this from, from some time know, this is not a very easy discussion. It's not that obvious to find a way for building consensus on this field. So maybe that's something the IJF could contribute to also. Thank you, Igor. I mean, if there was a you know, a specific request or something f further um, um, in mind, then it would be helpful to actually, you know, lay that out a little bit. But I appreciate you bringing it, bringing it here. Thomas has the floor and then um, Lee. Thank you, and thanks to Igor for, for bringing this up. Uh, having been in that debate since 2003, uh, I know what you mean with this is not an easy process. And if the IGF can help, through providing some space for whatever the working group thinks is, is, is of help to it. I think it would make sense. I would support that, that we provide for some space in whatever form uh, it needs to be discussed. So I guess also a concrete proposal of what the working group chair thinks would be most useful to him, but that we can have a look at it would be very, uh, very welcome. Thank you for that. Thank you, Igor. Well, Lee and Christine are sitting next to each other, and I, I guess there's some negotiation going on between the two of them. They were, they were the next two in the list, but um, Christine's going to go first, and then, and then Lee. Christine, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. I just uh, would like to express my appreciation and full support for uh, your proposal. Um, I think that uh, this is not uh, an alternative to uh, further brainstorming and input from either a working group of the full or the full MAG uh, discussions. I would rather th see this as a complementary effort, and I am confident that you and Chengetai together 
could put together a sort of zero draft or you know, a starting point uh, document um, on which we could uh, further uh, build. Uh, but I think it's important that precisely um, as, because, as we have been saying, uh, years go, goes on, months goes on very quickly. We need uh, you know, a basis, uh, something concrete, which then we can comment on. But uh, this document could help us uh, better structure uh, our work, organize organize ourselves and maybe we could even think about, depending on how you want to do this document, but maybe we could even think about different subgroups working on different elements of this broader and overarching uh, uh, plan or roadmap. So I think it's, it's important to uh, start as, as soon as possible and have something in front of us so that we can be more fruitful in our, in our discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Lee, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Lee Hibbard from Council of Europe. Um, this is an important discussion for me um, as we look forward um, because I, my job is to, like all of our jobs, is to go back to our homes, to our, to our organisations and to explain what happened, what was agreed, what's the added value of coming and bringing uh, people, uh, spend money on, on, on this event. It's also a challenge because to explain the added value is, as we discussed yesterday, not, not so easy it's always. And uh, it depends on, on my ability to communicate that added value often. Um, that's one thing. Um, but when you're dealing with different organizations or different bodies, there is an, a, an, a need for a certain formality. Um, in the past, the Council of Europe has you know, adopted texts with the words Internet Governance in, Internet Governance Forum. We've supported the WSIS Plus 10 review which we you know, proposed, which actually agreed between a block of 47 states, to, uh, you know, a 10-year renewal, which, is, you know, which I'm, I think would have, which must have helped in negotiations. Um, but every year we need to go back and re review and re uh, reassess what's the added value, why should we take part. Uh, organizing events is, 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 a, is, a, is a shared approach, and it's also very time-consuming. Our colleagues don't have that time. They're willing to take part. They're willing to give their experts. They're willing to mobilize their networks, um, but in a sort of a, a time-efficient way. Um, negotiating a workshop between different, different organizers is, is difficult. So people tend to back out a little bit. That's just one small example. But if we being, if being a multi-annual and looking for the next few years, um, there's a need to renew, the, let's say, the relationships between different bodies, organizations. And I, I think... You, uh, apart from my job, my work, I, I would really encourage you to think about the, the different organizations and their resources, how do you optimize them. I think simply by um, seeing who they are and what they can do. Um, uh, coming to the, coming, for example, formally, uh, there's a need to send a letter to formalize uh, needs. Sec I mean, for example, just a small example, we have a, an internet governance strategy which has a mandate for different actions which was agreed by the member states. It's written down, it's agreed, and, and we then budget the resources to, that, to those actions. We, we all know about that. Um, that allows us to do things. We need that mandate uh, in terms of the Internet Governance Forum as well. We don't have that written down. We have a general support for it, but really going further with resources and mobilization and maybe coupling that with what's the real added value would create a, could create a better partnership between us and you if you really want to optimize. So coming to Strasbourg, for example, having a meeting, talking about that and really underlining that and maybe even writing something down could be a really important way forward uh, in terms of a multi-annual going forward approach. Um, uh, to uh, avoid it being too much discretion uh, and people thinking this and people thinking that and consulting capitals and coming back and forth. If we write it down and create the mandate more specifically, we could have more in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. And I think we've come to the last individual in the queue. Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you, um, Lee, and good morning all. My name is Arnold van Rijn, Netherlands government. Um, just would like to support your, your proposal to come forward with a discussion paper on improvements. Um, I think it's worthwhile for, for starting this, uh, this debate. It must be a structured debate. Uh, there's a lot on the table, uh, as we all know, the CSD uh, list of improvements, 
We also have the, um, the important one internet report of the Build Commission. It worked for two years on uh, the outlook, how will the internet uh, look in, in the next 10 years. And they came up with interesting uh, recommendations, including uh, in the field of uh, internet governance. So that could be taken on board as well. Uh, in practice, we have a lot of uh, activities going on, uh, the working group on communication. Uh, we have to have discussions and still have on the uh, sustainability of the, uh, um, the, the finance part of uh, the IGF secretariat. We have capacity building uh, discussions. So we need a, a, a coherent structure for the future to, to start a debate and to come forward because we lost already one year, more than one year, and it's time, I think, to, uh, to have a kickoff. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Um, I'm just going to make a, a final comment and then try and close this to see if there's enough um, support to, to go forward in this, in this manner. We've heard a lot from returning MAG members. We have 12 new MAG members, almost 20 percent of our MAG. They were actually appointed three days ago. Um, I'm sure they haven't been able to fully digest the materials that, and the discussions that took place over the last year to understand what they should care about, what the community cares about, or what the priority is. I think one of the things we need to do is to think about what a, a better transition is, and that should come under the um, uh, uh, improvements for the MAG working group, between the, the last year's MAG and this year's MAG. Um, I've had a lot of discussions both with returning and new MAGs that have very different opinions of um, sort of what our responsibilities are to BPFs and DCs. Are we still bound by the Tunis agenda or not? Some believe that that should be sort of left to the side now the time has passed. So, you know, in, in, there's that range of, of um, I guess, awareness of the issues and where we are and what the relationship is and the responsibilities of the MAG are that I think we need to do a little bit better job of, of laying out um, and clarifying a little bit. And I think that's a, a piece of work um, that it's, it's the fact that that hasn't been um, done well enough, that there wasn't a lot of time for the new MAG members coming on, that I think is actually putting some, some um, kind of confusion in the work with respect to the role and how we progress some of these. Um, I also think a transition plan as the last MAG goes out, as the last BPF coordinators finish at the end of the year, I think we actually need to um, think about some things they could do that would actually help set the BPF discussions up for subsequent years. And they actually tend to do that in their reports. It's just that it's buried in the thousands of pages of various stock-taking reports. And again, I'm not sure um, the MAG is adequately aware of um, all of those. So I think we can do some things to kind of, um, uh, maybe it's an orientation or it's a transition plan between the old MAG and the new MAG that would actually help set a little bit of the kind of the operating framework so we were starting from a more consistent base. And I'd be really interested in hearing from um, any of the incoming MAG members um, what things in particular you would find helpful, which things weren't clear. Um, you know, if it's not clear where you look to get information or, or some of those things, then, then please, um, you know, let us know so that we can actually um, strengthen and improve that process as well. We need to get all the, um, all the MAG members participating. There's an awful lot of work to do with uh, five MAG staff and a, a part-time voluntary chair. So I think we just need to, to um, organize it thoughtfully, as I said earlier. I'm sure there would be more discussion on the MAG list, but do we actually have support to go forward, um, start a process, Chiang Kai, with um, the MAG that will actually figure out how we actually structure and organize and prioritize this work? I see lots of heads um, nodding yes, so thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, again, we will do it with full transparency. You have our email addresses and our phone numbers, and, and I think is... Lee or Christine said, um, if there are people who can get together today or in other venues or places and, and really brainstorm and send some thoughts, and please, please do. This isn't to stop that at all. Um, in fact, we need to hear from it, and I think just integrate it into one package that we can bring back to the MAG as a whole. Um, Carolyn, you have the floor, and after that, I think we'll move to the next item. Thank you, Chair. Um, with respect to your question about um, bringing the new, the incoming MAC members up to speed so that we can all participate and contribute to this really important um, discussion in terms of improvement, perhaps what um, 
uh, can be made available for the new MAC members is really a list of the reference documents um, that we should be looking at um, as well as the challenges, right, so that we can all be on the same page. Um, that would be really great. Thank you. And I like that particular, like the, the challenges or the uh, key activities in front of the MAG or something. I think that's a good idea. Um, next on the agenda was to see whether or not there was anything Thomas actually wanted to um, say here. Um, n not not on, on what we just discussed. <clears throat> Um, I think there's a, there's a few things. Uh, first of all, I need to tell you that I have to leave uh, at lunchtime because I have some other obligations later today in Zurich and that takes some time to get there. Um, but uh, Switzerland will still be here, so Jorge will, will take my place. And we work together extremely closely, so he knows everything that I know and more or less vice versa. Um, one, one thing that um, I don't know whether this is the, this is the, the right time, but... Um, we uh, have been thinking a little bit about um, the discussion how to operationalize uh, creating incentives for people to use the experience, uh, the international experience in a number of fields present here in Geneva. And something that, that uh, you could think about is uh, when, you, uh, when we continue to work on the, on the uh, selection criteria and this process about the workshops that we could um, add an additional non-binding uh, criteria, but add something that we would propose uh, contact points to, to uh, expert institutions here in Geneva that would be available um, for those who, who uh, propose workshops and uh, that we could create links um, where they could uh, uh, get in touch with the uh, competent institutions and think tanks and, and expert bodies here in Geneva and, and then uh, basically help uh, create incentives that they would help bring in new people, people from outside of the, of the core internet governance uh, circles, and whether that would, an incentive would be done through, uh, that they can score points in terms of integrating, let's say, local expertise, um, or in whatever form that, that would need to be done, that is something that can be discussed, but that we somehow facilitate uh, access to the expertise present here, um, but also create incentives that this is actually being done because normally the, the things is everybody th says that yes this should be done but nobody knows how to do it and so that we think about concrete ways in how to to facilitate this and I wouldn't see this just as a, as a, a one-off in terms of, of of course there's a special reason here with Geneva for having a lot of international experts but that could actually such a system or such an incentive could actually also be used for future IGFs to, to raise the awareness that you bring in local experts from the region or the country where future IGFs will be, be going to held in order also to benefit from the fact that the IGF is moving around in the world that we do not always have the same, uh, we know them all, experts talking on the same issues, but actually get some diversity based on the, on the knowledge present in, uh, and on the experience present in the country um, that we get this into the workshops and the sessions in, in a little bit more uh, structured or, or incentived way. This is just something for you to, to think about, um, and I think we would have a good reason to start this here in, in Geneva. Uh, that would also help us uh, in the sense that we will, uh, the, the Swiss government together with, with, with the chair and with, with UNOC and, and with DESA, we will try to approach uh, these bodies in Geneva from, from a, a top-down level and, and sensitize them if the same is happening in parallel from bottom up, i.e. through those who are working on the issues, connecting with those working on the same issues here in, in Geneva, um, this is normally the best because if you only do one, one thing, either sensibilize from top down or bottom up, things get stuck somewhere in the middle. And if it comes from both sides, I think that, that may be helpful. So this is one of the things that uh, I was trying to find a moment uh, to share with you. Um, there may be others that pop up, uh, uh, for the, but for the time being, uh, our main, let's say, goal is, is, is still to, to how to make best use of Geneva for the next IGF. And, and, and this is something that we will uh, put a lot of energy on from, from our side. Thank you very much. So just a, um, a question, a follow-up question, Thomas. I think that sounds really interesting and really excellent. I mean, I know when, you know, I've tried to do panels and or sessions and other events, you're always trying to find 
differing perspectives and new blood and new voices and new faces and of course just the fact that it's new <laughs> means it's it can be hard to, to access um, so you're actually suggesting that you would actually um, look at putting a resource available that if somebody was trying to develop a session that needn't be a panel it might just be you want some type of expertise in the office in the um, audience that you would engage a lot of the sessions last year were much more interactive and actually called on people from the um, that somebody could say I'm looking for somebody preferably be from this international organization with this type of experience and you would actually help make that linkage is that I don't want to be over subscriptive but I want to make sure people really understand yes thank, thank you for this question well um, to make it very clear this should not be a, a must this is an offer it's not an obligation but I think it's an opportunity that we should try and, and, and work out how actually this is going to be done so what we what we are thinking is is um, when contacting these organizations and, 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 and we will reach out uh, together with the support of our foreign ministry and, and of UNOC etc reach out try and identify the most relevant let's say institutions uh, organizations processes here in Geneva we will try to find out who, uh, like a contact point from their side or a focal point, and, and maybe we can put together a, a document also with the help of, of, of Diplo, of the Geneva Internet uh, Platform, because they have like monitored uh, an, a number of, 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 of institutions already in Geneva for quite some time, that we would put together maybe something like a list of what are relevant institutions in our view. That would be, of course, a non-binding non list as well. What are contact points that we could we could offer so that this can be easily consulted? And if somebody wants to to have a meeting on 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 on, uh, on labour and and digitisation, how labour is transformed, that they get a contact point from the ILO. And if there's a think tank that is working on new governance models for I don't know what, that you can find this. We need to see how we, how we do this, let's say, uh, electronically or what kind of database, because we don't want to create uh, something that is too big, but something fairly simple, uh, maybe just a simple Excel sheet with, with a, a name, the, the mandate of the institution, and a contact email address and a phone number, something very low threshold um, that, that people can use. So, so this is something that we developed in the, in the past days, uh, discussing this and listening to, to the discussions here. And it's an idea to, to just how to operationalize the fact that we have these people here, because the fact that they are here doesn't mean that you actually know who they are, what they do, and how to get to them. So we are trying to f develop a structure or something that actually contacts can be made. Thank you. So it's to build the linkage, not to suggest a speaker, and the, the choice of the speaker and the need and everything happens between the uh, session organizers and the entities, not the... So yeah, it's not to tell the session organizers you need to take person A or B from that institution. That's not the plan, but to offer them that they find people um, with expertise. So that's the idea. And we're happy to receive feedback on how to do it <laughs> from, from all of you because you have been probably organizing workshops and sessions. So you know how people look for, for experts and, and, and look for diversity, look for missing elements and so on and so forth. So this is, again, it's an offer. Thank you. It looks like you might be going to get some, some yeah. input. Okay. I have Elizabeth um, next in the queue. Elizabeth, you have the floor. Very much. Um, I really like this idea. Thank you, uh, Thomas, for proposing it. I, it, it also struck me that um, we are in Geneva and our MAG meetings are going to be in, our MAG meeting, at least next one, will be in Geneva. And that is a opportunity to create a primer for some of these communities and um, well I know we do often go out and share our message about what the IGF is with some of these um, institutions in different ways and different formats perhaps we could try something different which is to invite them to share the angle or the element of what they're doing that's relevant to internet perhaps in the program of the consultation we could find a moment to have um, a quick expose to some of the different organizations that we could collectively identify as having a unique or, or, or interesting contribution to the or link to the work that we do because I think um, when you when you want someone to know more about what you're doing to first understand what part of what you're doing is relevant to them could help all of us um, start that dialogue in a way that could be very fruitful. And um, thinking also about the WISIS forum timing, there are so many of those organizations that are already linked into that activity, perhaps 
um, it could just be a good a, a, a good opportunity. Thomas just said yes. <laughs> um, Liesl, you're next in the queue, and then I have Miguel. Um, thank you, and good morning, everybody. I don't mean to be quite so tactical um, this meeting as I seem to have been, but um, because I was asked to take a stab at um, revising the workshop proposal form, since I seem to care so much about it, <laughs> um, um, it strikes me in this context that along the lines of Constance's uh, intervention and contribution yesterday about including um, something in the workshop proposal that asks the proposer if they'd like to have something integrated from the DCs, the BPFs, the CENB, or the NRIs, um, that we could also provide a voluntary drop-down, you know, offer if you would like um, any information about uh, Geneva institutions or um, uh, think tanks. They may not need to be just be Geneva ones, but to go to this point directly. Um, I've sort of put that in a voluntary section of the revise, of my stab at the revised proposal plan. And that may be some way to do it on the very front end because by the time we meet again in June, it will be maybe, you know, sort of, sort of on the back end of workshop proposer thought process with regard to something like this. Um, so um, anyway, I offer, I offer that as a very tactical way to possibly get to um, at least a mechanism for approaching this idea. Thank you, Liesl. I think that sounds very interesting, and it, it kind of puts the connection at the right place as well when they're doing the proposal. Sorry, and if I just may add, um, you might recall in Raja's description yesterday about sort of the time frame and more front end work as well. One, I, one thing that we had come up with was the um, online collaboration space for speakers and proposers and things like that. Um, so that could also be utilized for this kind of engagement. Thank you, Liesl. Uh, it, Miguel Candia is in the queue and then Renata. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much to Switzerland for the proposal of having such a list. Uh, that list of, of contacts would actually, I think, would be of very uh, useful nature. And just to add to that, not only it would be nice to have in that kind of database or source of information for, to get from, uh, we should talk to the um, special rapporteurs on different issues, you know, those appointed by the, for example, the Human Rights Council. Uh, for example, on privacy, or the, the internet as a human right, uh, or the, the effects of uh, the internet on the rights of freedom of expression or assembly, and so on and so forth. The, why is this in, a bit different from the others? It's because they are independent. They are not actually, uh, well, they are a part of the, uh, the UN system, of course, but they, uh, they are, follow no uh, instructions other than their own work or at least they should. So that's why I would uh, think to add them, as well as those uh, that would be special representative of the uh, Secretary General, for example. That would, of course, those who have, you know, links with our, uh, with our work here. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Renata, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Renata, I'd just like to come back again to the theme of IGF improvements and intersectional activities. There was a draft already sent by Avri to the list, uh, supported by a Swiss host country chair, which brings few points to this, and I'd like to suggest we build up on it. Um, I'd also like to support Elizabeth's point on reaching out to IGOs, uh, to intergovernmental organizations, and highlight the importance of intersessionals for this. The BPF Gender, for instance, partnered with ITU in its Equals campaign, bringing this important effort to IGF even more. In that sense, I'd also like to note that uh, we need to support the advancements of the workshop of the Working Group on Workshop Evaluation because they are much needed to identify and ensure stakeholder balance and other diversity criteria do exist in the final IGF program. And last but not least, the, about the new MAG members, 
uh, not only I think it's important that they get to know the history of the IGF, but they do, um, uh, I would invite them all to have an active role in the intersessional activities. So DCs and BPFs could greatly use new energy, and we have a very uh, interesting uh, new MAG member uh, group that would be uh, fantastic for these initiatives. Thanks. Thank you, Renata. There are many good points in there. Thank you. Chengatai, did you have a comment? Shagoon, and then we'll move to the um, next agenda item. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm sorry for coming a little bit uh, late. I want to contribute to the hygiene improvement and, inter, um, and uh, intersection activities. I'll be speaking from the point of view of uh, the need to strengthen the working group on communication and health uh, You recall that last year, the group was set up um, with a mandate to improve hijack communication and increase hijack information penetration and health risk. And at the same time, raising awareness and bringing whole stakeholders to the knowledge and values of IGL, while uh, motivating participation and engagement in IGL both in person and remotely. Um, in as much that uh, we have set um, terms of reference that should have been the base of our goal, we are yet to really achieve uh, much of what we have agreed in that terms of reference. Um, I want to call for re-strengthening of that working group because it's a very important uh, group within the hygiene which it can uh, actually help us to strengthen the hygiene improvement. Uh, let me also relate it to the hygiene retreat the goal of the uh, working group resonated well with the hygiene retreat areas of concern, specifically to the community heart reach, which includes uh, improvement in the overall preparatory process of the hygiene through enabling more relationships and communication with NIR, improving heart reach and solicitation of the community input, including measures to engage two stakeholders who are currently unengaged and enhancing new concrete ideas and innovation that can be, be best uh, implemented to communicate hygiene values across all stakeholders group. Now, there are critical three areas in which uh, we, uh, that may probably form the basis for us to restrengthen this working group. Um, I would like to point your attention to that, that the, uh, we did the analysis of the hygiene retreat and we discovered that the, the principle that has centered on relevance of HIGF to stakeholders and the accessibility of HIGF information in a more understandable way and sustainability of IGF outreach effort. So, it, taking it from there, I want to propose that um, we, we need to re, uh, uh, reconsider the need for us to have the working group and at the same time to create the opportunity for new man member to be part of that working group. And um, I also would like to support the uh, proposition from Mr. Van, who will talk about the need for us to strengthen that. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, Shagun. Um, I mean, if your proposal is that we reconsider the need for us to have the working group, um, at the same time as potentially offering, then I think we can maybe take that discussion to the mailing list and um, give the, both certainly the returning MAG members, but also the new MAG members, um, any additional information that they need or time to consider that. And we can just just continue to move it forward on the mailing list or at one of our next virtual meetings, if that's okay with you. Okay. Thank you, Shagun. Uh, the next item was the main theme or title. And um, Ginger made a very good point um, on the mailing list last night in that um, I think when we, historically it's been a theme as we saw, and it really was pretty um, sort of topic or substance specific. Um, I think a lot of the discussion yesterday sort of moved to how do we help people understand why they should be at the IGF, why they should care about the IGF, why it's important to them, what they do, so that we get their, instance in the, their interest in the first 
instance. And I think that was a little bit of, or if not all of Thomas's point and kind of the question mark, which was to, to draw people in. Maybe we are at the point where we're actually talking about a title, and I think there have been some good suggestions um, on the list. I, I saw, I can't obviously follow the list in real time here, but I saw some suggestions last night from um, Miguel and Israel, um, and there may have been others as well. I'm not eliminating, I'm just not necessarily fully caught up on the, on the list this morning, um, which I think we're sort of moving in that vein as well. Um, so what I want to do is put a, a question to the room, which is if, if we think we could go forward um, in the next stage of our call for proposals with a title, um, that would actually give us a little bit more time to actually figure out what a main theme um, or a more descriptive paragraph is, either on the basis of, of um, polling, which is something Miguel um, mentioned yesterday, or on the basis of the MAG doing a little more work in terms of strategically, these are some of the areas that we think really should be featured. Um, so to, to be concrete, um, uh, I think where we've kind of evolved to through this discussion is the proposals are mostly more like titles, not um, themes per se, is that we go forward in the call for proposal with some sort of title um, and um, we identify the themes more as a result of um, some more strategic discussions around the MAG in terms of the sort of direction they think the IGF should take and obviously um, through some community consultation processes as well. Theoretically, we wouldn't need to have the um, more specific theme until probably June timeframe, at which point we would have had the time to look through the session proposals and, and really have had some good substantive input um, to what the overall kind of program of the IGF should be. So let me just um, see if, first of all, that question is clear, and then there are um, a few flags up here in the room as well. Let me just ask first, to, um, do I need to, before people express an opinion on that, is the question clear? Okay, so let me just go to um, anybody in the room here who needs clarity on the question as opposed to expressing an opinion. So Liesl, Sorry, um, the, it, it, the question I think is not clear generally and we're not getting help, I'm, so, I'm afraid. Sorry guys in San Francisco. <laughs> um, but the transcription isn't working well, so it's hard to follow even along um, that line as well. So I'm sorry if hopefully I'm not the only one that would request that you sort of repeat the charge again. Thank you. <laughs> um, Look at all those sorry. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> um, okay, so let me, let me try and say again, I think the way the discussion evolved yesterday um, out of kind of a natural intent to say we want to tell people why they should care about the IGF, why they should come and participate in the IGF. Um, and I, I mean, I think that was part of Thomas's comment about, you know, the question mark. It was to, to draw them in and to pull them in as opposed to just three or four, you know, the, the traditional sort of theme we've had. Um, and Ginger's the one who actually called that out specifically last night on the list. If, so the proposal is, um, partly since we haven't really had time to talk in any substantive manner about the themes and the content and where we think the IGF would go um, nine months from now in terms of substantive content, that we actually go forward for this IGF with a title, a catchy title to use um, Ginger's words and that we actually um, use another process to think about what the themes would be and that we would work towards establishing that theme in the June timeframe um, as we go through the um, workshop for proposals. That allows us to take advantage of something Miguel suggested yesterday, which is um, some <coughs> polling for the, the kind of topics and sort of things that were um, of interest. So I'm, I'm trying to clarify the terminology between titles and themes and if we agree that that's approach, because what, what we seem to be sort of, I think, centering on on the list are things which really are more catchy titles as opposed to themes. And, and so I'm trying to call that out specifically. So let me, uh, I hope that I <laughs> clarified, did it? Okay, so now we'll go back to the list of people who had comments. We had um, Israel, Haujun, um, Raquel, Rasha, Liesl and Renata. Um, okay, Israel, you have. Thank you. 
Israel Rosas for the record. Um, in my opinion, we could have a catchy title that reflects the intention of the work of the MAG, mainly uh, uh, about the, the opportunity that represents uh, having the IEF here in Geneva, uh, about the outreach with, um, with new folks in the, in the internet ecosystem, in, in the internet community. For that reason, I suggested a new uh, title this morning, like the IEF uh, 2017, shape the internet, the internet you want. So if some people want uh, an internet for peace, it's okay. Or for development, or for health, or for innovation, I think it's broad enough to, to cover uh, a lot of, uh, of issues. Thank you. So I, I guess that was support for a catchy title and some suggestions on what that might be. Haojun, you're next in the queue. Madam Chair, uh, are we going back to discussion on the what kind of uh, the, uh, top title we should have for the IGF next, uh, at the end of the year, right? Um, as I said, that uh, you know, the, our discussion at the during the, all the workshops. Uh, all these activities should be centered on uh, peace and development. That's, uh, I think, it's uh, agreed by m most of our colleagues here. But uh, in the meantime, we need to have an attractive title. Um, and I feel that to, to use things like internet in the, you know, because IGF is, you know, is there already in the, you know, yeah, it's IGF meeting, so it's self-explaining. Uh, so we don't need to repeat words like internet in the, in the, in the title anymore. Mm -hmm. And the, I personally very much feel that internet is a very outdated word. It's, it belongs to the 20th century. Now we are in the 21st century. We are in, in the cyber age, and it means a lot more than internet. It means robots, AIs, big data, and it, it also have something to, to do with space security, satellites there, and, and the concept is, is very complicated, and the internet itself cannot cover that. So I would like to say that we have to, you know, um, have something to reflect this new reality, to say that we are in the cyber age or cyber community. Um, I'm flexible with uh, whatever you use, uh, shaping or massaging um, or forging, um, so long as it's uh, not only catchy. It's I think we to attract the the the, 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 the biggest possible audience. I think we need to not only make it a bit, a bit catchy, but also sexy, and also catches the essence of uh, our meeting. So um, I was thinking a lot last night, so I, I don't have much sleep last night. Um, can we say that uh, a shaping a cyber community for all? You know, it's self-evident that we are working for a better internet or better cyberspace, but uh, the purpose of doing that is to improve the welfare of the maximum possible amount of people of the world. So to, to have a title like um, shaping or forging a cyber community for all, that sounds uh, more inclusive and under such a title or topic we can have sub themes which uh, covers security uh, development etc etc thank you thank you um, we'll just continue getting both feedback on um, whether or not people are happy going with a title and theme to be determined later and um, suggestions for themes so we'll just keep throwing them out and go through the rest of the queue here um, Raquel, you're next, then Rasha. Okay, 
Now we go. Thank you, Madam Chair. So Constance and I also had a long breakfast, perhaps not too much coffee this morning, uh, trying to, you know, go through um, yesterday afternoon discussions. Um, I think, first of all, for the title, um, I think we are pretty close to, to, to have something uh, catchy and sexy, and uh, we are all aligned on, on that trend. Um, uh, so I will focus more on the themes, uh, the thematic approach, which seems to be the core one. Perhaps we went the other way uh, through what uh, Lynn was proposing. Um, so we had the rich discussions and many of the topics were from, the themes were throwing on. We could pick a uh, future uh, of the internet, peace and prosperity, trustable internet, um, to name a few that I'm forgetting, impact, right? So all of those concerns, themes uh, were raised. Uh, one way that we could work through uh, this top-down, bottom-up approach and, and kind of a mix would be throw a call for uh, proposals in with these directions, uh, which is not new, for example, in academic um, call for papers. You, you ask papers to be under those overarching themes, and then you, you have all the workshops, BPFs, uh, you know, um, um, fitting in this, these main tracks. And then uh, we can figure out this will be main sessions, BPFs, what, and listen from the community what would be uh, best workable. Uh, that's one idea to, to go in. So keep three or four, um, let's say, topics that we can make a call, call for proposals, let it open, whether workshops or, or BPFs. Um, that's it. No, I, I, thank you, Raquel. And I think that sort of um, will be helpful in the next agenda item as well there. Um, uh, Lisa was next in the queue, but she's coming. <laughs> Sorry, a bit of multitasking. Um, I guess uh, to, to your request, Chair, I'll give an a, a intervention on both process, I guess, piece, and then maybe the, the content piece. From a process point of view, I'm very much in favor of um, um, getting input from the community on themes, uh, whether they be sub-themes or theme, and I'm a little confused as to a title I get, a title for the event. Um, I'm a little not sure if you mean a theme, a theme with sub-themes or just sub-themes, so either way we would just have to pose the the question to the community in the appropriate way, and I'm sure there's many ways to do that. Um, so, but I'm definitely in favor of getting input from the community to do that, and in, uh, in a way that's helpful to putting uh, the the a, a program together at the end that reflects the workshop proposals and the balance that we've been talking about in in the various areas. Um, with regard to the title, then, um, and a more con I think that. My um, thoughts about the discussion yesterday and, you know, think the discussions over the um, past about the title, I agree, it can be catchy, but it can't be meaningless. Um, I think it should be um, forward-leaning um, and, and really focusing on the positive. Um, and I suppose I also would say, um, you know, not over-promise or under um, deliver. Um, so those are all very philosophical ways to think about a title um, without providing a, a concrete thing. But I guess I've, I've liked that I've liked things like um, digitalization, shaping the future, um, things like that that are positive, forward leaning, and give us a context that's not boiling the ocean or being too specific. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you. Yeah, to continue on, really, on what uh, Raquel and Lisa were saying, um, I think we need we do need to choose uh, a title that that really encompasses the theme. <laughs> uh, but I guess with any with any large size uh, conference, we need the title to be big enough to sort of 
encompass a lot of themes that really the title does not focus on any one theme. Um, and so I was, I was thinking of, again, something that has uh, maybe future and, and that also kind of puts the, the emphasis on enabling the community rather than, you know, rather than um, the contributions coming from like a, a top-down uh, entity. And so I was thinking maybe, some, maybe like shaping your internet with, with maybe even the word your in all caps. Uh, to, to emphasize the contribution of the individual members um, or shaping the future of your internet, if that's not too long, um, or shape your internet rather than shaping, just variations of the same theme, really. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. That was very helpful. Did you want to come in, Thomas? Yes, Yes, thank you. Building on what, what uh, Israel has said and Liesl and, and now Russia, um, I've also been thinking along the lines, and, if we, and, and also a, a colleague from China, that maybe to replace Internet with something that is digital, based on that word, I would, if you allow me a more concrete uh, follow-up, is either shaping your digital future instead of shaping the Internet you want. It's the same idea. It's just, or how to shape your digital future, with or without a question mark. This would, would be, a, but I think instead of talking about internet, your digital, your digital future. So we have the shaping. We have, that may be something that brings us somewhere. Well, maybe shape your digital future. <laughs> As in you shape. <laughs> I think that those are both really interesting and helpful, and we'll continue going through the – wow, <laughs> and it raised like five flags here in the room. Um, let me see. Changatai is going to put the um, new ones in the queue here. At the moment, we have um, Renata, and then we have Avri and Miguel. Uh, Renata, you have the floor. And, and Renata, actually, if you can move your flag to the left, yes, then we can so – Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, so, about the words that we are talking about, um, I'd like to recall our discussion yesterday again on not repeating internet governance. I'd also like to echo Constance and Salas de Mayo to the list about having a backdrop on the SDGs. And we also did move forward on the ideas of peace and prosperity. With that, I'd also ally shaping, forging, or imposing an idea uh, as something I'd like to oppose, specifically in a bottom-up multi-stakeholder process such as the IGF. We also have to be aware of the future that we're talking. Is it a consumerist future? Are we fetishizing technologies or reflecting critically about them? I'd also like to uh, bring that in and build upon the world's uh, peace, prosperity, transformation, and resistance, opposing that to barriers, walls, forging, shaping, or imposing. So my suggestion would be something on the lines of peace and transformation towards empower empowerment and resistance in the information society. Thank you, Renata. Uh, Avri, you have the floor. Avri, you have the floor. Avri's online, so you'll need your headphones. Okay, Avri, sorry, we can't hear you. I think you might still be connected, but... Um... <laughs> We'll wait until you come back in later. If you could just signal and we'll put you um, in at the queue immediately at that point. Um, so, Miguel. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I want to say that I'm okay with the title and, and then defining the theme. On the title, uh, I like the word shaping and, or shape or forging, but I'm 
although I like, I love the word digital, I think we're not speaking of, about digital itself because, because digital might be connected or not connected. So I would say something like shape or shaping your connected future because uh, we are talking about the internet. We are not talking about the digital devices or, or digital itself that might be or not be connected. Uh, I think, uh, as Liesl already said, it's positive and uh, forward-leaning also. We're talking about future and a constructive future. On the themes, uh, I think the, the themes may, might be out to de, kind of auto-defined by the proposals. And maybe June is uh, a little late to, to, to select the theme uh, because the, the, the proposals have to be uh, evaluated uh, regarding the theme, so I don't know how we can manage to do that. Uh, what I think is uh, a catchy title, it's, it's really useful, and the theme, or the theme that arises from the proposals, uh, what we should do, is we, we should uh, kind of uh, work really hard on communication and outreach of these themes. So, uh, it, it, it will be a really bottom-up definition because it will be arising from the proposals, from what the, the community proposed. So we should, as a MAG, should define from the selected proposals what are the main themes that are going to be, what that the IGF is going to be talking about and communicate on those in order to engage uh, people interested in those themes. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. If I understand what you're saying, the, the themes would come as a result of the proposals we receive, but that actually does put us in about the June time frame. And I, I thought you'd express some concern on that at the beginning. No? Okay. Uh, we were uh, talking about kind of an open consultation on the themes. Uh, the open consultation might be the proposals, the call for proposals. So uh, arising from the proposals, we could select from all the selected proposals, th select the themes we, we're gonna, t uh, we want to, how do you say? <laughs> well, I can't find the word. But, uh, what from the proposals we think is it's most important and work really hard on communicating and out outreach in that way. Okay, thank you. That's clear. And I think that actually mirrors sort of the process we ran this last year as well. Um, so we've got quite a long queue here. Um, the next, Elizabeth, and then we'll go to Miguel Candia. Uh, Elizabeth, you have the floor. It's not, okay, there we go. Just trying to brainstorm how we um, might use a tag and I think picking up on um, what Raquel was saying about having buckets of themes that could be used um, to help us deal with some of the challenges we're trying to address in terms of bringing, uh, bringing the community of people and activities in the IGF around um, common threads and themes or, or, or buckets of, of um, topics or links. Uh, so uh, we were thinking about perhaps um, orienting to, back towards this idea of shaping the future, which I think um, is is short and pithy, but also not too um, uh, complicated with words that have perhaps triggers or, 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 or concerns for some people or misperceptions by others. Um, and then that the buckets themselves could be um, something like uh, inclusive internet, empowering internet, trusted internet, or something along those lines. And within those, when people are tagging issues, if it's human rights, um, you know, the inclusive internet could be part of that. The in the empowering, if it's you know, we're talking about um, using the internet for education or health or um, some of the sector. Or, um, and economic aspects that we wanted to have more appeal to, um, you know, and, and, and some of the security and other issues that we want to talk about and um, confidence building issues and inside trust. So the reason I think that there's an appeal for having some sort of themes or, or, or buckets is that having seen where I, IGF used to do that, it started out with those big themes that, you know, had had workshops and, and main sessions structured around them. Um, 
there was a way for people to sort of navigate and understand when they were first coming into the IGF that didn't already know and understand the, the universe. Um, but then we moved away from that because there was an appeal for a more bottom-up process. And I think we might be able to have our cake and eat it too if we do the um, loose bucket, the broad buckets that then allow people to tag their issues coordinate them that way, and then perhaps even look at a build process. And, and this is something that you know um, a few people have talked about offline, which is that the workshops um, could lead towards main sessions. And um, I think uh, this is not my idea, so I'm not going to take any credit for it. But I, I, when, when it was discussed with me, I thought there was a lot of appeal to that because you could move um, the main sessions and have a clear distinction of what their role and activity and benefit is over and above the other content sessions. Um, there might be a way in which you could orient a part of the program in the as sort of denouement that could also appeal to higher level um, actors that would want to engage that would get and skim a benefit of the of the activity but that was more holistic than if you just whatever main session lands right next to the high level will capture this audience, et cetera. So I'm throwing out a few things that I know they're not all related to the same, but it's just to make the case for where those buckets could actually serve the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. And so if you just for me to come back on a, a clarifying question, um, are you suggesting that we would use the same process we used last year, which was allow tagging of the proposals, but against a um, a short list of major themes as opposed to we had a fairly fine we had a lot of themes a lot of um, possible tags last year is that what you're suggesting or that we go out out front because of course the pro propose the program does actually collect everything up into themes and, and put the themes there so that people can make their way through an IGF by following the themes but I think you were talking about the front end part part of the process the the way um, the way that could be done would be that the, the the you would reduce down those broad buckets into three or four max that you would link from the feedback and input of the of the content and and the desire to talk about certain topics or certain aspects you would be able to call from that uh, key issues that might help guide us in what we think make main session activities. There would be the, the natural link then to um, the workshops and um, you're not you're, there, there's the way in which you sort of overarch it and, and, and explain and categorize it before you get the links but then the links will naturally fit into that. Um, so it's not, pre, it's not um, being prescriptive in terms of what they have to report back on. So we're not giving them a list and saying, if you don't come in this list of tags, then it's not relevant. But you could perhaps identify what kinds of tags would be conceived or considered under certain, but not exhaustively, if okay. that makes sense. And I'm sure others can, can complement what I'm saying more. Thank you. Um, is Miguel Candia still in the queue? Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. And uh, it's, it's, it's a bit hard to have two Miguels, <laughs> but uh, I really don't mind being uh, taken on what my, my tocayo said, my namesake said. Uh, as a diplomat, normally I tend to say I agree with everybody else. <laughs> And then we normally go to the things we don't really agree on. But uh, this is a very, very good discussion. I think, uh, I think all what, all, everything we heard has a value, uh, and, and I have to say that. And what, we, what I can add on this is, um, well, first, like a positioning thing, um, the theme should, should encompass whatever sub-themes sub or buckets we have. So we, uh, uh, I'm favoring the catchy thing as well. But what, what I think we don't, what I put those, this in writing already and send it by email, but what I think we never have to lose is the, we have to remind ourselves where we are in time right now. You know, 2017 is 
the baby steps of the SDGs. And uh, the implementation is a, is a very important thing for pretty much everyone, everyone in the international community. Uh, within that, we, as, a, as IGF, as MAG, we, we, never, we need to keep focus on the human side of whatever we want to do. We see, we see the internet as, as a tool, as a, as a, as a bridge, as, a, as everything we enable us to do whatever we want. So that's why I would somehow favor anything that has uh, you in the title, that uh, every, everyone who reads it uh, sees himself as the, as the recipient of the message. The title has to give him a message, the person reading it, so he can get interested. Uh, in the email I sent all, the, all of you guys, uh, the idea was something like, you, you are the future of the internet, something like that. But it's just a matter of food for thought thing. I don't seem that that's going to be the end of it. But yeah, um, we, we need to say something that is underlining, you know, uh, poverty, gender uh, equality, gender participation, uh, reducing gaps. And I think something with that message would steer us in the right way. I think that uh, that's why I can add here. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. And you never know, it may be the end or it may actually spark, you know, another, another bright idea. Thank you. Um, Samuel, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. I very much like the sound of trust, and I uh, was thinking that if we could include something like uh, building trust in your digital future, it might sound good. Or we look at IGF 2017, a place to shape your digital future. Those are the two proposals that I have. I think that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel. Oh, it's very helpful. And Shigun, you're back just in time. You have the floor. Hello. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just being a little bit uh, curious. The meaning of uh, the topic being sexy. I really want to be um, educated. But however, I have a proposition toward a particular title. Maybe perhaps it could help us to make it sexy. Now, I want to propose that uh, we should look at uh, the issues of internet as being under a threat. And uh, just like my Chinese colleague said, uh, the internet uh, that we know today, uh, that we, we, yeah, might actually be different from internet that we have always been uh, uh, seen or known in the last past uh, in the past century. Now, I want to suggest that if we are talking about or looking at shaping something or internet and all that or our future, but I want us to consider certain uh, contentious issues, which might probably help us to uh, come up with a, a better conclusion when it comes to selecting a topic or title. I don't know if you agree with me, the issue that is bordering on uh, the, the fragmentation of internet, then the issues of um, polarization and neutrality of the internet, then the growing cyber conflict among nations, some of these things are going to impact the future that we are all looking toward to. Then also, we should also look at the stability of the internet and the openness of the internet, which is currently under certain threat. Because we have nations now taking different positions along line security or whatever measure. So I want to propose, uh, not really propose really, but I want to motivate us or inspire us to look at issues that could probably help us to address some of these uh, important uh, contentious issues within this uh, cyber space. Uh, lastly, I also want us to look at how we can ensure that the internet or the, um, the, topic, we are, uh, the topic we are going to choose for the high jet transition theme 
my, uh, may, should probably help us to address issue that has to do with the stability and the, and the survivability of the internet, because uh, that will impact our future in either in the short or in the long run. Thank you. Thank you, Shagun. Um, if we could actually, you know, try to get to some specific suggestions. I think there's support for a title um, and a process to develop themes later, but in the next interventions, there's another six, seven people on the list here to um, speak. If we could actually see if we can start to get to a really small number that we can um, um, debate and then try and move forward and hopefully close on this in the next 15, 20 minutes. So we can move on with the rest of the agenda. Um, uh, Israel, you have the floor. Thank you, Israel Rosas, for the record. Um, I strongly support the, the suggestion by Thomas because I think it's broad enough to cover the issues raised here, uh, trust, peace, development, security, new technologies. Uh, and also shaping is a thing that you can do in a collaborative way with the multi-stakeholder community. Uh, I, I, for example, I think that uh, a, a more uh, SDGs focused uh, topic or title could be uh, raised uh, through connecting and enabling the next billion, maybe. And uh, about the, the idea of uh, taking the call for workshop uh, proposals as the community consultation for uh, sub-themes, uh, I think that I can support also. I think it's a, a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. So specifically you're talking about Thomas's shaping your digital future or how to shape your digital future? Yes, uh, about shaping your digital future. Thank you. Um, Haojun, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, actually, I don't know which proposal I'm uh, supporting now um, after lengthy debate about uh, what kind of title we should choose. Uh, my impression is that, uh, you know, Internet is an outdated word and digital is also very much an outdated word also. Now we are having more and more new emerging technologies, for example, quantum quantum technologies uh, is uh, entering the stage of uh, applica real application and uh, that goes beyond the traditional sense of uh, digital. And even scientists working on quantum technologies don't understand what is this thing because this goes beyond our four-dimensional world. This can only be explained in a five- or six-dimensional world. So we are in entering a very mysterious, very, you know, scary world. And if we're to still talking about the Internet, I think we are lagging behind the times. So I fully, I know, I strongly against uh, using word like uh, Internet or digital, things like that in it. And I also don't like to have the title to, to be too lengthy, you know, like a long sentence. People especially young people be fed up. And uh, I don't think a, a long sentence or two sentence include everything could be more attractive <coughs> or more inclusive. So I'm thinking uh, whether we, if shaping uh, is not good enough, can we use work for? That means that we are we'll work together for something like that. I know that shaping is a very popular sport uh, in Russia and other countries uh, that make our body more sexy. And it could be top down, it could be bottom up, and uh, you can do something about yourself. And that's it. And uh, can we say work for a better cyber community for all? Or work for a cyber community for all? I also support include words like peace and prosperity, but peace, prosperity, empowerment, all these things can be reflected in our sub-themes, topics of the workshops. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a little bit of the chair prerogative and I think see if we can start narrowing this down. I'm not hearing a lot of support for cyber 
or for peace and prosperity. I'm hearing a lot for shaping your digital world, your connected world, working together to shape your world, um, you know, connected together we can make. I mean, those are the things that I think I hear the bulk of the room focusing on, and we need to get to sort of a string of three or four of them that work. But if the um, folks that are in the, the queue today could help us bring that home, that would be much appreciated. Again, that's the sense I get from comments here in the room. Um, next on the list is Juan. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. First, I'm going to begin about the sub-themes. I think that that is even more important than the title, because the title is the title, the sub-themes are the actual um, things that are going to be discussed. I agree in principle that it should be selected by us, the MAG. That is one of our tasks. But I feel that we don't have the time to do it properly, because to select the teams, that's a very responsible thing to do. And I don't feel that we have the time to do it here now in this person face-to-face -face meeting. So either we go to the method that we used last year is that from the proposals of workshop, we extracted from statistics the themes and then in a virtual um, meeting we, we discuss it. Or we can begin doing this in a formal way uh, virtually. Because I think that the selection of the sub-themes, uh, uh, if we do it that way, then we will have to do it for the call for workshops. Because when we call for the workshops, we should put, well, we are calling for workshop in this and this and this and this and this thing. So you see the responsibility. And that has to be done, um, very well done, you know, analyzing the trends and, and not to be, to leave uh, somebody behind. So that's about the, the themes. And about the title, that the title is the first thing that you have to, to think of the title is that title is for whom? It is a title for the internet community or is it the title for the world at large? Because in one way we could go a very nerdy way and trying to talk to ourselves that we are a very particular community that really many other people does not share that jargon that we use. So in that sense, I can say the following. I am forward shaping. The word shaping is not um, out of the blue. It's part of the definition of internet governance. So I think the shaping, it's even better than working for because shaping is how it is in the internet. I also agree that in the title we should not repeat the word, the word internet or governance because it's already there. But we have to put something, you know, and I don't like digital because digital analog, that's a little bit nerdy, you know. And I don't like connected. We're having a, 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 a trend to try to connect a billion that is not connected. So are we not talking to those unconnected, if we're talking only to the connected. So I don't like connected. I don't like digital. So maybe some cyber, as was said, cyberspace. Cyberspace is a concept that exists because it's maybe shaping your cyberspace. And, if, and my preference, but I'm in your hands if you want to leave it short, my preference is in the title, you should put some purpose because shaping your cyberspace or shaping your digital future, if we keep digital future, but I don't like it. For what? In what direction? Are we shaping it to be I blue we, I think we have, we have red? a point. And so I will say shaping your digital future for peace and prosperity. That will be my preference. Shaping your, if you want to uh, put your digital future for peace, for what? For peace and prosperity. Okay. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Just, uh, just a quick reaction. Well, others may not like cyber because that has a particular connotation as well, at least in some areas. So, um, about shaping your digital future for what? This is exactly the point. If you say shaping your digital future Everybody will react for what, and then the discussion starts. So you actually create an entry point 
to people. If you say for peace and prosperity, what about those who only want to make money or who care about their health and blah, blah, blah? So if you predict them what, how, what their priorities should be for the digital future, if you, if you leave it open, then you actually create more interest in my personal view. So I would be happy with shaping the digital future, or if you focus it on Geneva, then we say uh, uh, on the IGF as a physical event, a place for, digital, uh, for shaping a digital future. But I think if we can like slowly but surely crystallize on something that we may agree on, that would be great. Thank you. I, I think we definitely need to do that. So um, I, I said a, f a few moments ago, taking the prerogative of the chair, that I didn't see support in the room for peace and prosperity. I don't see support in the room for cyber. And in fact, when cyber is mentioned, a whole host of heads shake no in the room. So I think that what we're working with are things like shaping your digital future, connected future, um, shape your future. Um, those are the, the sort of things we're hearing. We have about 12 people in the queue here now. I would like to just have very specific direct interventions in terms of what your recommendation would be um, towards a, a title to, to move forward, okay? And I agree with your point on the sub-themes. I think, I think there was support last year from continuing with the tagging process, um, and I just want us to make that a specific decision, not just a, a, a slope in. Um, and then within that, we can decide whether or not we just have a small number of tags, which might be possible sub-themes with the ability to write them in, or we go with the sort of expanded list we have yesterday, and maybe we can do that offline. Um, so next on the list, I have uh, Kenya Frederick, and then just I'll just read out the next few. Um, Avri um, is back in. I think she's got her connectivity fixed, and then Mamadou Michael. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just take the floor not to give you the very specific uh, formulation that you're asking for, but just to let you know that I've taken time to, to reflect and do some research on, um, on the work you did um, after IGF 2016. And actually, I was just looking at the stock-taking report, and I looked at paragraph 31, which talks about um, uh, possible themes for the IGF, and it talks about uh, aligning, closely aligning the, the theme with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and it goes on to say that we need to link up uh, whatever we, we do with the high-level political forum. It talks about the UN Commission on Science and Technology. So the, the issue is um, this discussion is like it started last year. So we need just to go back and see and it says that many contributions emphasize the need to closely align the theme with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So why can't we start there and then we see if we can build on that unless our mindset has totally shifted? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, and I think we're back in the title versus theme. The room agreed some time ago that we would move with the title, and that's what we're discussing right now. I could well expect to see, I think, something around sustainable development goals somewhere in the themes. Um, so I don't think we're losing the notion of uh, sustainable development goals being, you know, an, an uh, interesting piece or big piece of the Internet governance work we do. Um, Avri, you have the floor. You will need headphones. Avri's online. Thank you. Can I be heard by anyone? By everyone. Fantastic. And apologies for making you all put on your headsets. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing to do to you. Uh, I guess many of the things I wanted to say have now gone by the by. Uh, but, but a couple things I still want to go back to. So with your indulgence, Chair, um, I, I think this catchy title exercise we're doing is fine. It, it might work. But one of the things I want to ask is that are we going to include the community in our, uh, in, while we're looking for themes based upon this catchy title? I think one of the things we have to remember is, is that we need to pull them in. And we don't need to do big written comments with, uh, you know, long, lengthy periods. We can do quick polls. On online where we inform everybody that for the next week, the next two weeks, we are collecting views on the following and, and, and get quick input 
w without needing to do a, a, a full extravaganza on it. So um, I, I would just like to suggest that. Um, I'm glad we've let go of the notion of that we want because we know that there are people that want lots of things that, that perhaps shouldn't be wanted. So um, I, I think it's good that, that we shouldn't do that. Um, one of the things though that I was looking at is that you know we've talked about, I'm glad also that we've gotten rid of digital and cyber, but we have to remember that we are here about the internet and I think we keep forgetting that. And, you know, it's, it's the internet in all of its aspects. It's the internet in dealing with cyber, in dealing with quantum, in dealing with the artificial impact on the internet, on our privacy, on our information, on our rights. So it, it, it's all of that. So when we say the internet, we're not referring to some distant past thing that, that is no longer relevant. All of these topics affect and are affected by the internet. So I actually think we should include the internet in our catchy title because that is our responsibility is the is internet governance. And so I think forgetting that. So but I'm very sympathetic to the idea of of, of expanding, of, of looking forward. I I and so in using that broad notion, I've been listening to the, the suggestions. I really did like Thomas's suggestion, but, but I came down with a, how should we shape our, how should we shape our internet in the future? Because we're looking at governance, we're looking at normative issues. So what are the things we should be doing? And, and, and what are the things we should be enabling? I think shaping is a good word to keep because when we're talking about government, we're, we're, we're talking about a shaping activity. Uh, we're, we're not ruling, we're not regulating, but we're helping to shape, we're enabling. Um, and as I said, I, I think that uh, referring to internet in it brings us back to our core responsibility, and that's the wider IGF community's core responsibility, not just the mags, of shaping an internet future. And, and so I, I, I put that one, so hopefully by the end of my, my wandering comments, I, I've gotten back to where you wanted to be. And the last note I'd like to make is I amazed at the amount of time we have spent talking about our lack of time. Thank you. And just done again. <laughs> um, thank you, Avery. Um, a quick comment on internet. I think I don't, the, the proposals or the sort of sense I'm getting is it's either going to be internet governance forum colon X, so internet's there, or it'll be catchy title and there'll be an internet governance forum logo or internet governance forum underneath somewhere. So I think the tie to internet will be clear um, just through the, the way we, we do that. Um, the, we I don't have, think so. I've closed the queue. Um, Arnold, you're the last one, but there's about 10, 11 folks in front of you. I'd like to really try and keep the interventions at this point focused on that short collection of words we've talked about. And if people could do it in sort of 30 seconds or less in terms of what your, your thought is and, and um, why. And I, I really don't like to be um, unfair to Mamadou and Michael, who have been in the queue a long time, but the queue has just been, been, um, been running on. So if you could give us your, your thoughts. Uh, Mamadou, you're the next. Thank you. I want to be long. Uh, just say that I really want to, to, to support Miguel's idea on team, saying uh, shaping your connected future, shaping your connected future. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's very clear. Thank you. Michael? Uh, good, good morning, Chair. Uh, uh, let me just give you a small quote. It says, if you have a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. That's the beauty of multi-stakeholderism. Each one represents their actual stakeholder, where they come from. As somebody from the law enforcement, I see a theme. I, I would say I've seen the past 10 years themes. There's been nothing on security. It's just been on growth, sustainable growth, but there's been nothing on security. I was suggesting we come up with a theme that says a secure internet for shaping 
either a cyber future or anything that is catchy, but at least something that has to do with security. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would actually hazard a guess that in one of the themes there will certainly be something about, um, about security. Um, going specifically to the title here, though. And, Ari, I forgot to respond to something. Um, we had previously agreed that absolutely we would involve the community in the themes, and there are a couple of different suggestions that have come up in the room about how we might do that. But it's clear that in the themes um, we will actually um, uh, hear from the community. Um, Nigel? With some exception, quick and to the point, please. <coughs> Sorry, yes, absolutely, quick and to the point. Uh, shaping your uh, shaping your digital future, I, I, I think, is appropriate. I think con connecting works as well, but I think digital is broader and encompasses a lot of work that's going on, uh, understood in other institutions. Secondly, I think we should consult on the themes as has been proposed. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Raquel, you have the floor. Okay, so very quickly first, I was looking back on the teams that we, or titles that we had before. In 2010, we used developing the future together. So there is no mention to internet digital, etc. just as a matter of uh, reference. But um, I, I would like to support where also Thomas is going. Uh, he put out the, a place to shape your digital future. I think there needs to be a call also a call for action there. So either could be uh, be at the place to shape your digital future or uh, just make it simple, shaping your digital future, but just to support on that line. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Uh, thank you, Raquel. Uh, Christina? Uh, I will be very brief. Um, I see that we are converging towards shaping uh, your digital future. In my mind, I think that uh, digital future is a little bit abstract. I don't know exactly what it is, and it uh, seems something distant. So um, it's it's not urgent, it's not for now. Um, so maybe a, a slight uh, tweak could be shaping the digital society because it's about all of us, it's about people, it's a bit more concrete, and it's, it's, it's now, it's not future. We have to act now in order to shape our future. So uh, either shaping the digital society or, or connected society, but have a more, a more concrete element there. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. We're going to take the next five or six people um, and listen. If there isn't a clear consensus by then, we'll put two two up and go for a quick straw poll. Um, and I mean the online room as well as the physical room here. Uh, next in the queue, Wisdom. And Wisdom is online as well, so headphones. Hello, thank you, Madam Chair. And a good one to uh, everyone. Uh, I have a bit of, uh, my thinking is uh, different uh, in line with the topics that we are discussing. Um, I'm thinking uh, there have been enough of uh, shaping uh, within uh, our communities, and there, there have been enough of uh, digital and, and all that. And then all this that has happened uh, before, what impact are we seeing? Uh, so uh, moving forward on this, uh, I'm thinking uh, impact uh, will be more appropriate uh, 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 on the topic that uh, we are selecting, uh, because um, taking into consideration last year's uh, team, uh, when the team was put out there, you know, all the proposals that were coming in uh, were geared towards uh, that team. So if we get a team uh, in relation to impact, and when we put it out, and then we say, hey, community, this is what we are saying. There have been a lot of shape out there. There have been a lot of digitization. And what have you? What impact are you seeing? And then the community can think and then say, these are the uh, things that is actually going on. These are the impact that we are seeing. These are the negatives. These are the positives. So when we uh, get the impact, and I think moving forward to the next year's uh, IGF, uh, it will really inform into uh, policy decision direction and all that because the community will actually 
uh, tease out the issues from the communities and then bring it to IGF for IGF to know that now these are the things that are going on. Uh, and then this is the direction that we, should, we need to go to actually meet our targets and all that. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank, thank you, Wisdom. Uh, next in the queue is Miguel Estrada. Well, in order to avoid confusion, if you want to call me Nacho, you can call me Nacho. Everybody knows me as Nacho, so you will be the Miguel in, in forward. I'll be Nacho. <laughs> it's okay for me. Um, I think we're, the, the discussion is narrowing. I think there may be a, a couple of accepted words. Uh, shaping, for example, I think, I think it's kind of accepted. Uh, there's an option of building that her, uh, over there, and it's a good option, but it's shaping, building, whatever. Uh, the thing would be uh, shaping the future, it's okay, it's already uh, accepted. Your, uh, I, I can't recall your name, but uh, your means society in any way. It's your internet, it's from people, so society, it's already included in the title. Uh, I love the a place too, because it invites you to go there. So it's a place too, where, a place where we are going to do this. And I think the discussion is narrowing towards the words uh, cyber, digital, connected, or internet. So we should be defining on those words and no, no more, I think. I'm for connected. Uh, cyber, I think it's all and related to security. Uh, digital is too broad, but it's been used, uh, used again on digital transformation and stuff, so maybe it could be used. But I'm from connected or maybe internet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I may still say Miguel. It's more fun to say than Nacho, but thank you, Nacho. Um, next, we have Rasha. Again, we're trying to keep it to 30 seconds concrete proposals, and I'm sure you would anyway. Just as soon as I don't waste my 30 seconds waiting for the mic to come on. Uh, I, think we, I think we need to make a commitment to... to if we use the word shaping, and we need a shared understanding that it's, it's not us that is shaping, it is, it is them that is shaping their future. I mean, if you, if you want to integrate the community, we cannot be telling them, come, we will shape it for you. Uh, and so I just want that emphasis to be a sort of shape your digital future so that you, you would be shaping your digital future uh, or maybe enabling your digital future uh, but either way, we, we need to have an understanding amongst ourselves that it's, it's not us that is shaping that future, it's the community that is shaping, shaping their own future. No, thank you. I think that's a good point. I saw a lot of heads nodding around the room in sympathy. Um, Changatai has actually probably had the title written over here on the paper for some time. He just pointed me to something he wrote, which was Shape Your Digital Future, um, which is maybe an interesting one. Um, uh, Igor, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree with Nacho. I think we are uh, very much uh, in doubt only about uh, this specific word. I'd like to speak in favor of digital because uh, I think digital suggests a very strong connection to economy issues. If you look at the way things are being discussed in other fora, like the OECD, WTO, the G20, you see that the, the idea that econom economy is becoming digital is not an old idea. It's actually a very recent recognition and almost consensual. So I think it expands a little bit the, the, the scope, yes, but uh, it also includes a, a community that needs to be included in the IGF discussion, which is the community that discuss discusses the economic aspects of internet, so I think it's a good idea. Uh, th thank you, Igor. And Thomas? Just to very quickly jump in to support uh, 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 Igor on this, because connected, at least to me and, and people around me, is connected cars, connected devices, it's a techy device-oriented thing. Digital is economy and society normally, at least what I hear is, is in that context, so I would strongly support what Igor has said. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, Arjun, you, you have the floor. Again, 30 seconds, please, okay. concrete okay, suggestions. I can live with the word digital, um, although I don't like it very much, but uh, shaping is okay. So can we say let's shaping a digital future for peace and prosperity because without peace, and pro without peace 
uh, no matter what kind of good internet we have, if sub-war happens, if uh, nuclear arsenals was attacked by sub-war, uh, uh, sub-weapons, sub we are all gone. No people there. What's the, what's the point of having a very good internet? Thank you. So peace should be there. Thank you. Yeah, I think we agreed to take peace and prosperity off the table from the short selection a little while ago. There really wasn't support, if you look back over the conversation of the last hour and a half or so, for that. So I think we're, we're and we need to, we really need to close. There really wasn't, at some point we need to call, you know, a, a consensus, a rough consensus, and there really wasn't support um, for that. That also lengthens the title, as you've suggested. I have just three more people in the, the queue, and then we're going to put the suggestion out if it doesn't close. Um, so I have Magino, Sagoon, and then Arnold. You will be the last speaker. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I support the title short, but <clears throat> very uh, in the future. Uh, maybe the I, and the government uh, could uh, shaping the digital future or enabling the digital future like that. So to, to think in the government shaping the digital future or enabling the digital future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mojino. Um, Shagoon. Thank you, Chair. Quick and to the point, please. Within just a few seconds, uh, I want to propose this. Uh, shaping the future we want. Shaping the future we want or working for the future we want. Thank you. I think those were on the table earlier as well, and um, I, I think there was a lot of confusion around who the we is and, and want. So um, I think right now we're really coalescing on something like shape your digital future or shaping your digital future. Um, I've got to I hadn't We hadn't seen Aida's comment, so we'll go to Arnold and then Aida. Sorry. A, a quick thing, um, sometimes I can't see because some people are, so if you move your cards a little bit, like Renata and et cetera, if you move your cards this way, and then I can see them. So Ar Arnold, you for, and then Aida will come to you, that's okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, I heard a lot of words, and, and I favor words like digitalization, the future, and the question mark that is so important to reach out to our potential participants to the IGF to hear their views. And so that should be in the title. Um, my proposal is digitalization for a better future, followed by a colon, and then the main question, how can you contribute? Full stop. Because we're all working for a better future. Thanks to digitalization. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's actually quite a long, and I'm not sure we all have the same view of the future, um, which sort of starts to stream you towards a consistent view, but um, I'm not sure that's one we'll move forward. Um, didn't hear a lot of support for some of it earlier. Digitalization came up earlier yesterday as well. Um, Aida, you have the floor. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Uh, while uh, I understand sh that shape is probably here to stay, I don't know if you are aware that online we are having sort of parallel mag meeting around the overarching team here. Uh, so uh, we are strongly thinking that shape could be also ex like excluding some, and we would suggest to uh, maybe change it for grow, growing. Um, digital future or something like that. So that's it, thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is an awkward place to be and it's not fun, but I think Grow coming in too late and there's heads nodding around the room that says it's not kind of interesting enough. Um, and, and I appreciate the back channel, um, but I don't think the back channel actually serves everybody well in this room. Um, so I, I, I hope we actually manage it you know, uh, properly and that the things that need to be said so that everybody hears them and they're on the record are actually said in, in the room here. Um, I don't know, it's tough to call. Um, Egypt, do you want to, Hisham, come in? And then I'm going to put a proposal forward. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I don't want to prolong the discussion uh, 
I think it, it has already taken some time. Um, uh, yesterday, I, I, I put to your attention the terminology of uh, digital opportunity, and I think we are now narrowing down to uh, what seems to be accepted by most of uh, people to use the word digital. So uh, my proposal is a theme or a title, Shaping the Digital Opportunity of Tomorrow. The, the word opportunity, I think, makes the title more uh, human than the, just uh, the abstract word of digital. Uh, digitization is, is, for some, I think, uh, a totally d different concept. That is the transformation of uh, information into a digital form, which is a little bit different than uh, what we do here at the IGF. Uh, so this is my proposal virtually. Thank you. Um, th thank you, and I, I appreciate it. Um, I, I don't think that there's any, I don't think we can take forward opportunity at this late um, stage. I mean, the way these processes work, we kicked this off yesterday. We had um, some discussion in the room. We had some online discussion. We've been trying to narrow it down around a small selection of words based on support here in the room. When things aren't mentioned repeatedly, that's a lack of support for them. Um, and so I haven't, I, I know you made the same point yesterday, an opportunity. I didn't hear that get a lot of support. Um, I think right now, honestly, this is not an easy thing to call, and I'm kind of looking to Thomas and, and Chengatai. Um, I think the closest I could get to sort of judging some sort of um, consensus here around the room is shape your digital future. If somebody wants to play with those four words and figure out how to make it a question or a bigger exclamation point or you're in capital letters, um, I think we can do that offline. But let me put that forward and say, is this... I mean, the other thing I think is we've had 11 years of pretty much, as Juan said, or I think kind of nerdy, very insider-like language describing the... Um, I, I think anything that starts to make it a little um, more exciting, a little more aspirational, a little more forward-looking um, with reliance on the themes later is worthwhile trying. We've all said we want to reinvigorate and, uh, the IGF. So let me turn to um, Thomas for that, and then I will also ask Chengata if he has any kind of questions or reflections. Thank you. And, and actually, shape your digital future, and then I would put an exclamation mark. We don't have a question mark, but maybe an exclamation mark will do it as an invitation to come and actually shape your digital future. And of course, we want to have opportunities, so I'm with you. But the shorter the formulation, the more like buff it is. And shape your digital future, exclamation mark, I think is something that we could try because it's fairly different than what we've had before. And we can discuss for hours. We'll never have some, uh, any, something that everybody is 100% fine with it. But if nobody has a fundamental problem with it to turn it around, then I think let's give it a try. Go with shape the digital future, exclamation mark, and see whether people follow this call to shape the digital future. Thank you. Can I say, um, Shigun, thank you for leading the first clap there, too. <laughs> um, thank you. Okay, so we're going to call that um, item closed. Um, we have a quick, I think we'll come back to the tags and themes later. Um, I think Constance may only be with us for this morning, and Constance um, actually helped lead the connecting and enabling the next billion um, phase one and two. Um, the next agenda item after the tags and themes was to look at um, some of the major pieces of intercessional work and reviewing CNB and um, possible phase three um, is on the agenda. So I'd like um, Constance to make a, a short presentation and then um, we'll see where that discussion leads us. So Constance, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, the purpose here is to report back on uh, progress made uh, with regards to phase two of connecting and enabling uh, the next billion. You'll remember that two years ago when we uh, decided to rejuvenate the best practices, uh, we also launched uh, this new track of work on policy options for connecting uh, the next billion with this idea that we should um, take seriously the call of the CSTD, which was endorsed uh, at WISIS Plus 10, to um, allow the IGF to develop more tangible outputs uh, in line with its mandate uh, in, in the Tunis agenda. So with the first uh, phase, you'll remember that we had looked at the different policy options for connecting the next billion. We had focused on 
um, uh, the in infrastructure aspect, uh, increasing usability, enabling users, and during affordability, and finally, uh, creating enabling environments. Uh, it was a bottom-up exercise. About 30% of the input came from the national and regional IGFs, and uh, the way we had positioned this work uh, was to say that some international organizations look into uh, policy options, but what would be unique with this IGF product would, was that it was completely bottom-up um, crowdsourced. Um, and then it was decided, based on the, 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 the work that happened the first year, with the second phase to focus um, more narrowly on how ICTs can help reach sustainable development goals. Uh, with also uh, a lens on local and regional specificities. So here we used the work of phase one, the list of policy options, um, and we tested them uh, against this assumption that ICTs, the Internet, is an enabling, a horizontal uh, enabler for sustainable development goals. In the discussions that happened uh, at the IGF in Mexico, uh, there was then a, this idea and, and a call from the participants uh, that it would be interesting if we were to further this work. Uh, first of all, to keep in mind uh, the UN's current focus on sustainable uh, development goals, and we know there is a call for a deep dive on a few of them, I think SDG 1, 2, 3, five and nine, and you'll remember that five is about gender equality and nine about innovation industry and infrastructure, so fields where uh, the IGF community has uh, a lot to contribute. Um, and uh, again, there was a, uh, this idea that we could uh, use the basis of phase one and two, so the, the list of policy options, uh, and then uh, the deep dive we've done on local regional specificities in linking the internet in uh, sustainable development goals by um, um, by uh, using the case studies that we could collect uh, not only through the uh, NRIs, but also as we launch a call for proposal uh, in the course of the IGF's work. And this would allow the IGF to showcase the tangible uh, work that is going on in the field and that is led by many of the uh, leaders of national regional IGFs, but also of uh, contributors to the global IGF. So we would attach case studies, uh, we would showcase uh, successes um, uh, to the policy options that we've developed uh, throughout phase one and phase two. Um, I would conclude by saying that uh, if we are in this spirit of uh, trying to uh, tag the contributions and to attach the relevant work uh, to the various main themes or sub-themes, uh, again, I don't think this piece of work or uh, the BPFs or other type of intersessional activities should live on their own and have a separate main session. I would really encourage MAG uh, members to think of this as uh, a piece of work that we could weave into one of the main themes that the MAG would uh, agree upon in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Constance. Um, Marilyn, you have the floor. I don't see anybody else requesting the floor at this point in time. And, okay, and then who's in after? Thank you, Marilyn Cade. I take the floor to make a comment in reference backward to the work that the um, NRIs did in the first uh, rounds of contributing the um, way that was done, and I want to describe it because I, um, I think it's something that the NRI should talk about themselves, but the way that was done was they were invited to contribute, and uh, Constance was very gracious in actually coming on to a couple of phone calls, working calls, to help to brief the NRI coordinators and the community, uh, and you can see the really great response that that happened as a result of that. Access continues to be a very high priority in all of the surveys that have been done. But the reason I mention this is I would like to also suggest that, uh, and I made reference to this in an earlier, an earlier statement on the open consultation day, the um, yes, there are certain 
SDGs that are identified for each of the next three years. 17 is not mentioned specifically, but I would like us, I would like the MAG to consider including 17, which is about public-private cooperation and um, extending, it, to me it is a horizontal um, SDG and I think has significant applicability to the particular focus areas and strength and engagement of the internet governance community today. The second final comment I would just make, uh, and I was able to send Constance a private email, um, Goal 5 and Goal 9, I believe, still deserve considerable existing work, both on gender equality and diversity and on the infrastructure area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Hujun, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as I remember, you know, the Sustainable Development Goal 2030 to self at the very beginning emphasized the importance of peace and security, because without peace and security, there would be no uh, development to talk about. If uh, cyber war broke out, it may trigger uh, outer space war, and it would further trigger a nuclear exchange. The human race would not be exist on, on, the, on the, the face, the surface of the Earth anymore. So this is very important. And also, there are a lot of negative things uh, on the internet affecting sustainable development. So um, in, from now on, I hope that uh, peace and security is not something we should, we shy away from, but rather we have to focus on it. And in the upcoming, you know, uh, the IGF's conference or, or in session activities, workshops, we should uh, encourage people to discuss about that not like, you know, we should not pretend that peace and security have nothing to do with us. This is a very dangerous trend. And uh, the second thing is that while um, we've given people to present their ideas about how internet and the new technology could enable people, but we had, could all, should also remember that uh, the new technologies are very disenabling. Many people losing their job. And how do we handle that? Those negative externalities of new technologies. We should, you know, take the negative and the positive side together. Thank you. Thank you, Hujun. I don't see any other requests for the floor um, here or any requests from online. Um, Constance is, is, is looking for um, support from the MAG to go forward with uh, phase three of the CENB. And I guess the question then is to the MAG, do they feel that they understand um, that well enough and are prepared to respond to that request or are you looking for some additional information or time to do so? Constance, is there a specific question or anything you want to put to anybody or any additional information? Um, I think it would be useful perhaps for the MAG to think about, uh, first of all, whether or not they want to pursue this work, which is, uh, you know, tightly linked to uh, the sustainable development uh, goals and the development agenda in general of uh, the United Nations. Um, and uh, if there is interest in pursuing this effort, uh, then we would proceed as we have in the past. We would uh, put out... Um, a draft framework uh, for, for comments for the MAG's consideration with terms of reference very clear. I think the methodology point is extremely important to enter uh, the processes open and transparent, and that information would be published on, on the website. Um, and then also perhaps consider that following the call for contributions that the MAG will uh, issue, uh, that this proposal uh, should also, could also be fine-tuned then. Uh, but to start with, uh, I guess, yes, whether or not there's appetite to fine-tune the proposal for the max consideration, perhaps on a next call. Uh, Carolyn, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Constance. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Constance, for putting forward the proposal for work. Um, here's one thought with respect to making sure that this 
work which has been very important and productive, you know, grow within the strategic plan. So as we look at the strategic plan, we know that on there is realization of the SDGs. So I really like Constance's um, <laughs> idea of, of focusing on case studies, but I wonder if there's a way to include this work as part of the strategic plan, perhaps chunk out the SDGs um, so that at, by the end of it, all 17 will be addressed with case studies, but just a focus on a few of them um, at each of the phasing um, as a possible way forward. Um, a cu another couple of suggestions with respect to the case studies um, is that one of, the, one of the issues that's been identified is that there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of tips. Is there a way to also either include this in a larger um, uh, for example, like the JIPO project, for example, so that it becomes um, a reference because one of the things that we hear a lot from many of the government and the regulators is where do they go to get this information? Um, so think about how to integrate this into a larger body of work and case studies as well, just to make the, the information more useful. Thank, thank you, Carolyn. Constance? Thank you very much. I think those are two very uh, useful uh, proposals. First of all, this idea of perhaps focusing on uh, those SDGs that are the most relevant for the IGF community and the most timely um, when thinking about the broader agenda. And we know there's a, there is a focus on a few of those SDGs um, at, at the UN's level. Uh, the other idea that you put forward was also put forward in the um, main session in Mexico, um, i.e. including this in a broader effort. We know there are a number of IGOs or international organizations uh, that are working on this issue that were invited on the panel uh, at the IGF, and um, we had put forward this idea of including this in a broader coalition uh, that could include universities, WEF is doing some work in this area, but not just WEF, um, and uh, the, the idea was, was accepted. So um, if the MAG were to be interested uh, to pursue the effort, yes, what you described is exactly the, the, the path forward, I think. So. <coughs> All right. I don't th see any other hands raised, but I want to just, um, two things I think. This effort is about connecting and enabling the next billions. And if um, some linkages with some of the SDG efforts and um, some of the work that came out of phase one and phase two, bring some of that work into the CENB, I think that's fine. But I just want to make sure that we're all being really thoughtful and sort of separating out the whole purpose of this pilot was connecting and enabling the next billions, it wasn't how do we divvy up the SDGs across years or I think to, to Carolyn's point, what the IGF wants to do with the SDGs over the remaining period is, is a really strategic question and one we'll come to, but I want to make sure that when we're, we're evaluating this program, we're actually evaluating the context of the, the kind of remit which was connecting and enabling the next billions. So I just wanted to make sure, I, I thought there were two points in your comment and I wanted to try and clarify that and separate that a little bit for the rest of the for the rest of the room. But Elizabeth looks. I, I guess I'm a tiny little bit confused about the open-endedness of the intersessional topic as connecting, enabling the next billion. Um, where, do, where did we, how do, how do we come to that sort of open-endedness piece about it? Because as I recall, it was proposed two years ago that we initiate some, some work on that and the policy menu and, and options. And that was sort of the first one was done and then the second one was done. And I think part of the question, if I understood and interpreted um, Constance's proposal correctly, is that if there's a similar kind of work exercise that we would perceive as intercessional, um, going forward, is, is, is she sort of scoping out the topic or approach as opposed, or refining that topic or approach as opposed to um, using the topic and then what's our next year three for that particular um, topic? So I, I put it out there, at, at what point did we leave that as an open-ended act activity? Because I, 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 don't, I don't see where that happened. 
if I can make sure I understand it, what, what, is there an assumption in the room that CENB is an ongoing activity? Is that what you mean, not the open-ended? So um, I, I don't think there's um, a, a flat-out assumption. I think on the basis of the work that the um, folks did around CENB and some of the input that came out of the main session last week, um, I would actually treat this as a proposal, which is, I think, what Constance is saying, which is, does the MAG think that um, a, a major intercessional work um, for this coming year could be a connecting and enabling um, billions phase three along the line she outlined. Um, if we don't have enough information, and I, she's not asking us to give her a full approval and go ahead. She wants to know if there seems to be enough interest in MAG to bring this forward as a major intercessional project that she would go away, I'm sure, with support and input from many and bring back a, a more formal proposal to the MAG. If there are other suggestions from the MAG and something they think should be done as a major intercessional project, then I think we should bring that forward. I don't know if that answers your question. There is so, so there is no um, assumption, I think, from the MAG that CENB continues forever or is automatically in this year. I think that's what Constance is saying. There was some input from the work we did last year. There's some interest in doing something more. Does the MAG think that that is an appropriate <coughs> intercessional major work effort. And the answer could be, not sure, I need to think about it a little bit more. I think I would say then I think the MAG should tell Constance whether or not there's sort of enough interest for her to go away and develop um, a slightly more detailed proposal so that we can react to. Or if you're really not sure, um, unless it's a real no, then I think we just schedule a future call to talk about it a little bit more. Lisa, oh, sorry, Renata had the floor, and then Liesl, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and thanks, Constance, for bringing uh, this uh, proposal. Um, I'd like to highlight that um, it's, this theme is not exhaustive, uh, connecting the next billion. So uh, it's not like uh, it's going to be something instantaneously solved. So it's uh, also something we dealt with in the BPF gender and access that uh, to talk about connect, connecting women, uh, it needs to be an ongoing work. It needs to encompass empowering women. Uh, it needs to encompass, encompass meaning, meaningful access. So um, I'd not only like to, to lend my support to the proposal, but also to highlight the importance of um, the continuation of intersessional activities and projects of the IGF. And uh, we, 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 did, um, we did discuss uh, during the whole day with the backdrop on SDGs and action lines, so we should see this as uh, an evolutionary process and not uh, have a full stop every time uh, there is a determinate period for an intersessional activity or uh, a project. And um, so I think we need to, to really uh, put our energy on thinking about long-term plans for intersessional efforts too. Thanks. And I think that's a very good point, Renata. Um, I think one of the things, if the MAG decides to go forward and understand a little bit more about this proposal, we need to really understand um, the NRI's interest um, in it as well, because the NRI's actually supported significantly the first phase um, and the second phase. And if the NRI said little interest or high interest because of the things that they feel they need to address in their countries, and I think that's a really important element to bring in. I think it also, the conversation underscores, we really need to figure out how we work some of these relationships in terms of really understanding what the right intersect point is between what will help the NRIs um, with their <coughs> missions and what will help um, in the IGF and MAG respond to the other elements of the community that we hear from. So I think we, but there's a saying in the, you know, Internet B, conservative in what you send and liberal in what you receive. So if we can actually be open in terms of trying to understand what some of those other um, inputs are and, and be welcoming and understand what would be helpful, um, then I think we'll actually get the best and the richest proposals going forward. Um, we don't have all the processes in place to do that, I think, as smoothly and elegantly as we'd like, but hopefully that will come to be over the next year. 
Um, that was just because, Renata, you just triggered some <laughs> some comments and thinking in my mind. We have Liesl in the queue and then Miguel Candia. Liesl? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm in the camp of wanting to know a little bit more about what the a specific proposal would be, and I appreciate Constance putting out these ideas as a way to spur the thought process and, and germination of ideas. Um, so I think <clears throat> I would be in that camp to get a little bit more. And I, and I want to touch on something that I guess everyone else said. Um, Carolyn made an interesting point about how does this get integrated with other work that's going on. So that may be one thing to think about rather than, and let me tie it also to what Elizabeth said with regard to the open-endedness of, you know, what this might could be. And then to Renata's point about, I think she was making a point about either very you know, specific issues or places where it may, um, where things might not be, have, might not have been fully addressed. So can we look at it in a way that um, um, provides some specificity that gives um, more structured direction. I'm not sure what that is, frankly. I'm, I, I, I wasn't um, um, integrally involved in the work, and, and, I, and I appreciate the product. So I'm thinking, is there a way to um, augment or, the, the, or further the awareness and distribution and use of the product that it is? So maybe that could be part of the process as well. Thank you. Yeah, and I think those are very helpful comments, Lisa. Thank you. We have Miguel in the queue and Aubrey, and then I'm going to close the queue, um, put a proposal forward for what we might do with this um, going forward on the basis of comments here. Um, maybe a couple closing remarks from um, Thomas, um, who's leaving us, and then break. <laughs> um, so, Miguel, you have the floor. If you could be fairly brief, that would be helpful in terms of the time and the interpreters. Thank you, Chair. As, as brief as possible. I uh, just want to make mine then the words of the last two speakers <laughs> and support that. I just, want to, I, I just wanted to make, uh, well, first, I'm, I'm happy to see that I'm not the only one with uh, a bit of doubts. <laughs> I do see that connecting the, bex, the next million is a, a very important end game and objective for the IGF particularly. We shouldn't do so by forgetting that, uh, you know, SDG 5, that is gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls is one of paramount importance to resolve the gap between the connecting the next, mil, the next million for both genders and, but, and also with uh, SDG 17, uh, which, which allows us to bring to all together all the other SDGs. So those two need to be in whatever thing we do. But I, I will wait for the proposal that you just mentioned now. So I'm happy to, that you said that before my intervention. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Avery, you have the floor. Avery's online, so you'll need headphones if you don't have them on already. Thank you. Again, apology for forcing people to put on headsets. Um, I very much support. I think until we have connected the last billion, this needs to remain a goal and needs to remain something that we work on in a continuous manner. You know, I think it's really good for us to come back each year and sort of say, okay, you know, what are the objectives for this year in this project? But I think it's, a, it's an essential project. So I would very much appreciate seeing Constance take this and, and develop the theme further, develop what it's going to do further, because as long as it's a goal uh, of connecting the next billion until we've gotten to the last billion, it, it it should be something we work on. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Avery. And it, many people in the room have their headphones on, just not everybody, and we don't want to miss your words, which is why I just sort of trigger it. Um, based on um, the last couple of comments, um, I think we would ask Constance to um, go away and um, develop the proposal a little bit further. You could probably reach out to those folks that have had some specific comments. Constance did post this to the list about two weeks ago, so you have her email address. If there are things you specifically want to follow up on or question or have interest in, you can um, contact her to, um, to do that, and we'll schedule that for a future call. Um, and, I, and I know um, you already are as well, but I think we need to find a way to really kind of pull the other pieces of her 
intercessional activities in um, not just the NRIs, but we have a BPF in gender and a proposal to do another year of BPF on gender. So, um, but I know you're well integrated in those those pieces of work. Um, so we'll schedule that for a future um, mag meeting. Um, I just wanted to go through the rest of the agenda quickly. We'll come back at the beginning of, of the next meeting quickly to close on kind of the tags or the themes. I, I think we're really close to cleaning, and I just want to make sure that it's sort of um, kind of well agreed with respect to the um, approach, the way forward. Um, and then um, we'll pick up um, with a quick update on the BPFs. Um, I think the DCs, I mean, not only would I think it, they'd be better served at a later, I actually think if we could do a little bit of preparatory work, um, Aubrey, so that people understand the DCs, the roles they play, um, their history and things for the new members in particular, that would actually help us have a, a really proper discussion. Then we'll come back and we'll do the second meeting, timetables, NRIs, workshop on working evaluation, quick question of formats, new formats, and um, everybody can leave thereafter and go and enjoy the weekend. So we still have a lot of work to do this this afternoon too. Um, but I thank everybody for staying with the, the pace and um, really keeping their, their comments and the time allotted here. Thomas, did you have any comments you wanted to make before you mm. leave? Yes. Um, well, basically, I wanted to thank you all. Um, we have an enormous lot to do. We have lots of different ideas coming from different parts of the world. And uh, I think we have been working together very constructively to, to get some things done, get other things on track, uh, make sure that, that people are uh, more or less on the same page. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to support those or, 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 or say this not just on the Skype list but also here that um, remote participation is an issue, is a challenge and uh, we have to do everything we can to create equal access to, to uh, all ways of communication to the extent that is possible. It's not uh, hun possible to 100 percent but so uh, I think we should take this very seriously that we really integrate remote participants uh, as much as we can. Um, and uh, of course, I want to thank uh, Lynn as a chair, who I think is, is doing an excellent job. So I'm looking very much forward to, to, to continue to work with you, uh, Cenga you and Desa, everybody here. Um, yeah, try to get done whatever you can before you leave tonight. That's uh, <laughs> basically what, what I hope you will do. And I will uh, be informed and, and we will continue to, to work together. So it's a pleasure for me to, to, to be part of this. And I'm very much looking forward but, uh, yeah, to continuing work. That's all I have to say for the time being. Thank you. Chengatai has one quick update since we're one minute ahead of one on the results of the poll if people want to stew on that over lunch a little bit. Yeah. So since it is... Um well, let's wait 10 seconds. Um, no, it's... <laughs> it is one o'clock. The poll has closed. Um... <laughs> We have so Swiss. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, um, so the most um, convenient dates for everybody seems to be 13 to 15th of June. That is during the Wissers Forum. That's the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of the Wissers Forum. Um, so those are the dates that we are going to work with and try and confirm that we can do it. Uh, we'll send an email out as soon as we have solid confirmation that that is um, possible. But uh, it's something for you to think about during lunch as well. Thank you. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and the results of the poll are, of course, in the poll. If you took the yeah. poll, you can go in and see the results. And honestly, if you didn't even take the poll, you can just go in and see the results now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, really appreciate, uh, you know, the kind of pace we managed to get through um, this morning and look forward to seeing everybody back here promptly at 3 um, so that we make sure and, and get through. And there is a community um, group event here, which I would like somebody to introduce. I'm not quite sure who so that we know the time, location, and if there's um, desired participation. I take it it starts at 2? Uh, I don't know, Sandra or Ada or some? Mike. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What? Was that yesterday?
No, 1 to 145. Sorry, I'm not read any. So yes, uh, the, the NRI is meeting, which is an informal meeting, starts now, and it will go up to 1.45. Okay. And is that a meeting just to the NRIs, or actually you looking for an engagement and everyone with are welcome, yes, thank you. It, it's really as, as the NRIs wish. I'm just trying to make it clear. Marilyn? Um, I... Marilyn Kate speaking. I would just like to make a quick suggestion. We have done these meetings in the past, and sometimes uh, small conversations have continued in the background, which makes it very, very difficult for the NRIs who are participating remotely to actively participate. So I, I would make two suggestions. One is... Um, if you're not specifically going to focus on this session, perhaps um, you would realize that there's a number of remote NRIs. And secondly, I've been asked by uh, one or two of the remote NRI coordinators if there could be preference to uh, the remote NRI speaking um, so that they actually, and I, I turn to Anya on that, who I think is going to be, Anya, I assume you're going to be moderating this session, uh, but perhaps there would be some way to uh, give some priority attention to remote NRI coordinators who haven't been able to um, contribute, given the topic is actually work of the NRIs. Thank you, Marilyn. So, yes, we will try to make a balance between online and on-site present here participants. Um, of course, the priority will be given to the NRIs, but depending on the items of the, on the agenda, there will be a space for other interested uh, colleagues into the NRIs to intervene, especially related to the annual IGF meeting. So I would like to stay. I've been told I need to release the interpreters for the lunch break. Um, we are now moving into the NRI session, which will be moderated, facilitated, driven, owned, et cetera, by the NRIs. And we'll be back here at 3 promptly, everybody. Thank you.
Everyone, we will start in two to three minutes, so if you could take your seats. Thank you. Ali mi se... Knock, knock. We kindly invite Anna Rice to join first row. Or Anya will start screaming. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and thank you very much for, thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much for uh, staying for the Anna Rice informal meeting. There are many colleagues that have joined us online through WebEx. Uh, maybe it would be good if you could sit somewhere up front so that we're kind of closer. I am sitting here because I'm watching WebEx, uh, because the, this is a computer that controls WebEx. Uh, and also, it's good that we're able to see you. So not many of us are, uh, are in the room now, uh, but, but many colleagues are present online. What I wanted to start, and you've seen my agenda probably that I sent this morning, is maybe to start with some introductions from our side, just in case if there are colleagues that don't know us, um, to give brief updates, because I know some of you are having uh, your meetings, some of you are running the public call for input, some of you are having structural changes, so I think that would be of interest of the community to know what are the um, developments in that sense. Uh, we would uh, then speak briefly about the NRI's pages on the IGF website because uh, I wanted to hear your feedback and to see whether we should and how uh, we could improve that content uh, and the visibility of it. Uh, 
so that's kind of related to the fourth agenda item, which is how to make the NRI's individual work kind of be more visible. You remember that idea of having a dedicated news or updates from the NRI section on the IGF website, so I just wanted to tackle also on that uh, with all of you to see um, whether that's a good idea. And then, which I think that would take uh, most of our time, is this reflection to the uh, MAG's discussion in regards to the NRI, especially referring to yesterday. Uh, a discussion uh, reflecting the taking stock submission by the NRIs and also today we tackled a bit the NRIs. And of course, if you have anything to add under AOB, I think it would be a good time to say now. Well, I, yes, I see Marilyn. On you just very quickly under AOB, I've been asked by uh, Marcus Coomer, the chair of the IGF Support Association, to announce the invitation to an IGFSA event during ICANN 58. So if I could do that under uh, AOB, if, if there's time, and otherwise I could post it to the, to the list. Thank you, Marilyn. I think that's perfectly fine. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to uh, control also the WebEx. Um, so I see that the colleagues in, in WebEx also don't object to the agenda, so maybe we can consider it as, as adopted and maybe start with just quick uh, updates from our side. So maybe to start on this side from, from AIDA. Um, so I know CDIC is going to have a meeting soon and there are a lot of things happening, so if you could just inform the community about it. All right, so um, again, AIDA speaking on behalf of CDIC, Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance, sub-regional uh, IGF initiative. Uh, so this year it will be our third meeting uh, held in Ohrid, um, Republic of Macedonia. Uh, this year we will, um, so far we had one day meeting, so this year we are uh, happy to to say that we are extending it to almost uh, two full day meetings, uh, which on the pre-day we will have um, a youth uh, half day for youth uh, that will join us the second the second day. Um, so what uh, we are really glad to share uh, with our community and, and broader community here is that in only three years uh, we've managed to connect uh, the Southeastern European, uh, not only on this yearly event, but to have very vivid mailing lists, to have very vivid community on our online uh, social media that are sharing uh, their views, giving their um, very active, I would say, inputs that's been very helpful to us as an executive committee uh, and it's making things easier for us to actually have the bottom-up uh, bottom approach uh, because if you don't have the response from the community, then you cannot really work bottom-up. Um, so yes, in short, that's it. But Anya, if you have questions, please shoot. Uh, can you just make a reference because I know you're running this uh, preparatory work for the annual meeting on the specific topics. So the, the so-called working groups on each topic are still open and people can join if they're interested. Yeah, so this is actually also something we are super excited about because usually you have to pull people, you know, um, for their arms to join and, and work on the working groups. Uh, but um, we have five working groups. Uh, yes, no, six, sorry, working groups now. Uh, and each working group has five plus people who are everyone's working on it so uh, it's it's actually community building the agenda rather than us as an executive committee as well um, it's been an ongoing process and we will soon also release the overarching team as it takes us a bit more than it took us here all right thank you Aida uh, Arnold any updates from the Dutch IGF um, well, some, some uh, updates. Um, that is to say that uh, we had a debriefing meeting, the NLIGF uh, delegation to uh, uh, the last IGF meeting in Guadalajara uh, in the second half of February where we discussed the uh, way forward. Um, of course, I have to stress it was a minor, a small community compared to uh, the, the much larger community, which consists of around 150 people. Um, but uh, nevertheless, we had interesting discussions and uh, also came up uh, some new topics to be discussed. Uh, it, I must say it's a preliminary list, but uh, it, it was mentioned uh, um, Topics like fake news, um, 5G, and in relation to cybersecurity, um, IoT, and uh, ethics, 
and some, some other uh, uh, topics. But uh, I must stress, uh, we did reach out to the, the broader community, so that is work to be done for the coming month. We are planning our next meeting uh, somewhere in October. So um, hopefully we can, can, can have a discussion based upon the, the themes that will come, out, come forward from, from all the proposals uh, um, which have been tabled then. And, and uh, we expect to, uh, to have, again, around 150 people attending. Uh, we also try to, to have an outreach to uh, the private sector, apart from the, the telcos and the tech companies, but mainly seeking in, in uh, sectors like uh, banking, uh, like health and insurance, transport sector, because uh, they are uh, involved in the digitalization process. So uh, we, hope, we hope to keep them uh, or to get them on board. Next to, of course, parliamentarians. It's always a big effort to, to get them on the table, and uh, we managed a couple of years to, to have a few of them uh, participating, but this will be a main goal for this year. In the Netherlands, we are coordinating uh, this in, uh, in a, in a three-petite uh, corporation, and that is the Ministry of Economic Affairs, which I'm a part of. Um, then we have our Dutch registry, SIDN, and then we have our national platform for the information society. So three parties uh, building and working hard to uh, have a, a, a successful NLIGF each year. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, Sandra, you're a is in Estonia this year, so can you just give us a couple of updates? Destroying everything, sorry. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's taking place on the 6th and 7th of June in uh, Estonia and Tallinn with a day of pre-events for various groups, uh, which is already announced on the website. Um, it was for the first time that we did not launch a call for flash sessions or pre-events, but people just came to us even before or during the call for proposals, and um, we had so many requests that we are now already full and cannot accommodate any further requests. So this, this was actually a, a novum this year that we had all these requests before we actually started uh, to launch a call for it. And also the agenda uh, is online, the Eurodic wiki is up, so the registration is open and uh, the formation of uh, org teams just started and this is the moment where everyone no matter if he or she submitted a proposal or not, can actually become a member of an org team for those sessions who are now identified in the consolidated program. We are currently in the stage of reaching out to focal points. We'll have hopefully their confirmation soon, but um, as the wiki is our uh, collaboration tool is already up, uh, everyone who's interested can send an email to um, the functional email address which is mentioned on every subpage on the session and uh, can join the org teams which are just in the stage of formation. And um, then we are also working again to set up a youth program again, but uh, here the details will be published and, and uh, uh, the call will go out later in the program. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Um, there is not a Serbian IGF, right, Slobodan? But uh, let us know if there are any updates on that side. No, I'm just uh, here as a friend of the house. There was a Serbian IGF uh, <laughs> back between uh, 2008 and 2011, but uh, uh, we are waiting for another opportunity to make, uh, to make it a truly multi-stakeholder uh, thing. But in the meantime, we so strongly support uh, CIDIC in, you know, financially, logistically, in every other way. A lot of physical work about CEDIC. Um Laura? Thank you. Laura Watkins from the UK IGF. Um, we held our event in November last year and we've had a sort of wrap-up and kick-off session for this year's planning. We're planning a main event in September and also we're trying to outreach and be more multi-stakeholder. So when I say that we've had a meeting, I mean the organising committee, um, which traditionally we've used to shape our agenda, but we're trying to copy your day a little bit and be more multi-stakeholder, and we're hoping to have a planning open consultation slash outreach meeting in May this year, um, which we'll do alongside the British Computer Society to reach out through their members as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Raquel, about the LAC IGF? 
Thank you, Anya. Um, so I'm Raquel Gatto. I'm part of the program committee for the LAC IGF, which is Latin America and Caribbean preparatory meeting uh, for the IGF. Um, so we have some updates. We uh, we have a tentative date for early August. Uh, we had a call for hosts uh, and we received uh, seven full proposals that were screened and complied with the requirements. Now, we should have a decision by today or later next week of the one we are picking up. Uh, that's a good problem, right? If we could choose the seven, one per year, that would be really good, but that's not the case. Um, and then um, we do have a changing uh, the mood stakeholder uh, program committee is in transition, so we will have the 12 seats announced soon. Uh, we have a new secretariat point of contact, Cesar Diaz from LACNIC, um, which is now in, in contact with Anya and, and in the NIR's circle. Um, we also have the open uh, questionnaire for inputs for the topics that the community wants to, uh, to see in the agenda this year. Um, it usually works very well. Last year we received almost 200 uh, uh, inputs, uh, which is amazing. It's difficult for the program committee, but um, it's a good problem uh, again. Um, and we are also starting some improvements uh, within our processes and communications based. Uh, last year we held an open mic session and received a lot of comments and, and improvement requests from the community, so we are trying to slowly implement that um, it started with a revamp of the website last month um, with having a special place for a someone cut out okay Probably. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, getting some documentation out of our history um, and, uh, and our own internal processes and also mapping out the national um, and uh, capacity building initiatives related to uh, uh, internet governance in the region. I also want to note that we, we have two countries organizing their first IGF this year, uh, Panama and Guatemala. Panama is probably going uh, for for the week of the 18 April, I, I don't recall the exact date, I was looking for it, and uh, Guatemala also is looking for uh, some um, some dates in May, they just held um, their first preparatory meeting, uh, which seems to be this growing trend of national IGFs, so that's it. Thank you, Raquel. Um, anyone else here who would like to give an update? So we have Israel, yes, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Israel Rosas from Mexico. I'm a member of the local group on internet governance. Just to share with you that we have uh, we had our first uh, meeting uh, for this year. Um, we are uh, planning to have our uh, national IEF called uh, Dialogues on Internet Governance Dur during the first half of, of the of the year um, and. Um, just uh, just taking a new uh, a new uh, uh, rhythm after the IEF meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. Uh, we have Marilyn here. Thank you. I want to give a quick report on IGF USA, where I serve as the chief catalyst. That is not the co-chair, but the chief catalyst. Um, we have, uh, this is, as I mentioned before, we launched in 2009 and have held IGFs since that time, except for one year when the government of the United States closed for 15 days and presented a major challenge. So hopefully we won't have any government closings this year. We have picked a um, uh, location, that is the uh, CSIS in Washington, D.C., and the tentative date is targeted for the week after the ECOSOC high-level event. Because of our proximity to New York, for the past uh, several years, we have been able to invite uh, unique speakers to come actually from the UNGA. We have typically also invited the MAG chair and also um, first Marcus and then Changatai, and we will do that again. It's a one-day event in Washington, D.C. There may be some day zero um, activities as well. We will this year 
make another effort, we have tried before, but we're trying again, to have either lead up events, one in New York City and one in Silicon Valley, or to actually have uh, remote hubs, uh, or to do work on day zero and then feed in. Uh, our, we're very different in the sense that we do not focus on national policy because of um, uh, the um, issues and participation from about 87 participants in the steering group, there's a very strong focus on taking a global perspective and looking at it with a national perspective. So we don't, for instance, try to influence net neutrality at the US FCC, but we're interested in many of the other issues that the rest of the NRIs are interested in. We follow the um, agenda and program very closely of the IGF, and there is always a very direct reflection of the theme and some of the main topics. For the past two years, we've held town halls. In 2015, it was WISIS plus 10. We had attendance from both ambassadors' offices, um, from the UNGA that were the facilitators of WISIS plus 10. And last year, it was a town hall on connecting the next billions. Um, so I expect us to do a town hall again this year as a main session or a very large uh, multi-hour workshop. It will likely focus, if agreed to, by the steering committee, uh, committee participants on the SDGs and internet governance issues. Um, we're reintegrating youth in a new way. We have a relationship with Elon University, um, but we this year are relaunching a youth activity uh, which will bring some youth speakers into the workshops as individual participants and panels and the main session, and then also have a group of youth organize a workshop that they organize youth organizing around issues of concern to youth with with no one under the age of about 24 allowed to be a speaker, although they can be in the room and observe. So, and I, again, I'll just repeat our date. That will make it the week after. So it's, that would be the week of June, the, sorry, July the 21st. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, you are in the WebEx chat. You follow the discussion. There are some questions. Uh, I think they are directed to you, so maybe you can respond uh, to them just to save time, and if needed later, you can summarize them. Any updates here in the room also? I know, yes, Zaina, maybe about Lebanon. Yes, hi. Uh, I just, uh, I don't want to repeat every time I'm in the meeting with the MAG, I say we will, we will launch the Lebanese IGF, but till, but till now we didn't. The, there, there were many changes in the administration in Lebanon, and that was the main reason to, to delay uh, our uh, uh, initiative. But just before uh, coming, uh, uh, I was in, yeah, last week, I received the approval from my management to, uh, to trigger the, the process. And uh, probably before the end of March, we will, be, uh, we will have our first meeting. Actually, after coming back, we will issue a press release about this meeting, uh, the, the three days meeting we had at the MAG here, and we'll uh, finish this press release by announcing that uh, Lebanon will, wor will start uh, working on the Lebanese IGF, and it will be like uh, invitation, a public invitation in the local uh, newspapers for, uh, for the people interested to join the core team. And after the press release uh, and following the approval of the management, as I said before, we will send uh, invitations to specific entities that we know that they are interested in participating in the Lebanese IGF. And I think uh, by end of March, we will have this meeting and we, at least we will have the uh, main uh, uh, team composed to start the process of uh, establishing our uh, IGF. Thank you. Thank you, Zaina. Um, I would now move to the online participants, if you don't mind, then we can do the next round. So, I'll just go how I see the colleagues in my chat. So Jennifer from Regional Asia Pacific IGF is the first one. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? This is Jennifer Chung. Should I continue? We can Am hear you. 
Perfect, thank you. Uh, my name is Jennifer Jones. Um, I'm part of the Secretariat for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. I'm very happy that the remote participation is enabled so people like me could also participate. Um, just some brief updates. Um, our eighth annual meeting will be held from July 26th to 29th in Bangkok. We will be having a day zero event. Um, our um, youth IGF, which is initiated and organized by youth ambassadors, will also be held concurrently with sessions that will also be integrated into the main schedule. So we do have a theme for this year's APR IGF. Um, the theme is ensuring an inclusive and sustainable development in the Asia Pacific, a regional agenda for internet governance. So, um, you know, our, our discussion on this theme wasn't as a uh, lengthy as as the one that was uh, going on for the past few days in the MAG meeting, but um, this is what we're going to be having for this year. Um, also, the call for fellowships is open for the APEC region. These are for individuals who are residing in the Asia-Pacific region, and this will be open until the 8th of March, uh, uh, end of the, uh, I think it's 2023 or, or 24, 2400 UTC, and the call for workshop proposals are also open, and this is open until the 15th of March, uh, 2400 UTC. Um, so in terms of, I guess, the organizational structure of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, if um, people aren't so familiar with it, we do have a multi-stakeholder steering group. This group is open to all. It is, you know, for bottom-up um, consensus building, uh, that also includes a couple of subcommittees, one of which is the programming committee, which is also open to everyone. Um, they're currently meeting to decide on, you know, workshop proposals and review. And also the fellowship committee is, is currently meeting as well. This committee is also open to all. Um, so the APR IGF has for the past two years uh, provided an, uh, well, a synthesis document which was used as input to the CNB, uh, CENB phases one and two. Um, this will be continued um, during this year's uh, APR IGF. So the drafting committee, which is also a voluntary and open committee that is responsible to shepherd all the uh, thoughts and, and notes from all the participants and also everybody who um, participates in APR IGF will be also meeting soon. So all this information can be uh, gleaned from the website APRGF.Asia. Um, that's uh, my brief update. Thank you all. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Julian, Colombian IGF, just a quick update if... Thank you, Anja. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, well, we have a meeting yesterday at the Colombian IGF. Uh, I'm participating in civil society and I'm part of the initiative. And uh, we decided to have uh, our fourth meeting this year by the end of September or uh, at the beginning of uh, October. Uh, don't have the dates, uh, exact dates now, but uh, that will be the, the period of time we decided. Uh, what is going on in Colombia initiative is interesting in terms that uh, Ministry of, of uh, ICTs is uh, 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 very uh, getting very much interested in in um, in the activities and is proposing uh, proposing an action plan and uh, for the activities uh, of the uh, Colombian IGF uh, that we are uh, all building together and uh, we want to uh, plan uh, and to put in place uh, different activities especially to get more uh, uh, stakeholders involved, especially uh, young uh, groups, and also um, it's uh, growing uh, very fast uh, interest from the academic uh, sector that uh, wasn't um, not participating too much. And also it's um, different activities. Uh, we are meeting every two months and uh, there were presentations about digital economy as, a, a, as an emerging issue. And um, we are also aiming uh, 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 
uh, uh, as I mentioned, other groups uh, uh, to join and uh, also to uh, in inviting the fourth uh, meeting international um, um, uh, international participants that will uh, help us to increase the discussion. And uh, we are uh, trying to get involved also in the uh, regional and the NRI initiatives as uh, we did in, uh, last year and continue supporting all this work uh, that we are doing uh, from the NRI's uh, uh, platform. So I think it's uh, um, a brief uh, uh, resume of our activities. Thank, Thank you, you, Julian. Uh, Lorena from German IGF. Um, good. Uh, good day to everyone. Um, the German IGF is uh, has had a, a meeting last week, and um, we are about to launch the first online call for participation. Until now, our call for participations were calls to participate on-site and discuss on-site um, the program, uh, the format, etc. Um, because we lacked of uh, the corresponding infrastructure digitally. Now we, we addressed this, this uh, in the last months and uh, we will be able to do an open uh, a broader call this year. This is something we're working on. and. Um, the same goes for the youth uh, program. The, um, the, the youth uh, IGF delegates are also working on their call um, to launch it soon. And we are trying to create this year uh, what we call the IG week. So we're trying to coordinate with um, diverse constituencies so that um, first we have a youth pre-event um, and also a uh, academia prevent, and then we have the IGF. Um, and it is not clear yet when the private sector constituency uh, would would uh, accommodate their meeting. Um, it would be ideal if they could do that also in advance. Um, but it's unclear yet if it happens afterwards. And what we also have for the first time is um, there is a constituency of um, media and press, and they are going to have a symposium um, in, immediately after the IGF, but in coordination with the IGF, um, with the German IGF. Um, so this is also a, a novelty for us. Um, and we're very much looking to that. And um, we are working on some projects, but they're still unclear yet whether uh, it, they will turn out to be the way we want them to be. So um, I might come with new surprises within the next months, but this is uh, so far what, um, what I can confirm in the name of my colleagues. Uh, and by the way, of course, we're still working on our memorandum of understanding because we created a new structure last year. We have a big steering committee with 28 members from government, parliament, uh, technical community, academia, youth, and um, private sector so far from my side. Thank you, Lorena. And uh, Makan, can you hear us? Makan, uh, we can't hear you, so we will yes. come back to you yes. later. Yes, I am there. You didn't have uh, Okay, now we can hear you. <laughs> okay, good afternoon from Dakar, everyone. Uh, my name is Makan Pai. I'm a former ECA staff and currently a resource person with the African Union, where I coordinate the African IGF Secretariat. I've been part of the IGF issue since uh, its beginning and organizing the African IGF uh, each year. Uh, the bid to host the African IGF 2017 was prepared in four languages, Arabic, English, French, and Portuguese in February, and was sent to all African governments and stakeholders. 
Uh, the closing date for the bid is the uh, 3rd April, and the last uh, IGF was held in uh, October 2016 in South Africa. We hope that by the closing date, uh, we will have submission from interested countries. Already, we have uh, been approached by a few countries uh, who are showing their interest. I am also the chair of the West African IGF Planning Committee, and we had our first meeting on the 27th of March or 27th of February, and it was decided to host the uh, next West African IGF on 27-28 July 2017 in Cotonou, uh, Benin. Uh, Mary, if she's uh, connected, can say more about it because she's the coordinator of the West African IGF. Uh, finally, I was approached by the Senegalese Ministry of ICT to assist uh, them in organizing the Senegal is National IGF for 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Makan. Uh, Mary? We have Mary and after that, Tamar, and, and I have to read uh, an update from Indonesia, Jeff. Mary, unfortunately, we can't hear you, so maybe we can try later and go now to Amar. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Omar Ansari from uh, uh, IGF Afghanistan. Hello? Hello? Mary, can you wait a couple of uh, seconds until Omar is done, and then I will call your name again. Okay, do. Omar, please, if uh, you could continue. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is our uh, first IGF uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, we started uh, um, a year ago with the uh, discussions in planning how we should do. It took us some time to uh, prepare the IGF Afghanistan. Uh, but luckily, uh, we we are done with the preparations. The meeting dates are uh, 28 to 31st March. Uh, the uh, key issues uh, for IGF Afghanistan includes access in diversity, freedom of uh, expression, quality of service in pricing, cybersecurity, local technologies in digital trade, uh, privacy and ethics, uh, youth and gender in emerging issues. Uh, there will be a day zero. Uh, we will be uh, doing a, 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 a workshop on uh, uh, women in technology, and uh, uh, we are also in process of discussing with another group uh, uh, who's interested in doing uh, a school of uh, internet uh, on day zero. So probably you will have. Uh, these two meetings on uh, day zero. The first one is confirmed, the women in tech, but the other is under is still in the process of discussing and finalization. Uh, on day one, we'll have a, a, an opening plenary, uh, uh, quite a few workshops, and on day two, we'll have uh, workshops in a closing ceremony. Um, uh, the website is uh, uh, more information are available on our website, which is very easy. IGF.af. Uh, you can check it. We had a call for workshop proposals, but unfortunately, we did not receive a good response. Uh, about five workshop proposals are there, uh, but we are uh, um, also uh, providing coaching to uh, some other potential. Um, organizers of the workshop so that we can organize uh, uh, half more workshops uh, on different topics uh, uh, of interest for IGF Afghanistan. Uh, this was our first time and the way we wanted to do it, uh, uh, like every other IGF, uh, through a call for proposals. Uh, this was, uh, since many people were not familiar with, uh, with this format, uh, that might be one of the um, uh, main issues. We did not receive a good number of uh, uh, workshop proposals. Uh, but when we do these coaching uh, sessions with various players uh, in Afghanistan, uh, we might uh, increase the number of uh, workshops. Uh, the structure includes uh, an organizing committee 
which is comprised of members from the government, uh, private sector, civil society, academia, technical community. Uh, there are some really strong players uh, sitting on our organizing committee and also we have international uh, experts like uh, Marilyn Kate has been there uh, supporting us uh, from the IGF uh, but USA, uh, providing us with support and uh, and, uh, and advice uh, on how we should uh, do uh, the IGF Afghanistan. Uh, but from the IGF uh, Secretariat, we have been uh, receiving support to Anya. Uh, she's been uh, uh, involved in providing us with support and assistance. Uh, not only with the, uh, the, the logistical, like the WebEx, but also uh, other advice on how we could do the IGF Afghanistan better. Uh, and then we have a program committee, uh, which mostly deals with the uh, IGF Afghanistan program. Uh, and then we have uh, a management team who looks after the management uh, uh, and uh, other operational uh, issues. Uh, with funding and logistics, uh, uh, we have uh, some confirmed uh, support through the CLDP, which is uh, Center for um, Law Development uh, Program, Commercial Law Development Program. Uh, and uh, IGF, uh, IGFSA has provided some support to the uh, IGF uh, Afghanistan. Uh, Technician has been uh, putting some uh, some support into IGF Afghanistan, and also APNIC and uh, Facebook uh, sh uh, have shown interest in sponsoring um, the IGF Afghanistan, but we're still in process of discussing uh, with them uh, in, in uh, next week or so, it's going to be uh, finalized. Uh, with a report, uh, 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 sorry, remote uh, participants, uh, we have uh, a strong bandwidth uh, that's been procured uh, and uh, the IGF uh, Secretariat is going to be helping us with setting up uh, the WebEx so that more people from uh, other regions in Afghanistan and abroad can connect with us on the day, speakers and participants. Uh, and also there will be a translation uh, facility available. Uh, uh, the um, main two official languages of Afghanistan are Pashto and Dari, uh, but there will be English speaking participants. So in these three languages uh, will have uh, uh, the translation uh, uh, available. I can and I saw. Omar, thank you so much. I think, can you, can you maybe mute Omar? Can we move uh, just this, the, these details maybe to the list because uh, we have only for, I think, 15 minutes this room and then colleagues will be back. But thank you so much for these updates. I think it's very important because it's the very first IGF and I know how you struggle to organize one. If Omar is in agreement with me, then uh, can we hear from Mary? And then that would be, I think, the last intervention. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear can me? Hear Mary. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And um, thank you for this opportunity to give another brief on um, what's happening in Nigeria. Uh, the new thing for us is that um, the 2016 uh, was well attended uh, as usual and the uh, remote participation was good. And uh, at the end of it, we made recommendations and uh, we sent those recommendations to our stakeholders. We have received commendation from uh, government and uh, they're saying the, the, the Minister of Communication, uh, you know, establishing a working group to look at the recommendations that would affect or that would be incorporated in policy development in the ICT uh, sector of the economy of Nigeria. I think that's the only, that's one, one thing we could uh, uh, say that has happened in Nigeria in, in respect to 2016. In 2017, we decided to organize a retreat, as I said at our last meeting, and um, we looked at our structure. We also looked at co-locating events so that when we are doing the NIGF, it will be an opportunity to, to reach out to our law enforcement agents and train them on IG issues because they too have to know what's going. So we would have two days for them and then have one day for the youth and then the normal IGF will do. We're also looking at um, the NSIG, that is Nigeria 
School of Internet Governance and asking initiators or drivers, anybody that could come do that for us. That's one of the things we are looking at. And again, we are, we are taking a new plunge or a new strategy for funding, fundraising, and we are trying to have MOU with our strategic fundraiser um, uh, funders to be able to know that consistently instead of us going every year, we know that we have there's a sustainability of funding for our program. Um, then the retreat, the sub-regional uh, organizers or the focal points at the sub-regional, sub-national level were around also to participate. And so we, 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 we are hoping that the sixth renewed uh, I, NIGF will hold in July. The date has not been uh, uh, concluded but we have started consultation in, as to team and sub-team, and uh, by then we'll be able to, to get that. For the West African IGF, uh, McKen has already said that, and uh, there's a new date now, that, as McKen has said, because we had thought it would be first to eight, uh, third of August, but there's a new date towards the end of July. You know, heard it from him. And uh, all we are doing is that the consultation for team and sub-team has started, and we are asking asking um, uh, contributors or uh, suggestion from the community uh, to focus on what um, the West Africa, uh, the ECOWAS has as strategy for 2017. So those are things that are happening. I, I don't have to go to the details because we don't have the, all the time, but um, just to give a, a highlight that we are running our NIGF and we are running the West African IGF and we are doing very fine, thank you. Thank you, Mary, for these inputs. And I am just going to say that in Indonesia, they are planning to organize their IGF before the regional uh, Asia-Pacific IGF that's going to be in July, and that there are several developments toward the capacity building on the IG issues uh, in, uh, in, the, in the whole country, so not just in the capital. And thank you, Cindy, for this. I, there's a quick intervention from Aida. And yeah, just quickly to say uh, regarding Southeastern Europe, uh, as we are mostly developing countries, we have uh, 11 active, and I believe all of them are um, acknowledged by the IGF Secretariat. And also Macedonian IGF is currently um, under preparations. Hopefully it will be held, I believe, day uh, before a CDIG. So uh, since they don't have currently representative right here, I would like to say that. And also Omar uh, reminded me um, about the importance that IGF Secretariat's role was uh, in, in, in um, well, not only increasing the number, but really feeling, uh, giving the feeling of these countries while they were organizing their national, especially their national uh, IGF. So, Anya, thank you for being the bridge. I know the whole secretariat was working on this, but somehow you made people, um, you know, very easy to reach out to you to ask whatever questions because you know when you're like in a small country then you feel like you are asking sort of stupid questions and because of that feeling uh, you are not doing the process right but you really made people sort of feel um, okay to ask whatever they needed at the point so thank you thank you Aida Hisham do you have any Yes, um, just a quick update about the, uh, the Arab IGF. Uh, the Arab IGF started in uh, uh, 2012. Uh, for the first four years, we have had the annual event in uh, several locations, uh, uh, from Kuwait to Algeria to Lebanon and back to Lebanon again. For the last year in uh, 2016, it was uh, a process uh, initiated for the review of the uh, uh, working modalities of, of the Arab IGF. It was initiated by the uh, League of Arab States and the uh, UN ESQA, the uh, UN Commission for uh, Eastern uh, uh, and West uh, Afri uh, Asia. Uh, so the, the process actually for the review started with uh, the formulation of um, uh, a group of experts from uh, different stakeholder groups. Uh, the, the, the group actually met for three times uh, over the last uh, like uh, nine months. Uh, for the time being, we are still having one meeting to go uh, before we finalize the, uh, the view work. Uh, for the last year, we have, we have had um, uh, to wait until the view process is complete before we initiate a new 
uh, annual meeting, but for 2017 we, uh, we have confirmations from uh, the League of Arab States and the UN ESQA that uh, there will be a bid for uh, a host for 2017, and that, uh, of course, will follow with announcing uh, dates and uh, the rest of the uh, preparation process. Thank you so much. I think there are no updates so far, and I don't see anything on WebEx. But uh, so now moving to the, this uh, third agenda item and following what you said now, I think these are very important updates, but uh, not many of us are familiar with everything, even amongst the NRI. So this is something that kind of uh, made us also thinking in the Secretariat uh, whether there would be a chance maybe to consolidate everything on one place so when somebody is interested to know what's happening in like IGF and in Afghanistan, IGF can find one place to see it. And of course, I would be in a communication with you. So I just wanted to kind of tackle a bit on this issue and explore with you whether you think it's a good idea and how should we approach to it to maybe have a separate section on the IGF website on the updates that are coming from the NRIs and that are of relevance to the, to the community. Yes, I see Marilyn and after Raquel, and I think Zaina wanted to speak. Thank you, Marilyn Kate. I just wanted to mention, to go back to our original substantive meeting in 2015 when the NRIs working together came up with a number of concrete uh, recommendations, one of which was to have a dedicated focal point. Um, others included addressing this issue of more visibility, improvements on the website, the web page, et cetera. There's been some limited discussion about the idea of maybe a NRI news um, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to call it an announcement section where, and it has not been well developed, it's just come up occasionally, but where NRIs could post news such as the launch of their planning process or the date of their event. Right now, the only place that information can really go is into the uh, NRI regional list, the list we all use, and that misses the, the public eye of people who just visit the uh, IGF website. So one thing I'd like to really understand is would it be possible even to just do a pilot of sort of news from the NRIs, limit it to specific announcements so that it's, you know, it's not bulky and provide links to the more detailed uh, announcements. But that way we could make sure, particularly if report media are looking at the, the website, uh, local media, national media, but also global media, that it'd be easier to find the announcements of the events. So that's one comment I wanted to make. Um, and I think you know, it, we might even just try it as a pilot and see if others would find it useful, but give a little bit of guidance on what should be submitted so people don't feel like they do work and it gets rejected. Um, but it would just be a news from the NRIs, not a report because the reports are elsewhere. And then I had a, a later comment, but I did want to field that uh, and see if there continued to be interest in that. Thank you, Raquel. Well, I would like first to support uh, Anya's uh, proposal that we could have this space for updates, and uh, I think it's important. It will help. We are maturing and evolving with the NRR's network. I think it's the next step after the, the mailing list and the, the calls. Um, I would just make kind of a, not a, an alert, but a, I, I'm not so uh, finding the wording now, but um, that it it's not a have lift. Let's remember those are volunteers most of the time who are working with the national and regional IGFs. And so uh, asking too much um, will be a burden. Um, and in that sense, I would also, uh, thinking about the process of workshops, uh, how the workshops organizers have kind of uh, log in and week where they can directly uh, a change might be an idea of, you know, they have access to this uh, and they can update their information timely there. So just an idea. Thank you, Raquel. And I, was Zaina? No. Okay, I think we have Makan that would like to speak.
Yes, uh, good afternoon again. Yeah, I think um, this idea is a very good one because um, we need to have a place where we can share experiences and uh, give some few updates because those updates, uh, I mean, even if they are short, they can be used as a, a starting point for some of the NRIs and when doing their work. It will complement the toolkit because the, the toolkit is a heavier document which cannot be updated often. But the corner where we can have uh, regular information on what's happening in the IGF uh, can be very useful. It, uh, to make it uh, live, maybe we need to have um, to give access to the focal points where they can put uh, some key information with uh, templates to, to upload and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Makan. Uh, any other notes on this? Yeah, Anya Samiran, I just want to go to what um, uh, Makan just said. Um, there's been a kind of an informal um, discussion with uh, uh, Gipo, Gipo? Gipo, thank you. Um, about their um, capabilities, and it might be good to just mention the planned webinar because that I think would be an, edu an opportunity to gather information from the NRIs about whether that will be a place where the uh, some of the information McCain mentioned um, could be could be gathered. Well, yes, we talked again with uh, with Christina from European Commission about Tripo. I think uh, there was one webinar where the NRIs were invited to attend. Uh, Luis knows more about JIPO. Honestly, we still need to learn, first of all, how the tool works, but uh, apparently it could be of use of the NRIs, of course, if you, uh, if you need it as, as, a, as, as a resource to share your information. But uh, I think in March we will have a webinar with the European Commission. We will invite all of you, so if you're interested to join, then uh, I guess we can all be learning about it, first of all, in, in March, but we will uh, send uh, official information on the list. So if there are no any updates, at least I get some idea uh, to share on the list and to explore this option with, with other colleagues. Of course, it's just an option that came uh, in Mexico uh, by some of the colleagues saying that it would be good if certain news would be available also to the uh, global IGF stakeholders and just interested individuals. So let's explore it on the list uh, as well. Uh, I don't know whether Shengitai has anything to say. Uh, and uh, I would, because I just want to be in respect over the time for Swallow, Shengita and Lynn, because they stayed here, um, just to uh, reflect briefly on uh, the MAG discussion yesterday and also this morning a bit uh, in regards to the NRIs and in regards especially to the taking stock submission that was submitted by the NRIs. So I will just ask you briefly maybe to give your uh, feedback on that. Um, some of you are MAG members, but uh, I would like if you could speak, uh, first of all, as the NRI's coordinators or uh, members of the organizing committees. Uh, we have Aida, Sandra, I think Marilyn would like. All right, so um, about the, I, I think the first thing is that maybe uh, we could send some sort of uh, an explanation to the list because I think people got confused in which uh, relation we're talking about the NRIs and the IGF and I think there were like several tracks of how people understood. And I also believe that the reason was because it was towards the end of the day, people were tired. Uh, when Anya read about the NRIs, um, probably she was also tired and maybe some things uh, had to be um, emphasized more, such as that uh, NRI session would look, or tracks, whatever we want to have, would look differently uh, this and next year's. Um, so talking from the both national and, and sub-regional perspective, I believe it would definitely not be fair um, after we sort of hooked up uh, all those people to work so hard over the past year or years uh, and to feel a part of 
the global thing because we were telling them, you know, you are feeding into here and there and then uh, now just to sort of uh, put them aside. Uh, I don't think that would be <clears throat> um, either nice if you wish or it, it wouldn't make sense at all. Uh, and also another thing is that uh, I I, I said this the first day that uh, NRIs are something that is really inclusive and bottom-up and something that global IGF is leaning towards. And we finally made this bridge and like, let's not uh, lose it right now. So I'm very much uh, plus one for uh, definitely including them and uh, also to, to um, maybe avoiding NRIs to um, finding a way to, to submit like others, but maybe giving them, okay, I cannot find the right word, like not the perks, but something like that to, to have some other way of, of, you know, being present rather than just through submitting, uh, submitting um, sessions. Okay, before I give a floor to Raquel, um, Shekita gave me a, one very important note is that it seems that you will not be able to have lunch if you don't go now because they will close the canteen. So, um, you know, I, I understand people eat on these meetings. Some of us don't, but uh, please be free then to go. I think that's the at least what we can do. And uh, if somebody's not eating, so maybe we can stay. Will we, will we have time really, to I, ask? I think you need to eat. Will we have time to ask questions? Because I do have one. Yes. Um, so uh, at the agenda, I saw that uh, on the ICANN meeting, there will be a session um, dedicated to the NRIs. Uh, as far as I remember, I cannot open the agenda now. Um, it's organized. Uh, it's NRI, it says NRIs. And also, my question, so two questions. What is the aim of the session? Uh, can we explore how many people from the NRIs will be there, send it? some updates to the list, whatever. And second thing, uh, which uh, I would like to be changed uh, unless it's a mistake, uh, it is marked with C, uh, which usually at the ICANN meetings means closed session, and I would be very much against that, like personally, and, and I believe NRIs too, and other people who want to meet, uh, to join, which I believe NRIs are pretty much open. Thank you. Uh, I think that's why Marilyn asked for the AOB. Can you do it now uh, yeah, I'll very do it. quickly? I'll Thank do you. it very quickly. Um, I, I, there has been, uh, since Marrakesh, an uh, informal gathering of NRI coordinators and friends during the ICANN meetings. And those meetings were not on the agenda. Uh, they weren't closed, but they were, you know, sort of the community coming together on a voluntary basis. And when either Anya or Changatai were there, they were always invited to speak, but it was really bottom up and the NRIs themselves kind of gave a similar report. That title is wrong. It's been updated. It's a, sponsored by the IGF Support Association. And Mandy's trying to change it. I'll just see if I can uh, put the, it says something like the following. Um, IGF Support Association invites NRI coordinators and others to, uh, to a briefing about IGFSA's activities and uh, membership engagement. Uh, lunch will be served. There'll be a brief program. Marcus Coomer, as the chair, will make opening, uh, the chair of the IGFSA will make opening remarks. And then we will be, because I'm on the IGFSA executive committee, we will be inviting um, NRIs who are attending. Mary's a regular attendant. Some of the other folks are to make one minute comments. But the program will only be about 30 minutes and then we'll have sandwiches. It's Closed is the wrong word, but you have to RSVP so you can get lunch. Uh, but, um, but it won't be closed, and it never has been closed. It's just been, you know, it, it is a meeting that has taken place informally. So, but it should be changed later today. Mandy is on the West Coast, and she just has to get the webmaster to change it. All right, so in, like if you would accept just uh, maybe to add some kind of you know, note that it is not closed, because sometimes when people see this, they think it's a sort of a high-level meeting, and to reach out to NRIs, people usually feel excluded and don't. Right. It, it, no, clo the C will be removed, but the description will say, please RSVP. Thank you, Marilyn. Marilyn will inform maybe also on the NRI list about this that's organized by the IGFSA. Yes, please be free. I mean, the list is open, so. Uh, thank you. Any other feedback on, yes, from Lynn? 
Oh, okay, so I just wanted to ask if there are any other feedback on the MAG discussion in regards to the NRIs. I see Sandra and Raquel, but please, if you want to go to have lunch, please be free, so go. I, I have to go in like 20 minutes to the airport, so I just say goodbye to everyone already. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think to summarize these uh, three days of open consultation and work meeting, I think one very, very positive thing is that the NRI is on the agenda and on the radar of almost everyone, which I think is a great achievement. After we had this uh, successful meeting in Guadalajara, we uh, are now also on the agenda when MAC discussions are being held. I realized there was some confusion about main session and our input and, and not the main session and all this. I think uh, um, it would be very helpful if Anya maybe could be a summary for uh, all NRIs on, and, and post it on the list, reading the transcript again, maybe uh, reconfirming with, with the chair that uh, the right message is, is somehow summarized in, in an email which is sent to the list because uh, yeah, I, I, I think I don't have to explain why we would need a summary. And then also um, uh, the discussion about what we are going to um, to request from the IGF and from, from the UN and from the Secretariat. I think it would be helpful if we pose the questions um, um, on uh, do we want to have a mark support, do we want to uh, support uh, do we want to continue with the support from the IGF? I think it would be helpful if we post that question also on the NRI website and ask for, let's say, a sort of a consensus call or, or whatever, because we don't vote. But a consensus call would probably help, because I understood, uh, Lynn, that we cannot just initiate something f because some people in the room who are, have to happen to be present can are demanding something. We need broader support for if we create some sort of liaison, connection, linkage, but however we call it. I mean, that should be very light, but we should have consensus from a broader NRI community and not only of those who have been in the room. I, I think I would ask that questions and, and make a consensus call and put a summary. And then I think we will have a next call and have to discuss uh, how we are going to organize our activities in, in, uh, in, in Geneva if we want to request a main session or not, if we are going for, for regional tracks or if we have a booth again, if we offer national tracks. I think that's all something which we have to discuss now among NRIs in the light of uh, the outcome of this um, first MARC meeting and also in the light of all the contribution because not only the NRIs contributed to the uh, stock taking, we also have to consider the requests from other uh, parties like the dynamic coalitions or the best practice forums and I think the Merck has the difficult situation or the difficult task to bring all these requests together and I could imagine this is, this is very difficult and of course we have to take this into consideration as well. So thank you very much and goodbye already. Oh, safe travel, Sandra. Thank you for, uh, for this. Um, it's definitely taken into account and, and the summary will be sent. Uh, of the, the MAG meeting in regards to the NRI's Raquel, and then I'll ask maybe Lynn and Shangatai to respond to what Sandra said. Okay, thanks, Sana. More than food, if there is coffee, we're fine. <laughs> but, so I'm tempted to say plus one to Sandra uh, on having the monthly summary. Also, we got lost with some of the updates and also uh, with the consensus, clear consensus. Um, uh, request that that would be helpful regarding yesterday discussion to be honest as a new uh, mag member I was kind of yeah confused <laughs> but anyway it's part of the learning curve um, I think we need to be clear and now with the more uh, the NRR hat um, that there are two trends that I see that are important or, or, or two main uh, t actions. The first one is the gathering. So having this gathering within the NIRs, make this face-to-face -face meeting in the IGF is really important. But that can be done on day zero or any other space that we can find within the agenda. Um, and, and that should be not dropped. Regarding more the substantive, and I, I think that's where the request was, um, uh, it's more of the, the teams and, and, and how we are going to integrate. It's beyond being only a workshop proposal. It's more uh, the, the, the outcomes of the national and regional meetings should not be substantive 
different from the ones we are discussing or we would be kind of in a different place. Of course, from uh, country to country, region to region, there are different priorities, but that can be fit in into the thematic, uh, or into the, the, the programmatic part of the IGF. So that's my point, very short. Thank you, Raquel. Uh, we have an intervention from Mary, so I'm going to ask Mary to prepare herself, and maybe we can hear from Lynn and Shengatai. Um, I want to uh, first um, answer um, your question. I, I think actually, um, I'm not even sure it would be a summary, but maybe a, a document or something that comes out that says where we think we are with respect to the MAG and the NRI and the very qu request would be helpful. We have a pretty significant portion of new uh, MAG members, and I'm not sure they understand NRIs, PPFs or GCs for that matter, where they fit and the different uh, relationships and what the MAG's role is towards them. And so we need to, you know, I said today, we need to fix that kind of transition process for both new MAG members coming in. And I think we also need to be more explicit with some things when we finish an IGF term, if you will. So, you know, coming out of some of the BPFs, for instance, that the BPF said, you know, we've had this this year. Our current BPF group doesn't believe there's a new, uh, an, another BPF on the same subject needed next year. Or they do, and their thinking is X. Because right at the end of that year is a good time to take advantage of what everybody believes, and it does set up the work a little more clearly for a lot of it's in the submissions that they actually put. But by the time you look through each one of the submissions and the reports and the stock taking and the chairman's report and the <laughs> I, I think it becomes almost a blur and you can't really figure out, which is why I think we can do more on the, on the front end to process it. It's, it's along those lines, Sandra, which is why I said we probably should actually pull the various pieces together, even if they weren't discussed all that much here in the few days and figure out where we move forward. Um, you know, I, I think, to your point, you said there's a lot of growing recognition and support for NRIs. I think, I think there is. I also think at the same time, um, you know, we're not necessarily sure how to work together, you know, yet um, on all things. And I think we need to, to think about that a little bit more as well. And that's some of the work which, if you could help Chengatai and I figure out how we kind of, you know, this strategic this document I want to go that kind of captures all the things I think the NRI need to be think. sorry, that the MAGs need to be thinking about and moving forward, this is one. But we need to reach out to people and help us frame what that task is so that we can put it all in front of the um, MAG. I'm just really afraid it would be pure chaos if everybody just goes away with such different understandings. Um, uh, so I had understood the request from the NRIs, and what I was trying to do yesterday, and I'm bringing this up because we need to figure out what if anything, we're ready to do on this afternoon's session where the agenda that was there for the last two days said, you know, intercessional work and understand, I don't know, the integration, cap um, integration opportunities for NRIs and DCs and BPFs. And there's a whole bunch of different texts through all the items. Um, what I think I'd actually like to ask directly is do, and if the answer is no, because it's kind of coming in late, that's fine too. We can do it on, a, on another call or something later. Is there something the NRIs want to specifically say to the MAG meeting? You specifically want the MAG members to go away and think about something you want us to hear? I mean, because it's not been, I think, really well prepared on either side, and I don't know that we'll close on anything, but I don't want to just assume there's not something you'd want to do there. And what would you know, I don't know if you there was the NRI stock taking submission talked about the, um, some people called it forum, streams, tracks, whatever, all sorts of things. And I think those labels are confusing some MAG members. But what I understood um, from the stock taking submission and some discussions was that the NRIs were looking for uh, a small number of slots each day that would be up to the um, NRIs to determine what they were populated with but that they were substantive sessions. It wasn't organizational sessions, that you wanted them like a, a, a normal session in the IGF, so fully part of the, the IGF program, and that you were actually looking to also follow the kind of IGF principles, make them you know, as interactive and appropriate diversity, and, um, and that you were expecting 
that to be made available to all IGF participants. In other words, it wasn't just a series of NRI workshops for NRIs. But I don't, I don't there is absolutely not a consistent understanding across the MAG um, yeah. that that's what you're looking for. So all I want to know is whether or not there would be any help in kind of clarifying that. And if we're not prepared, we're probably better off taking it to another, another um, virtual call or something instead. But I, I know that was all kind of a mess, but. Sorry, it's Marilyn. I'm going to try not to speak for the NRIs, but just to reflect on, um, and maybe Mary would even reflect on this. During, so what we've had in the past has ranged from 30-minute flash sessions in Indonesia where any NRI could sign up for it, and I think 10 or 12 did. Yeah, I don't really want to have the, that discussion now. No, 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 I, I, I know, but, but what came out of the, the coordinating session I think is heavily reflected in the stock taking and paragraph 34, at least, you know, while it's not all 76, it was 30. Um, but I, I do think there was too much confusion about yesterday, and I really regret that. And there's not enough understanding, I think, of some of the MAG members who aren't involved in NRIs about what they do. Um, I don't think there was ever an overwhelming expectation just from moderating that session in, um, in 2015 and 2016, I think, you know, it's like um, small, um, sorry, a, 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 a continuation of the coordinating session, which I think. That's, that would just be booked. The exactly. Won't. That's not a MAG issue. Uh, a request for a main yeah. session, which I have heard mm -hmm. s strong support for. The substantive issue-oriented cross sessions, I think, is perhaps the the sticky point that, and I don't think it's seven a day. No, no, I, so I don't think, I don't, I didn't say seven a day. No, no, I know, I, but I think some people I think that it. is one of the sticky points. Yeah, but uh, let us uh, cl clarify, sorry, um, my tongue has to start working. Um, I'm so hungry. Um, <laughs> um, are these working sessions, are they in the main schedule or they're not in the main schedule? If there's a side meeting, then that's they a different are working story. They're, yeah. they're As not, I understand, they, I think they may want an, an, a working set of rooms so that you can actually do your organizational meetings the way the DCs did last time, I think. But what I understand the big request is, the one that I think cuts across the MAG's work, is one that says we would like some number mm -hmm. of um, sessions which are sort of directed or requested by the NRIs on the basis of things they see that will help them advance their um, key activities. And in some of the discussions, I know they've been told to submit it through the workshop proposal. Some other people believe that it should actually be more of a, a kind of discussion and say, how can um, the IGF program and the MAG, and the IGF community, help the NRIs actually with what you all want to achieve? How, how does that happen? Is it a negotiation for a small number of slots that are later defined and populated? Is it go through the workshop proposal process? I yeah, let, let me try again. I'm going to use seated as an example. Last year, there was a room available, and seated requested, and I think had a two-hour um, issue-oriented session or something like that. Uh, Sixty minutes. Okay. Was it one hour? I thought, I thought this additional request was, you know, maybe three or four, I don't know the right number, 90-minute slots where a number of NRIs, based on a bottom-up call across the NRIs, could say, I am particularly interested in working in an issue discussion with other NRIs that are particularly interested in cybersecurity or particularly interested in IoT, that, that is work that is going on across many NRIs, not all, and then that particular session would be organized by the NRIs, it, but it would be, the, the NRIs would be organizing it and would be conducting it. And it would be interactive to say, okay, what we're finding in Asia Pacific is blah, blah, blah. What we're finding in Sri Lanka. And here's, out of that, it would advance, I think, and contribute to it. Would, now the support would have to include um, 
yeah. So I'm hearing different things. So I think, you know, what we probably really need to understand is what do the NRIs collectively think would be helpful? I can see what those types of sessions would be helpful. I could also see where maybe the NRIs were saying we want some sessions that we can define that are substantive and we shouldn't have to go through a workshop proposal process in the same way as not through a workshop. So what I'm hearing here, I think it would be very helpful uh, for the NRIs as I don't think we can speak here on behalf of everyone, right? Um, so I think it would be very helpful, helpful for us if you could sort of create some sort of um, clarifying questions and we can bring it to the list and then NRIs could sort of bring back on that. that does that make sense? Would it be easier both for us to understand what we need to do and both for you to understand what we want you to do? You read my mind because uh, that's what I was going to, to, to uh, put forward as a suggestion. Why not send out a questionnaire online to the, uh, all the NRIs and uh, with the specific questions? Because Lynn, as Lynn rightly said, we don't know how to, to cooperate and uh, there is a need to, to. We want to, but we don't know how to. But let, let the, these NRIs uh, uh, say how they see the, 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 these new structures where we cooperate and other issues. I mean, this could be done in a, in a questionnaire. You get all the information online, and that's it. We can work on that further. Was it Laura or Raquel? Okay. I was just going to say, yeah, I think there's a bit of confusion still around what a session would be useful. It seems to be that there is a call for something thematic, but how exactly that's going to work. So I think we just need to go, take a step back. We can't speak on behalf of everybody here. So I think we just need to clarify exactly what we're asking for before we come to the MAG, and then you get confused because nobody quite knows what they're doing. Uh, I, I think the suggestion to, uh, to go back to the mailing list is a useful one at this stage. Uh, 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 my, my question is for further clarity for some of us. If, if it would be useful to learn more about the process for open forums uh, or open forum sessions at the IGF, my understanding is it's, it's not a viewed by the MAG as a normal workshop. Is that correct? Yes, but the um, open forums are mainly for um, national governments or treaty-based organizations. So um, we, I mean, we, yeah, we were I'm, looking I'm not, at expanding yeah, that definition. Getting ahead of, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, mm. I'm not proposing actually to, to make it an open forum session. I'm just uh, uh, maybe suggesting that we explore possible options for a similar uh, kind of session. Uh, it's, it's early to, to judge that at this stage until we have uh, got the information we have just mentioned. But I think there are more than one way to accommodate the request. Yes, um, and the most important thing for us is whether or not, I mean, uh, how much do you want for it to be in the main program? And then that, of course, has some um, effect on all the other programs that are happening or all the other sessions. And then if, if we know that, then we can start. Uh. Yes, Lynn. Just very quickly, I'm sorry for taking the mic again, but I, I need to go to another meeting before the other meeting at three and coffee and sandwich. Um, the, uh, it, would it be appropriate to give a short update in the session this afternoon that said, um, you know, there's going to be some activity between some of the NRIs and some of the secretariat to really kind of clarify various points that have come up over the last two or three days with respect to what the NRIs are looking for out of the IGF annual forum. Um, I and mean, I said, I thought I said pretty clearly the other day that I think you're at an inflection point and we really would like to hear from you what other kind of bandwidth and support you need between the secretary at the MAG and the NRIs. And, but jointly that we will work on getting something out which sort of states where we think we have kind of an understanding of what we're doing to talk to each other. I would be happy for somebody else to give that, um, but so that put a place marker down that we're going to go away and do some various pieces of work and Anya will obviously be key to driving that. Quick clarification. I, I, I mean, I'd be happy to work with Anya to do it and Anya could give it, I think, and we could get agreement. But rather than saying some of the NRIs and some of the Secretariat, we're very good on the NII network list and quickly responding. So could we instead propose that the questions be quickly developed sent to the NRI list and that responses be back literally by next week. So, I mean, I meant 
I spoke to some of the NRIs here now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we, we, need, we need to all of us take it back uh, appropriately to our communities, just to be clear. No. Yeah. And if I understood correctly, you also suggested to sort of uh, give a short summary of what we discussed here to the MAG members uh, today. And I think this would be, if I understood correctly, very useful uh, for them just to know that um, we're taking this seriously from the NRI side. And we, like, the cooperation is mutual, the will, whatever. I would okay. love to do that with Anya if I could, but I also don't want you to be put in a, in a difficult spot either. So maybe we can think about it briefly and see if there's a way I to... I think it would be, honestly, much better if it comes from the chair because it's the MAG meeting. As, you know, also yesterday was a confusion because the secretariat was speaking. Unless you think otherwise, I am very much ready to, to speak. I can speak, of course. <laughs> But uh, just, no, uh, Shanghai. Okay, thank you very much. Can we go? Uh, so, <laughs> Lena Shanghai can go. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for, you. for staying I'm here. I, okay, I'm going to just, I, I'm going to ask you just for one minute because I promised Mary McCann and Abdel Jalil very, very quick interventions, very quick, like 20 seconds. Makan. Makan seems not with us anymore. Maybe Mary, you would like to speak. Maybe he has lunch, unlike us. Hello, I am there. Hello. Makan, can you please Hello. be very quick because colleagues here they might yes, get a yes. sandwich or something. <laughs> yes, I. I just want to remind uh, the group that. Uh, People do mostly don't know what the NRI was doing. That's why uh, uh, they are reluctant or don't know why and where to put them. But the NRIs have been meeting with or without uh, having an official position. So this position you are asking is to make it uh, uh, more official and bring more people inside to show them what you are doing in exchange. But the meetings have been there. And if we have or not having a, a plenary session, we will be meeting also. Thank you. Thank you, Makan, for being so uh, to the point. And then Mary? Um, okay, can you hear me? We can hear can you, Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, just like Makan, I think the main session is an upscaling and bringing to fore and getting communication to, to, to even um, nations and the policy makers and uh, those that are interested in ID issues that happen at the local level. And when you bring the local perspective to local um, uh, fora, it, it brings that, it gets down to, 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 to the root of what we are out there doing. I think that, I don't know, I, I attended forum, um, what is it called, open forum or dynamic coalition or whatever, you uh, we're looking at but this is one of the best outcomes of ig the nris they should be visible so that's what i'm asking for i think we should consider that i don't think a side track would give us any any of those visibility we are looking for and i also want to say that the thing that worked with us last year should continue. When after this year and we'll see, we evaluate and they didn't do, and it didn't work well, then we start thinking of other things. We have not even finished considering what we did last year and we're trying to change. I don't know whether that will help us. Thank you, Mary, all uh, well noted. Uh, Abdel Jalil, very quickly, please. Seems Abdel we can't hear you, so maybe you can post to the list. We are all on the list, and we will follow also in the WebEx chat. Uh, I'm just going to use this opportunity to thank you for staying. So sorry for lunch. I feel so bad now because I wasn't really aware that the lunch goes up to 2 o'clock. Um, maybe you will be able to grab something. It seems to me that the understanding is here that everything needs to be moved to the list with very concrete questions. and will be uh, a task for me just to communicate with everyone and to get the response, regardless of the nature of the response from everyone. 
I will, okay, we will prepare a summary and share it with the, with the list shortly. Thank you so much. Who was the last one? Who was the what? The last one wanted to talk. What's this? Uh, Abdel uh, Yalil, but he couldn't speak. Okay. He's not connected or something. Uh, I, I thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. And, no. uh, thank you, Madam Chair. As an analyst coordinator of Chad, I would like to. Uh,
testing for the scribes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Tell Lewis to do it. That would be mm. fun. Hey, Lewis. Gavel us in. <laughs> Gavel us in. <laughs> mm. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's all sit down and start the meeting. So I think some of us have got um, flights this evening. So I think if we can end a little bit earlier... It'll be good. Um, okay. Let's start. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everybody. We have um, the uh, WebEx chat room. Well, you, I guess it never goes down, right? It's yeah, up. And it's up. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Um, Luis, if you um, have it easily to hand... Actually, you know, I was going to put the agenda, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I think everybody has it in their email as well. Um, there was one item we didn't um, quite complete on this morning, and that was um, tags or um, sort of predefined sub-themes. Well, a few more people come in, though. Actually, let me – I should have started by um, asking Jorge to introduce himself. Thomas said a few words um, before he left, but, but Jorge is here in his stead in a – Fine replacement. <laughs> Do you want to say a few words? Hello, just uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jorge Gancia. I'm working with Thomas for the Federal Office of Communication. And I hope to serve as a good co chair during this afternoon. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you. So I said this morning we were talking about themes, and I'll just reset in general. We've agreed on a title, which is actually meant to um, get people to pause and think about what the IGF is and attract some interest. We clearly recognize that we need to come out of uh, the program needs to have themes. Themes, sometimes we call them tracks. What we did last year for the first time was actually um, ran a system of tags. About, from memory, 20 or so were sort of pre-populated that people could choose, and there was also um, a blank field to fill in a tag if none of those tags really seemed to um, match your subject matter. Um, when the um, MAG then went through and chose the uh, um, proposals for the program, those were then aggregated up into themes. So we actually did have themes. Um, they were color-coded. Um, they were grouped um, appropriately, and that was actually used to schedule appropriately throughout the IGF program as well. We can clearly maintain that system. I think there was a lot of support and appreciation from it, um, from the community. Um, there was a, an earlier discussion that said maybe we, um, and initially Miguel had suggested yesterday, maybe we go out and poll on what some of the themes should be. I, I think if we, and then this morning he actually said maybe we can just use workshop proposals that come in and how they aggregate up to let have that help predetermine the themes. You know, I think we were on the path to stay with the tagging and let the workshop proposals as selected be the one that set the themes um, for the um, program. I just want to see if there's support for continuing in that path or if, based on the various discussions that have been held um, here over the last couple of days, we need um, sort of any adjustments or um, changes to that that process. Juan, you have the floor. As usual, I think that we could have a middle a middle way. Maybe there are some themes that, as you mentioned, they are obvious or something, or that we can agree that we can propose and leave open for the community to propose that. Yesterday, for instance, I mentioned. Uh, taking the advantage that this is Switzerland, you know, it's Geneva, to have something special for Geneva. I propose peace, but if people don't like peace, maybe we can have cheese in, instead or something for being uh, essentially from Geneva. But I think that we can move in, in that direction. If there are some themes that we can uh, agree uh, here, the MAG, we have, we have the prerogative to do so, and we propose that. But also I think it's, it's good to leave open for the community in some way to receive some feedback. So I'm in your hands on this, Chair. Thank you, Juan. And that's exactly what we did last year, was left some fields that could be populated, and there's probably room for the MAG and the host country to refine too, as we, once we see what the workshop proposals are. Raquel, you have the floor. It's the time. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I was going in the same direction as Juan, and you clarified this is the trend. Uh, but just to make sure this is clear, because um, I mean, having too many, as you mentioned, like 20 or 30 tags might be, you know, uh, as a, one of the uh, organizers, when I was tagging, I could see there is like future of the internet or internet future. So some of the tags were kind of the same and uh, it can be confusing at the end. But uh, my point is, if we have some teams or, you know, a direction we can, uh, and. Uh, uh, we can then bucket them um, uh, into smaller trends. It's much better or tracks, uh, especially if we are going to use that later for the main sessions. And uh, we spoke about it and perhaps having fewer main sessions and, and target main uh, uh, discussions. So just to, to have a clarity if that's the, 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 the way we are going. Thank you. Um, th thank you, Raquel. Um, we could take the list of themes um, from last year, both those that were populated and new ones that came in, send that out to the MAG and give the MAG um, a couple of days to look at it. And if there's anything that they think is just inappropriate or there's opportunity for consolidation, do a quick um, sort of scrub at it if you want and send it back in. I think it's probably appropriate to do that in any case because the world does move over the course of a, of a year. So if I could ask the Secretariat to do that, um, Brian or Eleonora. 
I think Brian's already already on it. Um, you also kind of commented on main sessions. We had a, a number of discussions yesterday. We're going to have to have a fuller discussion, but I think some of the things I heard was one, should they even be called main sessions? Um, you know, if we're going to do 90 minute sessions or, and we want, and we want them to stand out from the rest of the program, then I think we need to just sort of spend a little bit of time thinking about how we make that happen. Should they be tied more closely to some of the specific themes we have? Um, I think that's sort of the, you know, more detailed kind of programming elements for the moment. Um, we should kick that discussion off on the MAG list sometime soon. We usually um, try and agree the main sessions by about June so that it can actually be fully populated. But that means we need to start the discussions pretty, pretty soon. So we'll do that um, uh, then. Just trying to clear up some of the confusion, I think, from yesterday over the main sessions. Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you. I, I think they're usually called plenary sessions, uh, the, the bigger ones, and maybe we can have like one main session with two, one or two keynote speakers. I don't know if that works for IGF. Yeah. In, in our world, <laughs> I guess we must have settled on a generic description. There actually are called main sessions, and in fact, they aren't plenary. There are other sessions that run um, parallel to them. The, the real um, advantage to them historically has been that they take place in the bigger rooms, and they have um, interpretation in six official languages. Um, but again, I think we really need to think about what is the purpose of those of those sessions, um, irrespective of what they're called. I don't see anybody else asking for the floor um, on that, so I think we'll move forward on that um, on that note which means we um, drop back to the discussion on possible intercessional activities. The first one in the agenda, we covered the CENB um, earlier today. Um, there was also an item on um, best practice forums. Last year we had four, gender, cybersecurity, IPv6, and IXPs. Um, uh, IXPs had run for three years. I think they've been there since the, the beginning of the best practice forum. Um, and uh, my understanding from talking to the coordinators is that they don't believe that it's, there's enough significant new work to be done on IXPs that they would request another BPF from the MAG. Um, they are requesting um, that we spend some time figuring out how we actually help their work get noticed, deployed, and to the places where it needs to be, which I think is something we all know we need to do in any case. So there is no request for an IXP BPF. IPv6, the same. I think they think they've covered it um, as much as they can at this point in time, and there is not a request for an IPv6 BPF. Um, Jack, who's one of the um, co-leaders with Renata on the BPF um, for gender, we've had two different themes the last two years. Jack um, and Renata did put out a proposal for um, a BPF this year based on gender, which I've asked Renata to just take a minute or two and, and introduce. Um, what we need to do is decide whether or not we know enough now on that work and its importance to um, actually say, yes, we support a BPF on gender, and we need more information or you know a, a fuller charter or um, or we move it forward to a time where we have more discussion. It really depends on how comfortable people are with sort of their understanding of what's being proposed. Uh, Renata, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, Renata here, and I am um, recalling an email sent by Jack, uh, who is uh, who has been now for two years a facilitator of the BPF gender. And <clears throat> uh, the BPF does focus on investigating challenges that impact uh, women and girls' ability to access, engage with, benefit from, and participate in the development and decision-making of the Internet. Um, and uh, giving the the backdrop also of uh, discussion in SDGs, I would remind of SDG uh, 5, gender equality, and uh, like other intersectional initiatives, the BPF gender has focused on this theme uh, in a bottom-up, multi-stakeholder and community-driven manner. 
uh, in 2015 uh, published a report which um, we also uh, summarized as a recommendations roadmap in an infographic to visualize these policy recommendations. And uh, in 2016, uh, we worked with uh, relating gender and the gender digital divide. And it's for this reason that we would like to reiterate the importance of the BPF as a recurring theme and ensure the integration of gender continues to grow and to strengthen the IGF work, uh, including uh, choosing a particular topic or deepening uh, the studies already made uh, concerning the gender digital divide. Um, some of the cross-cultural and integral characteristics of gender would en enable the BPF to become a valuable platform to deepen analysis, bring together diverse stakeholder groups, and collect uh, best practices on specific and emerging aspects in internet policy and governance issues. We have uh, also marked up uh, that we had a partnership with ITU. So for 2017, uh, we would like to continue building on this work to focus on identifying initiatives that address uh, particular barriers already identified and surfacing best practices. Um, we'll again make submissions to other intersectional activities and continue collaborating with UN Women and the ITU on its equals, which were our partners in 2016. Again, engage with NRIs like uh, Brazil IGF, like IGF and Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Um, and we would like to express our appreciation for uh, support from IGF Secretariat, from the MAG, from MAG Chair, and uh, to note our thanks to Anne River and Despay who, for her excellent work in supporting this BPF. Thank you. Thank you, Renata. Um, Rasha, is that an old flag that's up? So again, the, the, the um, MAG actually um, charters the BPFs, um, the thought being that there's a substantive piece of work that we believe um, would help the world and is in line with our mission and, um, you know, fits nicely with the sort of the priorities there. Um, so Renata is asking whether or not um, we are supportive of continuing a BPF on gender. Um, and I guess I'm asking for an indication from the MAG members here whether or not it's yes and they feel comfortable, they understand it fully. Do we need um, something uh, fuller in terms of outlines, uh, questions on the partnership that's proposed? Or are we all just ready to go forward? Anya, you have someone online? Oh, Ginger. Okay, great. Ginger's online, so headphones, and then we have Liesl. Uh, good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry, good afternoon, everyone, then. Um, what I'm about to say in no way diminishes the importance of remote participation, but since we're talking about best practice for uh, forums, and Renata has had a particular concern for those of us who use online participation so much. Um, I'd like to, to bring up the possibility of a best, best practice form, a dynamic coalition or a working group, which we have discussed at different times. And I'm going to say that I don't think it's appropriate in, this is my very personal opinion, to address online participation in any of these three formats. The reason is that we seem to have much more efficient uh, practical progress when we deal with specific points at the time they're happening. Online participation is a cross-cutting inclusion process and we're addressing it in each of, in outreach we need to deal with it. On, the online mailing lists are part of online participation, meeting dynamics, uh, it's, it seems like we work very well directly with Luis Chengatai and Lynn, who give it such good priority. And this way, I, you know, we did try a working group, and it 
seemed like we were spending more time and energy writing um, terms of references and policy guidelines and procedures than we possibly could working with uh, remote participation technology and techniques. So, for instance, Rasha, Lynn, and the whole MAG have been open to improving online participation uh, possibilities for the workshop guidelines and for the workshop selection. I think that we're just um, managing to do it in a more practical manner in terms of what the MAG work is. If for the general MAG, uh, or general IGF population and part of the content of the IGF, a best practice forum as, as like gender or something for sharing of experiences, that's something, for instance, that um, Renata, who I see has just again put forth the idea, maybe maybe should move forward in that area. But as a practic as, as a matter of practical purpose and practical work for the MEG, I think that the system we're doing using right now is just in requires a lot less uh, work to get a lot more output and a lot more proactive change. So I don't personally have the time to form a dynamic coalition, a best practice for or lead an initiative of that type for the uh, content and substance of the IGF. I am very, very happy to continue to, to work as an advocate and work with the Secretariat and everyone who is so aware and so open to these details. But for our specific work on the MEG, I think that what we're doing right now is is going very well. And I would encourage everyone to keep it in mind and and let it be in an immediate response activity to deal with each situation as it arises. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, um, Ginger. I mean, it's both encouraging to hear. <laughs> And maybe it means we're all kind of breathing this a little more deeply or regularly, and we can just keep taking it in stride with all of our operational activities. Um, Renata's got her flag back up. I will ask her if she's coming in directly on the point. And just for a little bit of background, there was a discussion on the MAG list, there has been a few times, that maybe we should have a best practice forum dedicated to online participation. Um, and Ginger's just proposing uh, from her perspective, and she's been a key leader and key proponent of, of um, improving our online participation practices, that that perhaps wasn't necessary. I don't know, Renata, is your um, flag up to respond directly to it? Okay, if you're okay, Lisa, we'll close that out and then go to the other. Thank you. Renata, you have the floor. Yes, uh, I would just um, inform the MAG that um, Ginger's idea of uh, uh, remote participation. Actually, one of the groups that uh, constitutes civil society coordinating group, uh, coordination group, which is the Internet Governance Caucus, um, has also uh, put forward this idea uh, in discussion uh, with Ginger, and uh, and there are many. Uh, uh, of the IGF community, which are not here, like Jeremy Malcolm, Arsene Tungari, who are interested in this. So um, I, I would thank Ginger for, uh, for uh, uh, pointing out that I could be leading this. It's, I'm, I'm not sure if it's quite a, it's quite a, I think uh, an opportunity to to be pointed out like this is the leader of the Internet Governance Caucus uh, initiatives on, on this, like Ginger was. So I would be happy to support her uh, in moving forward with this. Uh, but again, uh, she has been a champion of uh, remote participation in our community. I believe we need more champions. So uh, it would be good indeed if this VPF came forward. And I would totally support it. Um, then I think the next step, um, Renata, um, is for you to write up, um, a, you know, a draft in terms of the kind of purpose and charter. And if there's not a standard process for doing that, we can, we can help to make sure that it puts the right discussion in front of the MAG. I want to hear you saying is this wouldn't be specific to what the IGF does or the MAG does, but in general, how online participation can be advanced around the world to help in uh, 
all situations. So if you could write that up, at, you know, at a time when you're ready to present it to the MAG, we'll schedule some time on one of the meetings. Thank you. Lisa, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I raised my flag in response to the question about the BPF on gender, so I'll stick with that. Um, certainly, I'm all for anything that uh, the Secretariat and the, I guess, organizers, <laughs> host country included, and contributors can do to improve remote participation for the IGF, and I have no objection to if people want to have energy focused on um, it as a... As a as a broader question, but with regard to the BPF on gender, I'm um, ha a absolutely supportive of that continuing that work continuing. Um, I would be interested to um, to know a little bit more about the partnership that the Renata um, uh, laid out, and I would be curious if there's been outreach to other women's types of groups or or programs that um, that could also be leveraged in the BPF. Um, but um, I think that that there is a, a body of work still yet to be done, and I welcome the energy and expertise of those who uh, would like to do it. So I would support it continuing and just be a little bit more interested in partnerships and, and outreach. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. We'll actually ensure that Jack sees that as I'm sure she will. So let me then um, move forward. Is there support then for going forward? Jack did put it out on the list um, a week or so ago for moving forward with the VPF on gender. It actually has a fuller title, but I just haven't pulled the email up. And um, is it gender equality this this year? So support for going forward, and um, we can certainly pass on the requests that we're interested in in what other organizations and that sort of thing they've reached out to and. What more we can do to advance this. We'll continue to move that forward. Thank you. Um, there was, uh, M Marcus um, last year led uh, BPF on cybersecurity, which was actually kind of um, an aggregation of two BPFs from the previous year with a, with a slightly different focus. He did mention in the open consultation on Monday that that BPF also was looking to continue in this year, but we have not received a proposal for him, uh, from him. So we will follow up with him offline, ask him to send in um, a formal proposal, and we'll take up consideration of uh, chartering that BPF once we have the proposal in mind. So at this point, um, we have two BPFs that we believe are going to be um, moving forward next year. Gender is yes, cybersecurity we're waiting for the proposal on. Are there any other BPFs that at this point in time the MAG would like, uh, a MAG member would actually like to put forward for consideration by the MAG? Miguel, Nacho, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I was think, thinking about some uh, BPF on local content, if it could be considered, if you need, or it's a policy, local policy on, on in, uh, fostering local content and local content uh, everywhere. <laughs> if you could write up a more formal um, proposal or a more formal um, idea, then we can bring it forward to the to the MAG. Um, I'm not sure we're able to, to say that much more on that at this point in time. Okay, then we'll go forward with that as kind of a rough operating plan for the year on BPF. Sorry, Samuel, I'm sorry, I couldn't see your, your card. So Samuel, go ahead, and then Renata and Raquel. Okay, thank you, Chair. I was just consulting with Renata, and uh, I was thinking that we could have a BPF on internet shutdowns, if it was possible. Thank you. And how to route around them? <laughs> Sorry, uh, that probably was not an appropriate comment either. Um, I think in the same um, vein, if, um, if there's a BPF you think you know, is of interest and should be brought forward, then um, write it up. Um, and the MAG will take it up in its deliberations. I don't think at this point in time that um, we really have time for kind of an open discussion of what it might be or wouldn't be, but if, if you and Renata are, are interested in progressing that, then maybe write something up and send it to the MAG list. And again, our goal isn't to have lots and lots of BPFs because they are actually, they are um, a lot of work. 
and they depend a lot on key parts of the community as well. So we want to get just the right number of BPFs to move the important issues forward, and you know, and then can be can be sustained. Um, I'm not sure who is. For, I guess Renata is first. Renata. I would like to thank you, Chair. I'd like to thank my colleagues who are both bringing very interesting aspects for developing countries. Uh, Miguel bringing uh, the idea of local content, multilingualism is a very important uh, aspect also for developing countries. So I do hope uh, that uh, we develop this idea. Totally support my colleague from Cameroon uh, on the shutdown um, uh, uh, conflict. I would not even say internet shutdown, but I would say conflicts in internet uh, directly because this is something that does not affect only one country. It can happen anywhere. Currently, it is happening a lot in developing countries, so it does speak directly to IGF. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but happy to, to try and, uh, and the support, of course. I am, uh, I am although I am in my second year, I am learning a lot about the IGF, so uh, I would also invite uh, other MAG members to join in and, uh, and help those initiatives. Thanks. Thank you, Renata. We have um, Raquel, Shagun, and Juan, and then I'd like to close this topic, I think. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I have a support, a proposal, and then a question. So let's go to the support first. I do support uh, Nacho's uh, proposal on the local content, and glad to work with you, Nacho. I think beyond, uh, we, al we always talk about access, um, and uh, uh, beyond the accessibility part or the uh, availability part, you have also the relevance of the content, the local content. So uh, let's work on that um, if you want some help. Um, then uh, on, in terms of the proposal, and, and I would m make a general call, uh, since we define the title as looking into the future, our digital future, uh, perhaps the BPFs could look more ahead. One of the topics that um, I, I, I hear in the room and, and seems important is in, uh, artificial intelligence. It's something we don't hear that often into the IGFs and, and I think it's going to be interesting to have a BPF on this forward thinking uh, uh, topics. Um, and the question is, we've also spoken uh, earlier on having uh, you know, the call for the community also to to submit their comments or their suggestions on BPFs. Is this still one? We need to, to go through it. It's the time. I don't know. So just thank you. No, that, that's a good, a good comment, um, particularly the latter one with respect to, um, I think in a lot of our process, while the MAG is here because we're drawn from the community and we're supposed to, represent the communities. Um, we all have our own processes and our own expectations within our communities of what that consultation looks like. And I'm, I'm not sure we've um, sort of fully understood how best to bring that into our own MAG timetables. So I um, appreciate bringing that forward and appreciate any of the thoughts you have specifically on how we can operationalize to it. Um, Shagoon, you have the floor. Yeah, well, thank you, Chair. I want to bring it to your attention that last year we discussed on the best price forum on corruption, uh, which was, uh, I think, uh, approved provisionally by the MAC member. But unfortunately, we are, ab we are unable to reach uh, a conclusive uh, agreement on that. But however, I want to propose that that best price forum should be reinforced. And um, probably we can slightly modify it. It could be best price firm on corruption and good governance. Thank you. No, Shagun, thank you. Thank you for reminding me as well. Um, Shagun's right. In the MAG meeting last time, there was sort of a discussion on um, corruption um, that was put forward by Mike Nelson, one of the MAG members, supported at the time by quite a few MAG members. Um, a fuller concept note was um, drawn up but it never um, was actually fully launched. Um, Mike is no longer a MAG member. Um, he has indicated that he might have um, more time looking forward to contribute to that effort. Um, but I think if there's maybe Shagoon, 
I could ask you to reach out to Mike and see if he's still willing to um, to take that concept note, bring it forward, and then we actually need to um, put a fuller framework in place and, of course, understand whether or not the MAG still think that's, that's appropriate. That did get a lot of support last year. No, thank you. Um, Juan, <clears throat> Juan, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I'm not going to argue in favor or in, in, against any of the proposals. What I want to suggest is that the same as Russia did that formalize the process of workshop evaluation, we need to formalize the way that we select dynamic coalitions and best practice forums. Because, uh, and put it in writing, I think that <laughs> there's a suggestion even for the next uh, nine f f uh, forum for this uh, mandate, although maybe I will not be in the IGF, but I think that we should do that. Uh, for instance, for dynamic coalitions, there's some, some unwritten rules that it needs to have some uh, critical mass, it needs to have some champions, this, this, and that. But we have to agree on those terms. Uh, of course, always, as always, like in the workshop evaluation, that will not be carved in stone. We could always be flexible with that. But I need, we, at least we need a guideline, because otherwise this turns out to proposals of personal preference and arguing in for and that. We need to have some sort of conceptual uh, framework of how a dynamic collision should be proposed and accepted and how best practice forums. Maybe somebody will volunteer, as Russia did with the, with the workshop, and do some uh, skeleton proposal and we can discuss it off, online, uh, you know, from, from uh, you know, uh, remotely. But that is my suggestion. I think it, it we are always, you know, uh, fighting fires here, but I think we have to take the, this, the time and do that for the benefit of future MAGs and, and for future IGF. Thank you. No, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's a lot of work trying to pull these agendas together and making individual outreach and phone calls to figure out whether or not there's support for going forward. Did they really work it through their earlier process appropriately? And so we definitely need um, more more process, if I can say that behind. Um, that was actually part of this kind of, what are all the buckets of work we see in front of us and which, what are the real priorities and how do we get them done that Chengatai and I were going to try and put a little bit of structure around just so we can have the discussion in a, in a more holistic manner. Is, um, oh, okay, sorry. We have um, Marcus um, online and um, Carolyn afterwards. Marcus, you have the floor. Headphones. Yes, well, can you hear me? My apologies for not can, being yes. here in person. I have some minor stomach upset, which forced me to stay at home. But at the same time, my experience is also the challenges of remote participation. So it's an interesting experience. But I was just going to say a few words on the best practice forum on cybersecurity. I had already on, I think, the very first day said that uh, the group uh, would be keen to continue as the work was conceived from the beginning as a multi-year project. Last year it focused on what I would call the comparative advantage of the IGF as a forum that brings people together which would not normally talk to each other. But uh, based uh, on the work with a strong emphasis on collaboration, the proposal now is to have uh, two tracks. One track would be taking the policy options for connecting and experience as a starting point and look at each of these policy recommendations in detail and identify the cybersecurity implications of each and then try to define, to find best practices uh, within the community working closely with the NRIs. That is obviously a great resource for identifying uh, regional uh, best practices. And the other track, and that was also mentioned by other colleagues, uh, next year is sort of, or no, this year is the UN the government, the governmental group of experts is expected to publish their report. There are new global commissions on cyberspace, but they're usually not multi-stakeholder and we would like to use 
the Geneva meeting in December as the place where we actually give them exposure to the multi-stakeholder community. So these are in a nutshell two tracks, very preliminary. We had developed that in a first call uh, after Guadalajara, but uh, the group definitely would be uh, very keen to get uh, the, the green light to move ahead with their work as soon as uh, possible as this model to be done. And also we had this discussion on main session or not. I mean, the group does not ask for limelight and I agree it doesn't make necessarily make much sense, but it definitely could then also feed in into a main session on cybersecurity as cybersecurity is an issue which is high on the agenda and it was also highlighted in the GA resolution which extended the IGF mandate. So it is uh, definitely, uh, I think, an issue that is of interest to the broader community. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. We'll actually take up your um, last point when we move forward at a future um, meeting to determine what we want to do with main sessions or not. Um, I actually tried to close the queue on this a little bit for, but I think your last intervention maybe um, caused one or two more questions. Let me just clarify one thing first. Are you talking about two tracks within one BPF or are you talking about two separate BPFs? Within one BPF. So, sorry, that probably within one BPF. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, the next step, obviously, is to write that up um, in a bit more detail and get it in front of the mag, and then I'm sure we'll be happy to um, give you some feedback, and I would suspect um, probably support it as well. But um, the sooner you get the feedback, uh, as sooner you get the framework into us, the sooner we can give you the um, the feedback. Uh, Carolyn, you have the floor. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to <clears throat> support Juan's comment with respect to um, documenting the, you know, what are the criteria in terms of best practice forums as well as the DCs so that it can help us, especially for the newcomers, to evaluate and contribute appropriately to the conversation. Yeah, thank you, Carolyn. Renata, were you, is that an old flag? Excellent. Uh, you know, the richness of returning time. Uh, Liesl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I really did resist coming in, but I unfortunately felt the need. <laughs> um, so thank you for letting me take the floor just to um, emphasize that I think with regard to Marcus's comment on the intended tracks for the BPF on cybersecurity, I would definitely need to see more detail and um, explanation about what that would be. I certainly don't have any objection to a BPF going forward on cybersecurity. There's always things to talk about, but I'm just a little concerned that the conversation about the UNGGE you know, over the course of the past three days um, and the commission has been a little bit confused and muddled, um, so I'd, I'd really need some clarity on what is intended there. The UNGGE is um, a group of government experts discussing very specifically the um, behavior of states in cyberspace. Um, there are clearly lots um, of things that deal with uh, practices that others might do, but that is not the intent of the UNGGE. Um, secondly, the Commission on Cyber, uh, Global Commission on Cybersecurity, whatever, that was launched at the Munich Security Conference, as I understand it, is still in very, um, its own um, deliberative phase as to what to what the kinds of things it is going to cover and I you know um, I, I was a little bit confused if I just may say by comments previously that it would be a group that to provide advice to the UNGGE because that's not how I had heard it be described before so uh, just to say that I think that definitely needs a very um, very specific um, description about what you would be trying to achieve. I completely agree that um, um, conversations about uh, any aspect of cybersecurity can be multi-stakeholder. I just don't know if every single one of them needs to be, like the UNGGE, for example. Um, and the commission is a multi-stakeholder group, um, so 
at least made up of different stakeholders. It might not be open in the way that IGF is, for example. And of course, it's always good for them to be able to provide information about what they're doing to the extent that they can. I just, I just think that we need some level of specificity. Thank you. No, thank you, Liesl. And Arnold, I think you have your flag up as well, and then we'll close that. I really don't want to start a, a significant discussion on GGG, CSE, and cybersecurity at this point. As fascinating and as interesting as I am in it, I just don't think it's, it's appropriate for just now. But Arnold, you have the floor. To make two comments, uh, one is uh, to support uh, Juan's uh, proposal to, to have guidelines uh, for selecting uh, the, uh, the BPFs and, uh, and uh, dynamic coalitions. Second one is on the second track, which we had just heard from Marcus Kumar and the UNGG fully agree with uh, um, uh, Liesl that uh, we need to look very carefully in what, what is really meant by this, uh, as you, I already explained yesterday, there is a, uh, a global commission on the stability in cyberspace. Uh, it's been launched two weeks ago, a multi-stakeholder platform, and uh, one of the, uh, the, its tasks is to, to, to give input in these deliberations uh, within the UNGGE. But um, in the near future, we have to, to look how we, uh, how we can go further with, with this. So we will come back to that, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Shagoon, is that an old flag up? Okay. And Elizabeth, and then we'll move to the next one. Quickly, thank you. Um, I, I would like to reiterate um, support for uh, what Juan and, and Carolyn have said about the process piece that might help us address this kind of a question um, because I would be concerned also with the idea that a best practice form, which for me suggests a kind of um, it, you know, we've had the IXPs examples and those very tangible practical outputs um, would be quite different than a policy discussion informing a policy discussion. So I, 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 would, I would encourage us to explore that. No, no, that's, that's a very good point. Um, is there anybody who actually wants to volunteer to kick off writing guidelines and that sort of document for best practice forums? Juan is negotiating with Carolyn, I think, to see if he can get a, a, a partner here. To <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure um, Juan, if you were to lead this with one other person, that um, the Secretariat has some, I'm sure, supporting documentation and even some kind of component pieces of the processes that would actually help move it along quite quickly as well. Juan? It would be very, you know, uh, I don't know, by through in the idea and then backing up. So I will do it. But so I ask everybody that has an idea regarding this to send it to me. For instance, what Elizabeth just said is one of the main ideas that I had. The best practice forum is a result-oriented thing. It has to be the consequence of discussion carried out in subsequent IGFs, like happened with the IXPs that happened in, in many uh, forums. So it's, it's the way to formalize an, up, an output for the IGF. That is one of the ideas that I would put in, that, in those guidelines. But I invite everybody to send to me, and I will try to formalize it and send it to the Secretariat back. Um, so, so two things. I mean, Juan's obviously looking for support, and I don't, maybe some of the new MAG members want to join him as well in terms of supporting that. I would also say, Juan, that a really good resource for you are the um, co-coordinators of some of the old or current best practice forums. And best practice forums are also supported um, by some part-time consultants because there's a significant kind of collection and output and consolidation. And I know they've put out a document a couple of years ago that kind of collected some of their experiences, and I'm sure you could probably get conference calls or something with them as well to, um, to help. If I could ask, um, Brian, will you do that from the Secretary, then be the liaison to, and 
just up. But if you could point him to the point him to the website and the paper and you know maybe who were the past consultants, something to just get him up and running quickly because that would help us as we um, review the couple of BPFs that are in the early stages of. Um, okay, thank you. So I'd like to close this um, portion of the possible intercessional activities for the moment. Um, we talked about DCs briefly this morning. I'd actually like to work with um, Avri to figure out how we kind of trial run um, something which is sort of an orientation for new MAG members about DCs, the history, who they are, what they're doing, where we are, what the kind of current status is, and then we could um, talk a little bit more about um, the MAG role and then if there are any other sort of um, thoughts about how we might better integrate the work of the DCs with these. So, um, and I want to put Avri on the, on the spot, but if I could work with her to um, just get that sort of full subject in front of the MAG in a really kind of full um, and complete way, I think that would aid, aid the discussions. Renata, did you have, are you looking for the comment? Okay, you have the floor, and then we'll move to the next item. Um, uh, I will I come back a little to, uh, thank you, Chair Hernandez. I will come back later to the BPFs and then to the DCs. Um, just, uh, um, uh, I think it's great that Juan uh, is, has volunteered for a BPF guidelines. Uh, we do, I do remember we had a guide on uh, the BPF uh, last year, so I would, I would suggest building up on that because, of course, there are always um, things we can do, for instance, for the visibility of the work and so on. And as we discussed uh, remote participation and also for the working group on outreach, communication strategies, I think what we really need would be a way to integrate these efforts so updating uh, the intercessional activities to become uh, more integrated with uh, the IGF itself and its outreach efforts. On that note, um, I received, a, 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 I have a message from a youth IGF Uruguay to uh, think about a DC on um, emerging technologies. So biotechnology, virtual reality, and their impact on society. Um, so this is one interest on in running a DC on this. And uh, I will uh, ask for more uh, information and certainly be in contact with Avri and Marcus to see how can this be uh, moved forward. Thanks. Thank you, Renata. So the um, next item, we, we did close on the second MAG meeting and the dates. It's on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 13, 14, 15th of June. Um, it runs concurrent with the WISIS forum, which is that week. Um, those dates were chosen to facilitate travel by some MAG members and still allow people that wanted to participate in that meeting or other meetings here in Geneva the opportunity to do so at the beginning and, and end of the week. Um, so the Secretariat would can send out any further information that's needed to, to sort of solidify that. Um, I say that because that means the timetable we were working towards yesterday with respect to some of the workshop call for proposals and things is still the valid timetable. Um, we'll go to that in, in just a moment. Um, I wanted to give, there are two, there are three main items left basically. Um, the uh, finalization of the working group on the workshop evaluation and timetable discussion on format and new formats, which I think Miguel was going to share, um, sort of the, the, um, his conclusion on where we were after the experiments we tried last year and which ones he would suggest we bring forward. Those two items are obviously linked. Um, before we get to that, though, I just wanted to update um, quickly um, kind of a discussion on the NRIs. And this is really sort of um, not really well thought out <laughs> from my perspective. I'm trying to draw together a number of um, NRI threads and discussions that have happened here over the last couple of days. The NRIs had um, an, a community gathering or an informal community gathering um, here. Um, did include the participants that were online as well. Um, it, it had a number of NRIs, but obviously not all the NRIs were up to over 80 of them or so now. 
one of the things um, we talked about was to to try and get um, clear on a meta issue about what are some of the relationships that we need to think about between the MAG and the NRIs. There was um, a submission which was read out by Anya. The submission was from the NRIs, which talked about some ideas they had out of their um, efforts from last year as part of the stock-taking exercise. Um, that, um, I think, was too brief um, a discussion. And I think the NRIs themselves need some more time to really figure out you know, what would be helpful to them out of the um, IGF um, process. And I think the um, MAG itself needs to um, think about, you know, we mentioned a few times it would be great if we could figure out how to integrate some of the NRIs a little bit more into some of the work that we're doing. And so I think this is a, in a little bit of new territory um, for us. Last year was really the first year we had so, so very many. We more than doubled NRIs last year from 30-something to 70-something, and now we're at 83. It's tremendous, tremendous growth. And um, I think both the NRIs themselves need to um, find some way to figure out how, what additional support they need to be able to coordinate and collaborate amongst themselves as fully as they'd like to, and then what's the right um, relationship and bandwidth, if you will. I'm trying not to use a role or a position or a title. But what's the right sort of bandwidth between the MAG and the NRI so that we can um, be supportive um, as we can with respect to their moving their work forward? And, and uh, likewise, a lot of our work actually really depends on really deep um, and really good connections with the NRIs. So what we said was that um, a couple of us, Chengatai and I, and Anya from the Secretary, and Anya is going to be Chengatai and Anya from the Secretariat, and Anya will be the, the focal point for that, are going to work with a couple of the NRIs to try and capture where we think the various NRI component discussions are coming out of these few days. Um, we will obviously bring that forward to the MAG. It will go forward to the NRIs. They're going to do a consultation with the NRIs as well. And then I would expect um, that initial kind of consolidation of where we think we are to start to feed into the work plan we want to build with respect to what are some of the additional things we need to do going forward. So I hope that's clear. I want to first ask any of the NRIs or anybody who was in that meeting at lunchtime um, if there's anything they'd like to add and really just looking for sort of assurance that that was captured appropriately and if not, by all means, please fix it. <laughs> Ada, do you want to say something? I just want to say thank you for the recap and just to emphasize that on the, I, I believe on both sides we thought that this is something that we need to do in order to progress uh, really in a, in a good way. So thank you. No, it, it, um, Marilyn, you have the floor. And then I'll... My comment is just thank you so much, Chair, and also Anya. Um, I believe we also... And I think that was inferred, but I just want to reinforce it, that we thought this could be done very quickly um, so that it could be synthesized and given to the MAG in a very prompt manner so the MAG members don't have to worry that it's going to be drawn out. Now, that's a very good point. Um, and I think that's really important because that will, I think, give us a, a process, and it may only be a pilot, but a process for how we actually um, get these parties together to figure out how they actually interface in all the parts of the program. So, you know, what should the expectations be on the various sides with respect to stated needs from the MAG or the NRI? Um, so, again, the first document is just going to be trying to capture what we think are the pieces of work that we would like to um, see done between um, the NRIs and the MAG. Um, I think it was a really good meeting. I think everybody feels um, that the, you know, there's good intent to work together and to figure this out. Um, no bad intent ascribed anywhere, um, just that it is um, certainly a growing need and a growing population, and we really need to figure out how we can pull it in um, a little more efficiently than, uh, than to date. In which case, we will close that item and then move um, back to the working group on workshop evaluation and timetable report. And I'd like to invite Rasha as well as the leader of that working group to um, walk us through. This is something which, um, unless there was one hell of a reason, <laughs> we actually need to approve before we go out today. Again, that is um, a critical next step with respect to the call for um, proposals. Um, that will actually be used for our evaluations as a 
significant trigger for the rest of our work over the over the year. And you'll all remember, if we can't put it up there, the, the timetable we're working towards. Wherever you'd like to, Rashi, you're very welcome up here. Russia did send out a um, revised uh, proposal last night based on the um, discussions from yesterday. And I know Liesl had actually done some work on the um, forms as well, which is very useful. I'm not quite sure we need to go into that detail here, but if people have questions, um, Liesl's prepared to, to talk through it as well. Sorry, maybe while well, Rosh is just getting set up, and I don't know if Luis has the, um, yes, the, he's finding the document to post. Um, Susan was also working on some guidelines um, for the uh, various formats so that we could understand what the appropriate kind of, both guidelines for submitting them and I think um, what proposers should keep in mind as they actually choose their formats. And, and I'm, I'm just behind on email. Has that actually gone out, Susan? No. Um, there's actually not a lot of work to be done there. I think it's more some tidying up because there was some um, things that existed before, so we'll get that out um, quite soon as well. Thank you for making the effort, too. I know it's not been a good time. You ready, Basha? Oh, thank you, Lynn. We've um, sort of finalized the proposal um, to the best of our abilities and based on some of the feedback we got uh, yesterday. So, um, again, I'll walk you through the main uh, points of the proposal and um, the main changes that have occurred from yesterday, basically. <clears throat> again, we've uh, divided the modifications into what's going to change on the three uh, stages of evaluation. So, on the first stage, uh, we have introduced the speaker session collaboration space where basically panelists are invited to um, find good panels or panels are invited to find uh, good speakers. Uh, and we're hoping that that will reduce the need for us to go in and merge sessions, that the mergers will sort of happen um, on their own. Um, we now do specify that each proposed session should have at least three confirmed speakers. And again, we're defining a confirmed speaker as a speaker who has been contacted and expressed interest and intent to participate. So while we do realize that, you know, some people might be confirmed and then still not end up showing up, uh, but we at least are looking for that initial uh, intention to be here, to be at the IGF. Um, and I just want to go back and, and reiterate that really the, the guiding um, principles for this whole process has been to make the to make the process less subjective and more focused on the individual proposals. So we're hoping that we are able, as MAG members, to give each individual proposal more attention and more focus than we've been doing before and to do so in a, in a consistent manner, basically. Uh, so, so really fairness and equity, if you, if you want to say, uh, are, the main, are the main guidelines here. Uh, what we're doing to the second stage is, uh, again, we are uh, dividing the, the uh, sessions by format. So, for example, you know, birds of a feather would be evaluated against birds of a feather rather than against a normal uh, panel kind of thing. And we are developing guidelines for each format, and accordingly the criteria will differ slightly. Um, the criteria will be modified. So I have agreed for four basic criteria for the basic panel um, session format, and the four criteria are basically relevance, content, speaker diversity, and format. Um, we sort of realize that the, these criteria are going to, to differ slightly by format type. So, for example, if you have a debate, it's very important that you have uh, an equal number of speakers on each side of the debate, that they are uh, definitely from different uh, groups that uh, sort of give us an opposing uh, point of view. Um, 
on the other hand, if you have like a, a birds of a feather session, we're obviously not looking for um, stakeholder group diversity then, but we're looking for maybe gender diversity or geographic diversity, whatever applies to that particular situation. So I guess I want to I want to reiterate that the these criteria are not going to be um, applied by computer algorithms. It's us who are going to apply them. So we are obviously going to use our uh, sound judgment to apply the criteria as applicable, not just, you know, not just blindly, obviously. So if something clearly does not apply, then, you know, a diversity carries so many facets to them. So if, if this is a session about um, Egypt, then obviously everybody will come from Egypt. But then, you know, do you have gender diversity? Do you have stakeholder diversity? I mean, there are other aspects of diversity. Uh, and if it's a session about business, then maybe everybody comes from business. But again, within business, there's a lot of diversity. So, I mean, the criteria will be applied, uh, you know, not, not blindly, but we are the ones who are going to apply them. So, obviously, we're going to use our minds, uh, you know, seeking out how the, how the criteria uh, apply to, to particular situations. And I've actually added, uh, based on um, feedback from... Um, uh, that I received yesterday by email, I, I added uh, to relevance, I added that relevance uh, is basically we're looking for, for relevance to internet governance in its broader sense. So, I mean, you know, because somebody said, well, maybe something like climate change and the internet is not going to count as directly related to internet governance. So, again, we are the ones applying these rules and we can sort of um, definitely have some flexibility to include the important aspects that might not um, have governance in the name, basically, but have some aspect of governance. <clears throat> so again, each reviewer is going to give each criterion a score from one to five, five being the best. Uh, so we're now asking uh, for four different scores per proposal, and then the average of the four scores will be uh, the score eventually given to the overall, um, the overall score given to that particular proposal by uh, that particular reviewer. We are asking that each proposal is to be uh, routed to 12 MAG members, uh, divided equally among uh, the stakeholder groups. Uh, and if an evaluator has like a conflict of interest or something, they can indicate that on the system, and the system can route that to uh, another MAG member. Uh, roughly, we're anticipating that that would give every MAG member about 55 to 60 proposals, uh, according to the overall number of, of proposals that we get submitted uh, to the IGF. <clears throat> the MAG members will still have access to the whole uh, list of proposals, so you can see the bigger picture. We're hopefully going to have statistics from the Secretariat on um, the number of proposals uh, maybe aggregated by hashtag, so you can sort of get an idea of what topics uh, have more proposals than others, uh, so on and so forth. And then there's like an overall um, guidance of the definitions of, of the different numbers um, to be used in, um, in the system. As for stage uh, three, again, uh, we're hoping that the speaker session collaboration space will help uh, minimize the numbers of mergers needed. That is not to say that they will be non-existent. We will still, again, at the third stage and the face-to-face -face meeting, we will make that judgment. Uh, as we see fit. Um, and again, there will be an assessment by the MAG for the overall balance of the program. So if we deem that a particular uh, issue uh, was very important but maybe didn't have enough diversity of one type or the other, uh, and, and this was like the only session proposed on that particular topic, then we'll obviously uh, bring that up if, if, um, if a good percentage of the MAG deems that this is a worthwhile session. And by the way, another point of, of uh, clarification, it doesn't have to be like right below the cutoff line. I, I never said that actually. Uh, it, the sessions that will be pushed up can be pushed up from anywhere in the proposal pool if enough MAG members deem that this is a good session, but maybe proposed by first timer and then and maybe they didn't write um, a good description of the session or something of the sort. So again, um, we would be flexible in interpreting the rules that we have, um, 
but we're hoping that any exceptions that we make would be very minimal and would be for good reason. Again, the advantages is that mainly we'd be giving more uh, focus and more attention to each individual session, uh, hopefully without developing um, some kind of evaluator fatigue over uh, the huge numbers uh, that, you, that we uh, used to look at before. Um, the, another advantage to the proposers of the session is that they would actually get to learn where are the strengths and weaknesses of their particular proposal. Even if they get accepted, they can still see that this uh, particular uh, aspect of the proposal was very good, so that can help them in um, the coming years. Uh, or if, if the session was rejected, they can still know what went wrong and they can, um, they can hopefully um, look at that again for the next year. And, um, and the feedback doesn't have to be elaborate because I, um, I remember Avery was concerned about that yesterday. Uh, the feedback that you, that you give does not have to be elaborate. It could be one or two sentences. I mean, we're not, we're not really asking for much, but it helps the proposer know how can this be uh, improved. Oh, and the other important thing that I added um, yesterday um, is with regards to remote participation, as again, um, as per the feedback that, um, that was in this room, so I have added remote participation to the uh, questions under speaker diversity. So that's another uh, change from yesterday. And that's pretty much it, I think. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, Shagoon, you have the floor. Thank you, Rasha. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And I also want to commend Rasha for a well done job. Um, but I have issues concerning the fairness of the process, which has always been uh, the areas of concern. Um, may I suggest something? I don't know if uh, it could be a radical. Uh, um, how can I put it now? Okay, let me just express myself first. Um, may I suggest that uh, the workshop evaluation from a particular region should be evaluated uh, by the MAG member from another region so as to, you know, building process of fairness into it. Because uh, really, I think it's uh, becoming increasingly uh, difficult to uh, to build that fairness because we have seen in the past where the MAC member are uh, to an extent or they have been um, grading and evaluating a workshop um, proposal and long line their affiliated organizations. So for me, I think uh, it's essential for us to build that uh, transparency and ensure that this time you are able to reduce the impact of uh, conflict of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Shigun. Rasha. Thank you, Shigun. That's, that's an interesting point. We can certainly um, look at that, although I'm not sure whether it's better to have people um, who are completely from outside that region look at the proposal or maybe to have a, a balanced um, geographical diversity of the MAG members looking at the proposal. Um, because I'm thinking, for example, if, if there's a proposal from the MENA region uh, and, you know, somebody from um, Latin America, for example, is, is looking at that, they might not be very familiar with the specifics. So maybe it's also beneficial to have just one person from the region. And I'm not also sure that technically we can get to that level of specificity at least this year. So I'm thinking maybe we can take this year to just test the system as a whole and then decide next year what we want to do with it. My, my initial thought would be to have a, a diverse geographical distribution rather than to have people from a particular area because then you're also going to get the question, you know, if there is a, a session on the United States, then which, which region gets to evaluate that? Uh, or is it going to be all regions except for the United States? I mean, it, it gets to be very complicated. Uh, so my initial reaction is to have um, just people from different parts of the world uh, rather than to exclude one or to include another. Thank you, Rasha. Um, I'd make one other comment as well. I think, and I find myself in this too, I think our mentality keeps going back to it's a ranking and everybody's doing it. And, and I think we 
were looking sort of down at it from there as opposed to what we did in the process was build in three extra steps and nearly three extra weeks of substantive thoughtful review by the Secretariat and the MAG against a whole series of criteria that are up to us to define. So I actually think we're putting a lot more deep thought into the program and um, the individual proposals. And then we have tools such as the standard deviation, which if there's a wide range of opinions on, uh, you know, as, as Mike Nelson always says, that may actually determine that it's an extremely interesting panel. But we have those tools to help us figure out which are the ones we pull in. And, and I also heard a comment or saw a comment somewhere which said, well, if it's going to be cut off at X and you're only going to look at five to ten more proposals. We've never said that. What we're doing is building a lot of extra time into the proposal to ensure that we can assess, you know, sort of the diversity of what's come in. Are there any imbalances or balances we want to adjust for? And then how do we actually assess filling those imbalances by that thoughtful kind of human review. So I just want everybody to keep that in mind because it's less about the ranking, which is what it was always about before, and now more about a, a more thoughtful systemic review. So in the queue I have um, Michael, and then we have um, Aubrey, Ginger, and Elizabeth. And Michael, you have the floor. Just a follow-up on what my brother Segona said on the composition of people to review seminar proposals. I think it should be balanced in such a way that each region must have a representative on a particular topic that comes from another region. Say, for Africa, the issues that might be affecting Africa, if you give somebody from the United States, may not even be able to understand. Here in Africa, we're talking of access, affordability. But if you go to the U.S., access is not an issue. Affordability is not an issue. So it has to take somebody from Africa to explain and tell them that in Africa, actually, these are the real issues we are facing. Otherwise, if we balance it in such a way that each regional MAG member is present in each group that is formed to evaluate a certain workshop proposal from another, from another region, at least it gives a balanced view, than, as he has said, and just giving proposals from Africa to Africans, it becomes biased in such a way that probably the proposers, I may know them, or somehow, somewhere, the, the, the organization, I might be an affiliation of that organization. So my judgment will not be based on merit, to be based on association because I get something from them. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, Avery, you have the floor. And Avery is participating online, so for those of you who don't have headsets on. Okay, thank you. Avery speaking. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Rasha for her leadership and for the work that the group did on this proposal. I think trying something new and I think taking into account the comments that have come through is quite useful. Uh, there's two points I wanted to speak on. One, in terms of the point that came up, uh, Shagoon, and the comment made by Michael. I really do like the idea of making sure that there is full geographical distribution of, of people within each of the of evaluation subunits or you know groups so somehow algorithmically when deciding who gets to review not only making sure that the um that each of the uh stakeholder groups is represented, but also the, the regions. And I know that makes it slightly more complicated. I think that's what Russia was referring to, and I think that's, that's a good idea. We don't want to make it just the region, but we certainly don't want to include the region from the review. The second point I wanted to make had to do with something I feel is, is sort of a push-pull, a, a conflict of, of what we're trying to achieve in terms of the uh, speakers, and, and I accept the notion that we're going to try and include speakers, but part of what it says there is judging that they are qualified. Now, judging that they are qualified normally skews us to the well-known, to the people we know, but one of the stated goals was to make sure that we include new voices and voices we may not know. So I just, I just feel a slight bit of concern about that, 
that notion and that when we're looking at the speakers, we're looking more at, at the diversity and such, but that we're not delving down into biographies, especially when it's somebody that's newish, it's somebody that's younger and hasn't established a 50-year track record that that we, we don't exclude them. So I just want to uh, be cautious about that qualification to talk about the issue. Thank you. Thank you, Avri. Uh, these are very important points. Um, I do agree with the full geographical distribution. Yes, this is what I was um, suggesting. Uh, I don't want to speak on behalf of the tech people, though, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure that we'll be able to accomplish this um, technology-wise for this year, but this is definitely what we have in mind for um, the, the following year, uh, if, if not for this year. Uh, as for the speaker qualifications, that's a very good point that you're making, of course. And, and again, I mean, you know, we are the ones who are going to be making these judgments. And these are just guidelines for us to keep at the back of, my, of, of our minds. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to have um, the session proposer maybe include a, a one-paragraph bio on, on each speaker. Um, and, and we as MAG know to actually welcome new voices if that paragraph sounds like the person knows, um, you know, what they're talking about. So we're just looking for a very, uh, I mean, for any indication that, that this person can bring uh, something new to, to the conversation. And I, I don't think that should be a very, um, a very difficult thing to do. Uh, so, but, but definitely the point on, on new voices is, uh, is definitely well noted. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Uh, Ginger is next in the queue, and um, she's on there. If I, if I may, before Gen Ginger gets in, she has very kindly agreed to um, draft a couple of sentences as um, uh, guidelines to the proposers on remote participation, so I just want to thank her for that in advance. Hello, I, this is Ginger. I know that earlier I wasn't being heard, so uh, Rasha's voice did get in. Um, I have two quick questions for Rasha. One, um, you do mention that the feedback we will be writing will be uh, apparently given to workshop organizers. We have always written feedback for the organizers, and as far as I've been able to tell, they have never received it. So I would like you to please confirm that they will indeed get our feedback, um, that there is a, going to be some kind of mechanism in place to make sure the organizers do get the feedback that we write. We take the time to do it and it's valuable for them. So, so that's a very important step. Uh, would you please confirm it? Secondly, um, would you, Rasha, please address the point was did you consider and was there a decision made on whether workshop organizers using that feedback and knowing their scores would have a chance to answer or rebut or lobby for their own workshops or anyone's workshop uh, the way, because they might not be in the meeting where we consider them and there might be points that we don't know about or, or information they may be able to give that would show us that their workshops really do merit inclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ginger. Uh, I actually was not aware that the proposers do not get uh, the feedback. I uh, maybe, be, okay, maybe Shanghai will, will clarify that, but I don't think, I mean, un unless there's something technologically, uh, a technological barrier, I, I think they should be able to, to get it with, without a problem. Um, as for your second point on uh, the workshop organizers uh, sort of defending their, um, their sessions and getting back to us, I'm not sure how that can happen because that would require us to go through a second round of evaluations for all the sessions because basically the scores, uh, or at least for the sessions that we uh, that we do provide feedback to because then the scores will be different uh, and then you know it 
kind of introduces a bit of unfairness because uh, if, for example, a, a score received a, a score of uh, a session received a score of 3.2, for example, and then after we gave them feedback, they received a four. Uh, and, and replaced a session that had gotten a 3.9 and, and got through. Well, we didn't really provide feedback for the 3.9 session. Maybe if they had a chance to, to improve their... So what I'm saying is unless they all get a second chance, um, then, it, then it's probably not fair. And I'm not sure how we can do that within one round of, of, um, of evaluation. It, it, it probably it complicates matters a little bit. And... Um, I'm not sure at least that it could happen for this year. Maybe we can think about it more for the following cycle. But off the top of my mind, I'm, I'm not seeing how that can happen uh, this year. If, if I, I'm this, this is Ginger, um, may I jump in just uh, if I were uh, Yes, we do sure. send them feedback. I mean, correct, right? Uh, yes, they do, no. that they have received the feedback. No. Ask Ginger to share. Yeah, I mean, we can discuss why offline if you want, but um, I mean, it, it does take a very long time, and um, Eleanor is the one who sends it, and yeah, they do receive it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something more you want to say on that, Eleanor, mm -hmm. before we go? Because I mean, it is an important point. We, the reviewers spend a lot of time preparing the feedback, and the secretary spends a lot of time, you know, preparing it as well. Sure, if you'd like me to clarify. Um, so um, in the MAG uh, evaluation form, comments are actually not mandatory on each proposal. So the comments per proposal can vary a lot. You know, some proposals have a lot of comments, some have few, but um, each proposer gets the comments that were in that evaluation form um, at the end of the selection process. So, Ginger, I mean, this is a critical point. So maybe if, if you still have questions or believe otherwise, Ginger, you could take it up offline with, um, with Eleanor. I'm not in the uh, May I jump in? Lynn, sure. please excuse me. Please excuse me. I don't mean yeah, to be no, aggressive. No, that's, that's but if, fine. If I, if I were in the room, I would be. You'd see my eyes and you'd see me waving my arms and you'd allow me to speak. So um, please excuse me. But I, then please I, have, always, I have always made... Um, Feedback comments, I know others do, and every workshop organizer I have talked to has explained that they do not receive it. So this is a very important point, and I do think it's, I would like to reemphasize that we must find a way to do it. Secondly, just very quickly, I also would like to try to address online for this year some way of balancing the feedback that only people who have an in with a MAG member who speaks out for their proposal, are changes made or are they lobbied? Can they have a voice in the final negotiations? And I think we need to do something about that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ginger. Um, two flags came up specifically to that point when you were speaking, so I will um, have them. And, and I'm glad you insisted on coming out. I was just about to say that I can't see the WebEx chat room, so was there actually a follow-up question from you. Um, Jim, was there something you wanted to add and then Renata and then we'll go back to the proper queue. Sure, just uh, Jim Prendergast is somebody who's worked with folks in submitting workshops for several years now. I've, I've always gotten feedback so um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not aware of the problems that are being discussed right now. Thank you. And Renata, you put your flag up as well and we'll obviously troubleshoot this offline because there's clearly a difference of opinion here. Renata? Um, I would like to highlight, uh, thanks sharing Renata, I would like to highlight that uh, the changes in uh, workshop evaluation are not coming just out of the MAG's head. This is coming from the community. This is a request from the, there was a taking stock. Um, so uh, we need to move forward on this. And uh, as moving forward uh, requires, we will observe changes. So there will be a testing period. So about the feedback, I, I would definitely like also to see this moving forward. We could test it 
uh, submitting a workshop, doing a feedback and see if someone receives it. It's quite straightforward. Um, but I would also address, also in conjunction with uh, Ginger's point about uh, being, having a MAG member in the room uh, talking specifically about a workshop moving forward, uh, I think there are two things on this. Uh, there is a phase when the program of the IGF is being finalized that we do have to ad address diversity criteria. If there is a workshop from Micronesia, which is really interesting, but it's being under under evaluated for some reason, yes, we will address it. And then uh, also MAG members have to be accountable for their community. So I cannot uh, count the many occasions where I talk to Brazilians in other events asking me, so did you see my workshop? I sent it. So how did it go? How was the evaluation? What will change in the evaluation in the future? So our communities will ask us about workshop evaluation. And yes, we need to speak for our communities. So this is also our responsibility. I do not see it as a lobby. I see it as a representation. I think Ginger's point is just that it's not fair to those that don't have that kind of contact in the room. Um, and I think that's a fair point. And maybe we can go away and think about how we might actually adjust for that. Um, but I think it's also incumbent upon the MAG members to really act kind of responsibly as well and not sort of abuse or be abused in this position by being an inside, you know, or, or stronger conduit to the decision-making process. So Liesl was in the queue. You have the floor. Um, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to note that um, I have revised or taken a stab at revising the program, excuse me, yeah, the uh, proposal, f the session proposal form. Um, and I think um, it takes into account some of the uncertainty, I think, that people are um, feeling about sort of what the, what, how we will, we will um, be assessing them. Um, it doesn't change too, too much the, the sort of setup of the proposal form that we have before, but adds in some additional elements to capture the four criteria, I think, in a more organized way and also um, uh, capture the, the things we need to know as the reviewer to, ref to make those reflections. For example, more information about the speakers um, directly requested so that we're Proposers aren't guessing what they have to put in there, um, the, um, and giving them indication that, you know, for example, please just describe how you will reflect the diversity required in the IGF in your session. The diversity requirements include gender, geography, stakeholder group, youth, persons with disabilities, and policy perspectives. MAG evaluators will also note if speakers and or organizers are from developing countries and or if they are first-time IGF session speakers or organizers. So it's a little clearer in the, I think, in the proposal form itself rather than in a background, you know, background document that they may not have at the ready when they're making their proposal. And then I added a voluntary information section which includes things like, you know, the sustainable goal, if you'd like to incorporate speakers from the intersessional work, speaker or content, um, um, the discussion here about uh, a possible uh, incorporation of uh, or facilitating contact with um, IGOs, think tanks, et cetera, and things like that. So I think it, you know, whenever there's the appropriate time, I'm happy to send that out for comment and review um, as part of this process. But I think that will be helpful for people to see oh, and comment on. <laughs> and thank, thank you, Liesl. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, you are next in the queue. Um, so I, I think one thing I wanted to say is that I, I think this work that we're doing is really important and we're making progress and we're, we're taking a, a change and a shift. And as I've said before, I really appreciate your vision for that, um, and leadership through it, Rasha, and your, and your dedication to supporting that, um, as chair Lynn and helping facilitate our dialogue and, and action on that. I want us to remember as we're seeking 
for the perfect option, that we're not starting from a perfect place either. So looking at testing and trying and tweaking things, um, but sometimes when I'm hearing you know, criticisms or concerns, it, it strikes me that our assumption might be that what we have right now is perfect. And, and so um, I think we should take the risk to try a few things and maybe some things will be better and some things we'll, we'll, we'll need to tweak. Um, I, I really um, like the fact that even how much we're talking about this right now is framing for us the responsibility that we have as MAG members for, 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 for deliberating this process, for evaluating and, and really reflecting a little bit more deeply on our role in the program. And so I think that that awareness raising about our responsibility in the process is good and the refinement of the role and focusing of the role on that responsibility is also really positive. So I, I wanted to highlight those things. Um, the one thing I think we haven't fully developed in, in some of the conversation both outside and, and in the um, chat room uh, that we might need to put some more um, structure parameters or explanation around is stage three, and that is the evaluation and rebalancing process. I think the, the call for um, statistics and the building up of, of more time for us to have a proper evaluation and analysis of what is there before we go through that process um, will, will help us very much. But I think it's it's critical that we have also a common understanding of what the goals of that exercise will be. Because my sense from the last two experiences I've seen is that we had the goals and then we had a process. And in the end, I'm not sure we all felt like we achieved our goals through the process. <laughs> we were exhausted and finished the, the, the process with a, a, a dissatisfied feeling. And, and, and part of that might even be that we didn't have a process that aligned to those goals. Um, and now I'm afraid that we might have a really good pro process but less clarity on what those goals are. So let's make sure that when we get those analytics and before we sit in the room and start debating um, the readjustments, it might help us be more vigilant about you know, so-and-so uh, has this um, workshop and it's great, um, and more that we can actually defend it towards a specific action, as Renata said, and meet those responsibilities, but where they align with those goals. So thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Israel, you have the floor. Thank you. Israel Rosas, for the record, and for the remote participation. Um, yeah. oh, well, I want to commend Russia for this proposal, which I absolutely support. And uh, thinking about the regional sensitivity, perhaps, perhaps a way to tackle the, the, the issue for this year is adding an optional field in the, in the proposal form for the, proposers, for, for the proposers to provide a specific explanation about uh, their proposal. I mean, uh, this uh, particular proposal needs uh, sensitivity about, I don't know, uh, affordability, because in Africa uh, or, or in Latin America, this specific issue is, uh, I don't know, uh, important for these and these and these reasons. Thank you. Um, so maybe I can suggest that Liesl send you her current form and see if that's addressed there in some manner or if you'd be looking for something else specific, unless Russia actually has some thoughts on that at the moment. And then we're going to Laura and then Jorge. Thank you, Israel. I, th I think this should be sort of a normal part of writing a description of the abstract. I think it's uh, there's a responsibility on us to provide maybe better guidance for people on how to write a good abstract, and that should not be too hard to do. Um, and, and definitely within, I mean, we're, we're going to, the, 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 we're going to write some kind of a, like guidelines to presenters, um, you know, explaining the, the new system and explaining how to do what we're expecting of them. Uh, so, so definitely this is something to, to take into consideration. Um, the other thing that I wanted to answer to, if, if you don't mind, Lynn, um, about people advocating certain sessions <laughs> at, at stage three, while I do believe that, um, you know, I mean, if there is one session from the Arab world in the whole IGF, I probably will feel compelled to talk about it if the 
content is, you know, is good enough. I mean, it has to bring something to the table. Uh, but, but still, I mean, I, I would like to, you know, look for, for content from Latin America, even though, you know, I'm from a different part of the world. So I think between what Renata was saying and, and um, Ginger's concern, which is, which is definitely a very valid one, and, and what Lynn was saying, I mean, we have a responsibility to look for basically content that, that could add something, but maybe due to lack of experience, it didn't make the cut of what we expect of a proposal. I think regardless of where that content comes from or who the stakeholder is, I think we all have a responsibility to, as independent evaluators, to, to also carry that through. I think that's, that's uh, very important. And just a general comment to, to the MAG, I think, again, b building on what Elizabeth said, which is very true, this process is far from perfect. Uh, I mean, we're, we're hoping that this is a better system than what we had before. Uh, we're not saying it's perfect. We're actually, if, if I may, I, I would request the MAG to give us at least two evaluation cycles to arrive at something that, that is close to what we think is, is um, satisfactory for all of us. Because, I mean, and, and I would ask you to please, and I'll remind you again when, when the time comes for us to do the evaluations, to sort of keep a, a side file with your notes on the new system um, as you're evaluating, just tell us how we can make this better. And, and hopefully by the next cycle, uh, we, we can achieve everything that we uh, had hoped for, at least on the technical side, and then incorporate your feedback again. So, you know, give us, give us a chance and, and do tell us your feedback because uh, obviously that's very constructive and, and we'll try to, uh, to accommodate all the feedback we can. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rasha. Laura, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to start by saying I absolutely agree with um, Renato and Elizabeth. These changes are necessary. We're not starting from a perfect place, and even if this, you know, it's not going to be a, a perfect solution, we'll need to make further changes next year, and it's an incremental process. Um, but I do think it's a really positive step in the right direction. Um, I have. A couple of clarifying questions and a suggestion. Um, from people I've spoken to and from the, the ongoing sort of Skype chat, there does seem to be a, a little bit of uh, concern and confusion around something. Can I, I think I asked this yesterday, but I just want to be really sure because I'm not sure I've got my head around it totally. Um, so w when there's an algorithm to allocate um, proposals for scoring, do the same 50 proposals get batched up to be allocated to the same um, 50... Uh, sorry, 12 MAG members. So if I'm batched in a group with, say, I don't know, Liesl or I don't, anybody, do, do, will we score exactly the same proposals or do they, there's, they're kind of meshed? And no, you're, nobody's batched in, in any group. Okay. You're, uh, the, what, we're, what we're aiming for is to have random routing of a proposal to okay. 12 people. Fine. That's, um, what, that's what I thought it was. Right, I just yeah. wanted to make absolutely clear. Um, and... If I don't grade a proposal because of conflict of interest or because it's not in my language or I don't understand it, does that get reallocated to somebody else? Okay. Yes. And the final question, uh, well, actually it's a suggestion. So I think there's a quite a lot of concern because we've gone from, I don't know, 70, 80% of the MAG reviewing all of the proposals to now 12 people reviewing the proposal. If, if more people reviewed all of the pro proposals, would that kind of alleviate some of the concerns around um, sort of, say, um, bias or people being harshly scoring and then dragging proposals down. You know, I'm, personally, I'm, I would be very happy to even half my workload. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to review more than 50 or 60 proposals. I just wonder, as a first step in the right direction, if just having more people, more eyes reviewing a proposal would just alleviate some concerns. Thank you. My, my feeling is that 12 people should be, should be enough. Um, I'm also keeping in mind that in a few years, I mean, we're hoping to expand the IGF, and so right now we're getting about 250 proposals. In a few years, we may be getting 500, or we may be getting 1,000, and I don't think the number of the MAG members are increasing much. And so if right now you're reviewing around 60 proposals, you know, in a couple of years, that could be 120 proposals. And so pretty much we're going back to the, you know, bulky number that that the problem with the bulky number is it it's in evidently 
reduces the amount of attention that you can possibly give to each individual session after a number of sessions. I mean, I would think that you spend maybe, you know, 10, 15 sessions on the first, 10, 15 minutes on the first few proposals, and then that time is bound to go down as you keep going uh, because you, you get tired uh, and, and because the number is, is so large. Uh, I do realize that some people will, uh, will feel more comfortable with a larger n number. Um, my feeling is 12 is, is good enough, but I'm, uh, I mean, I'm willing to listen, obviously. Uh, Jorge, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, in reality, it's just a, a small comment uh, following up with something we discussed this morning about the, the intention to really uh, try to, to reap the, in the expertise we have in, in Geneva in, for this IGF, and which is something that... Uh, Liesel mentioned uh, regarding the, also the, the form uh, for the proposals and where we are trying to, to find some, some text on a voluntary possibility of, of finding uh, um, suitable experts within the uh, uh, IGOs, NGOs, uh, think tanks that are around uh, Geneva. And we are looking into one possible list of uh, uh, actors that could be relevant and uh, which could be um, contacted by a workshop uh, organizers or session organizers. And we would also offer the possibility of helping them, uh, I guess, in cooperation with the Secretariat to, to get in touch with, with the right people. So uh, that's something uh, which is a uh, work in progress, uh, I would say, uh, which would go into the, in the form uh, for, the, for the proposals. But I, I wonder whether that uh, could or should have some kind of reflection in, the, um, in this uh, paper uh, for the eval evaluators so that they know that this is uh, one possibility that could be of value to, to really uh, take advantage of, of the expertise we, we have here uh, for this year's uh, IGF. Yes, thank you, Jorge. I mean, I think that's um, an important point. I think that probably belongs more in the guidelines um, for people when they actually start to write the proposals and submit them to understand that that resource is available, and, um, and that's a document that Susan's um, working on. And I do think, as Liesl said this morning, if there was some way to embed it in the, in the form, maybe with a drop-down menu or something like that would be really cool. Um, but again, this is just, it's almost a resource indicator or connector, not suggestion, right? I mean, it, every time we have the discussion, I sort of see some body languages. People aren't quite sure what's being suggested. And it's more trying to facilitate people who have perhaps an organization um, or an entity in mind getting a contact in. Um, and if they've been notified that, in fact, they might be receiving requests for support of some of these proposals, they're more apt to actually make a, a, a contact on the other side and, and feedback. So is there anything you want to add, Jorge or Rasha? Um, no, I'm just, I, I was thinking we, we have a list of, like, resource persons, and I'm wondering if another parallel list can be created or something. Yeah, I think the resource persons, as it's been um, used to date, is really people who sign up to be a resource and be contacted. And this is somebody working on a, um, a paper said, I'd really like to, to talk to somebody from the Interparliamentary Union here in Geneva, but I don't have any contacts there. Um, um, both uh, Geneva um, and the Swiss government and, in fact, UNOG have actually said they would ha be happy to help facilitate those initial contacts into those organizations. And that's what we're looking to um, to do. So I don't know. Maybe there's a way to tie the two together. But I'm. We can maybe go go offline and think about that. But I. I, I don't know. I mean, I think we need to make sure. I think th that is an excellent offer, a really helpful offer. We've all said we really want to leverage being here in kind of international Geneva. I think we need to make sure that we do that um, really clearly. May or may not be something that would be so um, pertinent downstream would suspect it would, but 
if we can just make it available quickly and easily, then we can figure out how much it should be embedded for, for future years. Um, so, sorry, Laura, um, I got an indication that said you might have been looking for a follow-up on the last discussion, and I didn't see that, so. I, it was only to come back and just say my suggestion of more than 12 was a sort of as a stepping point for this year, rather than jumping right down from kind of, I don't know, 70, 80% of the mag, I don't know what number that is. It, to me, it seems like quite a jump down to go down to 12, and I just wonder if it would help people feel more comfortable if that number was slightly higher. Um, I don't know what the sort of statistic, statistical validity of that would be kind of around that sort of proportion, but that, I just wanted to come back to say that. Thank you. I, th I think it's important then we, that, we, that we look at this um, not just in terms of numbers. I think it's important that we um, see this as a process that will allow us to dedicate more attention to each individual session. So I, I honestly think there is a trade-off between the number of sessions that we get to review and the amount of attention that we can give to each session. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just human nature inadvertently. I mean, you have a set number of hours in the day. You have a set number of overall hours that you can dedicate to this process. And so if the number gets, the larger the number is, the, the less attention you can give to each individual um, proposal. So I'm hoping that we can try it with 12 this year um, and, and give it our full attention and see how that works. Um, again, rather than maintaining the idea that the success of this process was dependent on how many MAG members reviewed each, each uh, project. I, I don't think that's what makes it really. I think it's, it's the attention to the details and it's the attempt to be fair and uniform across your uh, evaluation decisions that, that makes the difference. Thank you, Rasha. I have Miguel um, in the queue and then Nacho. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Nacho, <laughs> for the patience. Um, well, I, uh, it's, uh, it's been a very, very useful conversation for me, particularly because I'm, I'm, take, I'm, I'm using the newbie card as much as I can, and I'm going to take advantage of it. So yeah, it's, it's good to, for me to speak uh, uh, now. Um, first, Russia, thank you very much for the, for the work. Uh, I have to say, I like it. In a, in, I can say it in a, in a more in, a, in an easier way. Uh, just a, a couple of things that I uh, that caught my eye. Um, when when we talk about the qualifications for speaking about the the issue, um, I think it limits us. Uh, for example, if we are talking about a situation where we have to bring someone very young, uh, a girl, a boy, in, on in ICT for example, and they don't really have qualifications for it. So uh, maybe we could, this is a, you know, uh, a way of thinking, we could change the work qualifications to suit, suitable background in order for us to be more able to look for, uh, to look for them. Um, because we may not looking only for academics, but just, that is just a, a way of giving us more freedom of movement. Um, and uh, in the process of selection, um, when we were talking about the feedback and, and or the lack of feedback, so on, I don't think there is a lack of. But uh, uh, what, what caught my attention is that, uh, so there is no something like a two-tier uh, system where you send them the, when we send them the, our response and they say, uh, okay, but I, I don't really agree with the qualification, you, with the grade you gave me, and we think uh, with this more information, you will change that and see the importance of our event, for example. So, um, I don't know, uh, adding a moment of consultation. So, uh, as, as diplomats, we love consultations. So, <laughs> just because it, it gives us more transparency, and in the, in the end, we can justify our decision. And um, with the number, I, I 
fully understand the, the, Laura's point, uh, but I, I, I agree with your point of view, uh, and I think 12, 12 is uh, enough in, in, the, in the sense of how many uh, situations we will take it into account, sorry, um, how many proposals will we take it into account. And my question is, uh, after the review of the group, it goes to the MAC in plenary, or the decision of the group is final? And, and in, the, in the last uh, thing that I have a question on is uh, how easy is for us, the MAG, to change what we decide today <laughs> as, a, as a guideline? It, it, of course, it will, t it will take another decision from us, from, for this, from this all same body. But uh, I don't know this, that's why I'm asking. Is the process of getting something reopened very difficult or not? We can, you know hope on being able to evolve easily. And that's my only thing, thank you. I just need to clarify, are you talking about how easy it is to change like the, the guidelines for review or your score on, a, on an evaluation? The last question is on the guidance review. Um, I think to answer your last question, I think we need to agree on something today for, for this cycle, if I understand correctly, and then whatever we agree on will, will carry through. Um, as I said, I, I will ask you all to please provide feedback as the process is going for us to try to modify it again for the following cycle. Uh, I don't think we can keep changing in the middle because that obviously takes a lot of <laughs> uh, problems and, and the MAG as a collective body needs to agree on the, on the guidelines, uh, which is why we kind of need to do it today. Uh, just to clarify what happens after uh, you submit your, your review, um, I think we can have the system open for you to change your, uh, your review maybe until the, the deadline. Uh, so you can change your own review scores if maybe you know you gave us a session um, four on something and then you've seen other sessions and you wanted to go back and make that a three or a five or whatever I think you can you can be able or you should be able to do that um, once the once all the reviews go in what happens is then the mag as a as a group looks at all the evaluations and we decide together uh, on on stage three uh, what happens it's uh, I guess uh, I mean, not every, we won't go back and change scores on every single session, but we'll, we'll look at the full picture and then see what we, again, do we want to pull something out that, that uh, was weak on a particular point and, we, and didn't make the cut and we just want to pull it out anyway because it had um, extraordinary strength in some other area or how, how we do that. So this is basically how the system works. Uh, for the two-tier evaluations, I uh, do realize that, that this is, um, obviously would be would be very helpful for for the proposers but again this is the same point that the ginger made I'm, I'm not seeing how we can make that in a in a fair manner so that the same chance would be afforded to everybody without having to give everybody feedback and then wait and do another round of of evaluations I'm not seeing how that can be done otherwise um, and I don't think we can afford the time uh, to do that, at least, at least not this year, but it's certainly something to think about, for us to think about if, if uh, MAG members feel that this is, this is the route that we should take, then maybe we can think about for the next year, how, how can we make that happen? Um, as for the qualifications or for the suitable background, I mean, this is really what we mean. And, and I don't want us to get hung up on semantics too much because again, this is not a computer algorithm that's going to make that decision. So, you know, if there's a kid from an inner city who's coming in to give a testimony about something that only a kid from an inner city would be able to give, that, for me, that's a very high qualification. I mean, that's what qualifies the kid. <laughs> so we're not looking for an academic degree per se, but we're looking for whatever makes that person able to speak about whatever they are here to speak about. I think as, as MAG members, if we have that understanding, then you know, we, can, we can make the right decisions, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Um, I think Chengatai wanted to come in a moment ago. Oh, no. That, yes, um, once the process has started, we cannot change the rules. We can only change them afterwards because we, you can't move the goalpost while the game is being played. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Changatai. 
uh, Nacho. It is now your turn. Thank you, Chair. Um, regarding the feedback, um, 96 out of 250 proposals were accepted, accepted and the average cut was 3.85. So over three and below 3.85, there were 130 proposals that the MAG board was not uh, forced to give feedback. That's why many proposers, maybe they didn't get any feedback because we were not supposed to do that. So what I'm proposing is maybe we should raise to, uh, to the proposals we rate less than four and give them feedback from, to all, sorry, I will start over again. We should change the uh, less than three to less than four. So in, uh, in that way, if the proposal is 3.5, for example, it has it fits feedback. Um, then uh, I, I think uh, 12 is a really small number. It's a, a big change, uh, go for, from 55 to 12. I think we should try to grow a little down in this number. And I would like to go back, I think it was discarded, discarded already, but uh, I'd like to go back to Liesl's idea on the wild card. I think it, will, it could save us uh, a lot of time to get uh, some, to push some proposals in uh, during the, the discussions on, the, on our next meeting, um, uh, because uh, the, those those subjects we think or those topics we think should be included in in, in the IGF. Uh, it's easier to uh, just to vote them and uh, have a, a full agreement on, on votes than to discuss each one by each one uh, if it could be included or not. Thank you. But I, th I think that would be something we could look at, and I think that's a f you know, full MAG responsibility. If we think it's more helpful, which I do, to give feedback to more of the proposers, um, I, th I think we can make that determination. Um, yeah, I think we just need to, to decide. My understanding was that we're basically giving feedback to, quote, unquote, poor or poorer uh, quality sessions. Uh, and I'm not sure that anything below four, four is, is a, that we can call poor or poorer, unless we want to give feedback to every session uh, or to every session that we feel we have something to, to tell them. Uh, so unless we make it, uh, if we're going to, to define a score, I think, well, maybe at least it should be like 3.5. Four is too high for, to, to give feedback um, to like everything that's below four, we, we call this great inflation. I mean, not every session can get a five. You know, I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's uh, not, four is, is considered a good session. That's not, uh, not something that you need to help like the people who have, who have uh, proposed. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, I'm open on the like cutoff line of, uh, of what you want to, like what grade you want to give feedback uh, below. And I'm also open to the idea that you should give feedback to everybody then. Um, but it depends on what the MAG wants. Okay, go ahead, Miguel. If I, taking by example of 3.5, there will be 50, uh, uh, if we go back to last year, there will be 51 proposals without feedback that would, uh, wouldn't get in. So the um, Ginger's concern is it's real, and I think it happened. But it, it, not, it didn't happen because of the Secretariat of the MAG. It happened because of the procedure. So I, I, I don't want to take a lot more time discussing whether it's 3 or it's 3.5. It wasn't just to try and make the poor ones better. It was to give useful feedback. And, um, you know, honestly, it's probably fairly frustrating to get a 3.75 or something. And, no, you didn't make the cut. That's still a fairly high-ranking one on that one. It, it sort of feels that there's support here in the room for maybe kicking that cutoff line back so that we give more... Um, proposers feedback um, which frankly would be in line with already cutting you know with the, the fact that everybody's already reviewing less proposals in any case so if people are okay with that we'll do a little bit of work with the secretariat and maybe Miguel and Ginger and figure out where that line should be somewhere between three and four and and if people are okay we can leave that at that point and and move on 
Um, thank you, Nacho. Um, I had put myself in the queue for moments ago based on a question I had from somebody which said there's um, a, a couple of lines in section three where it says the next five to ten that fall just below the line will be pulled up. Um, so I'm looking for clarity on that because I, I don't think we meant um, if the cutoff line is here, these proposals are in, we're just looking at the next five or ten. I think there was probably an assumption that there was probably room to move five or ten up but I'm not sure we even need to be that specific at this point in time. We've said really what we're doing is looking to adjust either any imbalances that we see overall or to feature any areas that we think are really important. So I don't think that was a practice the working group was intending to work to, in which case I would take that out. But Rasha, I see you have the floor, so you can... That's actually the text that's currently in place. That's not the modified text. That's the text that is currently on the web. And we didn't like it much last year either. So that's, that's not what we're proposing. So. That's what is currently uh, oh, 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 being oh, oh. Im implemented. Okay, okay. So in, in the draft document, Rosh actually, here's, here's the current process and text, and here's the proposed. And she's saying what I just read was in the current text. Okay. Um, then I was right with my earlier comment. <laughs> um, thank you, and I hope that answers the question. If it doesn't, we can... Can come back. Um, Liesl, you have the floor, and I don't have, Miguel, are you in the queue again? No. And Arnold, um, and then um, after that I'd like to close it and see if we can um, move forward. Uh, thank you. Liesl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to um, recall my comment earlier about um, aligning myself with folks that have suggested that we need to have more MAG reviewers on each proposal. It is a dramatic drop. And I realize that it's, it, it, uh, I totally agree with you, um, Rasha, that it's not scientific, which is why um, it is more about a feeling and sort of experience with the workshop proposers, what their, what their reactions are, what I think their expectations are of us of the, as evaluators, and what they expect out of the results. So while I have been game, despite my original hesitation in, um, when we were last in Geneva about this, um, to talk about how to rationalize the, the um, workshop evaluation process to something that provides more um, rigor and paying attention to each proposal as, as you've outlined, which I think is really important. Um, but I think that it would be very hard to explain to the community why they used to have 55 reviewers or 50 if you take away the 10% that didn't do it, um, and now they have 12, and there may or may not be um, that much diversity on the number, the 12 that got to review them. I just think that, I just think that that's too large a drop. And while I um, appreciate thinking of this particular year as an experimentation and see if it doesn't work, and then ratcheting it up next year if people don't like it, that's going to have a lot of disappointed people in the process this year. So I, I hesitate to think of that dramatic, you know, one year is that dramatic of an experimentation. So I would really urge us to consider having more than 12 reviewers on each proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Liesl. Arnold? Sorry, I was just going to say I'm not sure what that means for the math. I'm not, I'm not, it's a good thing it's not scientific since that's not my forte, but uh, whatever that means for the math, I think it needs to be more. Thanks. Well, look, we've said all along this wasn't about taking the MAG reviews, MAG, each individual MAG's review from 250 to some number. We're trying to put a process in that gives a good result, a fair result, a balanced route, a statistically representative result, and actually embed in the process more um, substantive, qualitative, thoughtful review against the imbalances and or in a positive way, any criteria or things we particularly would like to feature. That's really where the goodness is coming um, in this process. So if people are, are comfortable with a different number, I, I, I know Renata, uh, Renata um, Rasha, you know, really likes three per, um, but I, you know, I am happy going with a higher number as well because I said this isn't, 
Honestly, I'm going to say this pretty directly. This isn't about how the MAG feels about the workload. It's about whether or not the community actually feels this process is an improvement on the process that we've had in the past. So, Rasha, you have a comment, and then Arnold will come to you. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to clarify for the record that I, I never said it's not scientific. <laughs> I No, I... I <laughs> If I don't think so, I, I strive to be scientific. It's, it's my training. It's, it's that's my that's my my. my uh, I mean, maybe maybe I I should strive to be less scientific. I'm not sure, but I, <laughs> but the problem is that I strive to be scientific actually in everything I do. So um, I, I am trying to get this to be as as scientific as possible. That doesn't mean that it has to be about numbers, though, because people think I, scientific means numbers. And that is totally not true. I mean, you could be a wonderful qualitative person and still be scientific. Scientific means that there is a process, that there is rigor to the process. This is, this is what scientific means. It doesn't have to be about numbers. Um, so I'm, I think we, we might be underestimating the community's understanding of how uh, a, a process might still be very successful in working. Um, I think we should explain to the community, as we should realize ourselves, that this is really about the quality of attention that we give to individual sessions. Again, again my concern was not, you know, that I'm going to drown in papers for, you know, uh, two weeks. That's that's not really what it's about. My concern is by the time I start the process halfway through, I had forgotten how I had graded the first, uh, the first uh, uh, sessions. I, the, the review process, oh, the larger the number, the less consistent you are. This is just, again, scientific. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is just fact. The, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, so, again, I mean, I... I honestly think 12 is, is a good enough number. I don't know if there's a way for us to get a, a feeling around the room or around the online We're pretty, uh, we're pretty good at um, judging right, rough consensus, and we'll come to that in, in just a moment. Unfortunately, I'm not on the WebEx uh, chat, so if... Uh, if, uh, if right, no, we'll, we'll come to that in a yeah, moment. But, if, uh, if you have any more specific comments on Lisa, we'll take them now, otherwise we'll move to... No, Arnold. but again, I mean, I want to, I want to uh, emphasize that we, we will have diversity in reviewers, at least by stakeholder group for this year and more and more for the coming years. Uh, and, and really, just keep in mind that the larger the number of proposals you take upon yourself, the, the less quality you will be able to give to each proposal and the less uniformity there will be across the, the, the whole process. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I, I actually think that's understood pretty clearly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rasha. We have Arnold and then Renata. And Arnold, just before we do that, um, there is this Skype back channel, and then there's the WebEx chat, um, you know, neither of which I'm really following closely enough. Um, after I hear from Arnold and um, Renata and Carolyn, and he, sorry, Hisham was actually um, after Arnold. Is Skype I should, only for Mac members? Or? I should look to my, um, is this comment? Normally it is only? No, it's only. Oh, I, I don't know. It's some community kind of Skype that's using, people are using it for a back channel to understand things a little bit better. Um, which I think is useful. I think we just need to be careful that it doesn't distract from the attention cycles that people are putting into the room. And I think we need to make sure that, that comments that are clearly important to the evaluation of this should be on record in the room. Maybe that's even in the WebEx chat room or something in some case. But I, I think it's something we need to troubleshoot for the next meeting off, offline. Um, so when, when we get through the next um, four comments or so, um, I'm going to try and see where we are by judging sort of rough consensus on what I think is the only remaining point, and that's how many number of reviewers per stakeholder group. Um, I say that just so you know where I'm sort of leaning with respect to how I intend to wrap up this item. So if you have any um, like serious objections, you should start getting them in line now. <laughs> um, Arnold, you have the floor, and then Hisham. Thank you, um, Lynn. Arnold van Rijn. And Netherlands government for the remote participants. Um, <clears throat> I'm supportive to any improvement of uh, the uh, evaluation process, uh, which we are not talking about. Um, I'm very grateful for your hard work, uh, uh, Russia, and I can support um, a lot what you have been proposed. Um, we are talking here about numbers, but we have to realize also it's all about content and the people behind those proposals. That's a fact. 
but at the end we will have to come up with numbers. So we are approaching the end of this week and I will do some advanced math um, because it's not quite clear how it works in practice. Either um, you explain it uh, this afternoon to, to us all or we have to do it another way, uh, but um, I come up with some, some figures, uh, some numbers right now. We are 55 MAG members. Let's say we receive 200 proposals. Um, I've heard each person should judge around 55 proposals. Then I also heard there's a need to do some random routing uh, of a proposal to 12 people. How does it work in practice? It's not clear to me. And uh, well, as I said, this looks very promising what you have proposed, but I want to see how it works in practice. But if it is too long to explain, then uh, let's find another way to, to, to get the answer because I have to leave within a couple of minutes to catch my <laughs> flights. Sorry for that. We can't leave that unanswered. I actually think it's very easy to explain very quick. So um, we will have Rasha um, do it. Here we go, Rasha. Oh, thank you. The, the 55 to 60 numbers is basically based on um, an, an uh, estimate of what we received last year, which was 250 proposals. If each proposal is being judged by 12 members, that gives us 3,000 evaluations that we need to do. So if you divide that by the 55 MAG members, that roughly comes up to 55 proposals. Uh, of course, we might receive more than 250, and so I said 55 to 60 because the number might increase. And if somebody um, indicates on the system that they are not willing to rate a certain proposal, then that proposal gets routed to 12 different people, so that's one extra proposal for another 12 people. So on average, I'm estimating that every member will judge somewhere between 55 to 60 proposals. Of course, that number, I mean, we, we can't have the hard math until we know how many proposals come in because, you know, I mean, that's, that's when we'll figure it out. So can I, I just underline what, so we didn't, Rasha didn't start out and the working group didn't start out. I should be clear, the working group didn't start out saying 55 per is a good number. It started out saying three reviewers from each stakeholder group um, is, will give a, a appropriate statistical kind of process. And then when you do the math, that's what it equates to. But there was nothing which started out and said, you know, we want everybody to review 55 or 60 proposals, just to really, to really underline that. Uh, next in the queue, Hisham. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, well, I, I, I want to start by again commending uh, Asha and uh, the, uh, the working group for, for doing this uh, terrific job. I think it has been overdue for quite some years, and uh, it's, it's excellent that we have reached uh, a point that we have uh, this uh, solid proposal in front of us. Uh, l listening to the discussion, I just, uh, I just have a couple of remarks to, to add maybe to the benefit of the discussion. Uh, the, the way I understand the evaluation, there will be uh, the opportunity for evaluators to pass on some of the uh, proposals in front of them to submit and to uh, e out them to the system to be allocated for other evaluators. So I, I think the table at the end of the document at the very last page needs to indicate a deadline uh, for that to also allow enough time for the newly uh, allocated uh, evaluator to, to still have some time before the final deadline of the MAG evaluation. So uh, uh, th this, is, this is one thing. Uh, with, with, with regard to the number of evaluators, uh, I, I fully appreciate the uh, justification uh, made by Asha. I think uh, if we maybe uh, think outside of the box that we have been uh, working within uh, for the last uh, 10, 11 years, uh, we have maybe customs ourselves that we need the full mag to review all proposals. But if we look at this with a fish eye, I think the 12 is a, is a gate number to do the job. Uh, I, I just want to, to uh, hear a confirmation that we will still find a way to introduce the geographic uh, dimension, in diversity I mean. Uh, I, I see a nodding from the Secretary at the time, but I, I still want to see a confirmation that this is something that uh, could be introduced to, uh, to the system. Uh, finally, with regard to the feedback to, to those 
uh, proposals who uh, did not make it. Uh, I think we will need to introduce uh, some, something after the third stage, maybe, of the evaluation, uh, specifically to those who have not been selected after the final selection had, had been made, uh, although they have been above the cutoff uh, number, whatever that is, uh, 3 or 3.5 or 3 point whatever, if we can actually uh, uh, go back to the evaluators of those proposals and ask them uh, at a, a later stage to give feedback uh, f for those proposals. Uh, some feedback, because um, I don't think we can do this uh, from the very first beginning. Uh, there is uh, a, a total difference between, uh, I think, feedback for weak uh, proposals uh, uh, versus those who have been uh, good enough but maybe a bit or um, needed to be um, uh, neglected for other better proposals. Those are my remarks. Thank you. No, thank you, Hisham. Um, one very important point was I think we need to make sure that we do back off from the end, so if any need to be rerouted, we can reroute them. I'm closing the queue with what's here now and then going to work for a, a proposal. Rush, if you have a comment on that, you can, and then just so we're all clear, I have Renata, Carolyn, and Nacho um, in the queue. Thank you. I just need to correct something I said um, a minute ago. If, if somebody uh, indicates on the system that they cannot review a certain proposal, that proposal will be rerouted to one person, not to 12, because, you know, the rest of the reviewers are doing it. It's just one proposal that's going to be rerouted to one person from the same stakeholder group. Um, um, unfortunately, Arnold has left the room, but maybe I can email him and, <laughs> and clarify that. That's a mistake that I made. Uh, the feedback at a later stage, yes, that's a very good point. Um, so maybe we can... Um, we have three weeks to review uh, all workshops, and maybe we can indicate to, to MAG members to kindly let us know if there is a particular workshop they're not going to review, maybe by week two, uh, so that we can, so that we'll just take a quick skip through the, the workshops just to indicate if there's something that you're not going to review so that we can have time, uh, another reviewer would have time to, to have that added to their uh, thing. Yeah, it's a, good, a very good point, thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Uh, Renata, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair Renata. Um, I would just like to address uh, to Russia and to the, the room quickly the scientific dilemma and emphasize that we are not looking for safety in numbers but creating a methodology to address the community's concern of evaluation. As with all methodologies, it has techniques that can be adjusted over time. So discussing between 12 or 16 evaluators to me is not that important. I'm fine with either number. It is the process of focusing on quality and evaluation and accompanying it that I would like to put as priority. And I would um, again um, bring the point about back channel talk. Indeed, we do a lot of multitasking, but I agree uh, with Chair that we have to be responsible and put on record what we want to be as such on the WebEx chat, which is summarized and publicized for the community. Thank you, Renata. Carolyn, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of comments. So first of all, thank you so much for putting this process together and um, to improve upon the existing process. My understanding is that your goals are to improve on the quality as well as the transparency of the evaluation. And I think that message came out you know, very clearly. Um, it feels like in looking at the comments and listening to the discussion that there are two concerns expressed. One is around the number of 12, and then secondly is around the ability um, of reviewers to uh, game the system. And that's an interesting comment only because it's really questioning the integrity of the MAC members. And that's, I'm not going to address that. But with respect to those concerns being the concerns, I um, want to suggest make three, propo three proposals. One is um, if the objective is to really improve on the quality and transparency, then perhaps um, each reviewer can um, input comments for the score that's given um, in each of the four categories. So, Rasha, going back to something that you suggested earlier, this would mean um, inputting a comment for, for every score, regardless of what the level of that score is, and, and that can help in the stage three as well. Um, secondly, uh, Rasha, in various comments, you had made 
the, the suggestion that the standard deviation will also be looked at. Um, I don't see that written in the, in the document, and I think clarity on that, again, you know, I, I think what people are concerned about is sort of the algorithm will take precedence over any final discussion. So I think the comments as well as in mention of standard deviation may address some of that concern, because if, it's, if the average is the same, then there's no concern with respect to gaming. I'm, I find it difficult that 12 people would collude to gain something. So I think that those comments will, will do that. And then um, thirdly, uh, Liesl's suggestion of a wild card. Again, if we're thinking about improving quality and transparency and only addressing the concerns around gaming, then the wild card idea, again, may be something to address that. So those are the three suggestions that I would make. I think 12 is sufficient, um, again, towards the notion of um, quality. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Nacho, now we're going to close on this. I will remind everybody we have one more item before we leave here, and that is formats, which are exceedingly important as well to this discussion. So, Nacho. As you ask, I spoke with Ginger, and we agreed on suggesting uh, that uh, as we're reducing our, our job, our quantity of amount of job as a MAC member, uh, we suggest every proposal should have feedback. Not, uh, we should not be obliged to, to do that, but it, it would be great. Uh, we propose especially the ones below four, that rated below four had their feedback in order to uh, get the ones selected better and those uh, that are not selected uh, understand why they were not selected. Thank you, Nacho. Um, let me try and take, a, take um, a couple of the points that are open. Um, I think, well, I don't want to do this backwards. Um, let's start with, are we all supportive of going forward with this proposal? And we'll come to the wild card, the number per stakeholder, and the reviewing cutoff. But are we, as a MAG, comfortable with going forward with this proposal? So I see lots of heads nodding yes in the room. Um, can somebody help me judge from the WebEx or the online participants? Or maybe the issue is just, are there any strong objections from anybody in um, online? No? Okay, so um, Juan? You have the floor. Well, I, I don't want to interpret the rest of the feeling. Yes, George. I think that we are all in agreement with that, but with enough flexibility for the third stage that the, not an algorithm, not, not a standard deviation, not a formula could substitute the open discussion, especially if it's well prepared, of all us exerting the most on common sense, no? On common sense is what I said. Or common sense, the most uncommon of all the sense. Okay? I think that was nicely said. So n hearing no objections and, in fact, seeing um, in the room, and I appreciate that that doesn't apply to those that are online because I can't see your heads moving, but um, that there were no serious objections. And so we are moving forward with this proposal. We will take one more pass at it because I think there is some language that can be um, clarified. I think some of the comments around if it's standard deviation, I think we could do something with the introduction and the header of this, which is why we're actually doing this, which is a lot of the comments that we've heard, I think, in the room to, to introduce it to the community. Um, I also like the idea of a wild card flag um, in some manner, and I really would like us to go away and think about how we do that, whether it's an asterisk or a tick, or if that isn't possible, then we just make sure that every reviewer knows that they have that possibility and we do it manually, worst case. Um, but, I, but I do like that notion um, a lot. Um, for those that haven't actually graded um, these proposals before, the secretariat and the form does actually help somewhat with kind of traditional, uh, not traditional, sort of um, uh, frequent comments on why a proposal was found, um, you know, wanting in some areas. So it's, you can, there are free text boxes, you can certainly comment, but there are some things to aid with some of the more common kind of shortfalls that we've seen. So it's not overly um, onerous. Um, 
I would be happy saying, and again, I'm going to look for whether or not there's any strong objections or happy saying um, below four. I, I, if we're really going for fewer reviews, below four, um, encouraging every mag to actually put some comments in um, on the proposal. Not every proposal. I think we can encourage them to do every proposal. Um, but if a proposal is really good and it's highly ranked, I'm not sure what you're going to say that would be significantly more helpful. If there's something that stands out that you think would make that 4.5 proposal great, then I suspect you would put that in the comments anyway. So, I mean, I think we can take a lot of responsibility to really doing the process thoughtfully. Now, with respect to the number of reviewers per stakeholder group, which I think is the only item that's left in this, um, I'm, I'm torn. Um, I'm torn because I think calling, first calling consensus is not numbers and it's as much of an art. You know, and in, in the technical community, we used to say you continued going until all serious, strong objections were addressed. Because if it is a serious, strong objection, you have every obligation to address it. It would potentially have an impact on the outcome. Um, I know part of the, this group feels that there is no objection that that it wouldn't um, uh, whatever hurt the outcome. I think this is as much sort of comfort level and emotional and where we're moving from, and I think it's also testing it with the community. I have to say my gut says we would go to four per proposal. I think that would make the community um, a little happier. I think it buys us a little bit of room going from um, full to four per stakeholder. Um, I think the people that have expressed some some concern with it are pretty pretty um, serious in their concern, and I don't know how to assess kind of. I said I don't think it's it's a quality objection per se. I think it's almost more gut level than where we've come from in community assessment and trying to do the right thing on a whole large sphere. So I would like to go forward with that, and I guess understand um, both from online and people in the room. If four is enough for those of you that thought the number should be higher, and for those of you that thought three was the number, um, are supportive of going to four per stakeholder group. Yes, please. And, and Rasha, I'm, and I, I thank you very much for work. And I'm really not trying to, to you know, run over your your particular view on the three per stakeholder. I'm trying to find a way forward that keeps everybody kind of supportive as possible. Thank you. I, I just. It, I think whoever thinks that the drop from 55 members is is drastic is going to feel that it's drastic even if we drop to 20. It's still going to feel like a drastic drop. Um, I fear that if we make it 16 this year, we might have to increase it again next year. Uh, I, I don't think we'll be able to reduce it next year because we already reduced it a lot this year. I don't think we can go back next year and say, okay, let's go with 12 now. Um, so I'm more inclined to, to try it as 12 for this year and if people are not happy to increase it next year because there will be people who are not happy anyway. Be people who think every proposal should be reviewed by 55 people are not going to be happy even if it's dropped to 20. They're, they're just in their minds. It's the whole mag that needs to review the proposal. So I don't think it's going to make much difference to, to this category of people if we reduce it to 12 or to 16. Um, I think if, again, if, if they don't like 12, if, if we don't like 12, if we feel that the process was lacking, then we can increase that number next year. I, I think it's going to be very difficult to increase it again next year if we start at four per uh, stakeholder group or to decrease it next year because we've already decreased it drastically this year. So that's just my point. And again, it really is about the quality, not about the number. So this is why um, diversity and multi-stakeholder forums are so <laughs> are so important to these discussions, because I um, I would look at the, what you just said and actually reverse it and, and said we have an obligation to the community to make the community feel as comfortable as they can, and I would prefer that we try to higher number and if it worked really well and everybody's comfortable and proves out we drop to a lower number, which is sort of the reverse of you being people aren't going to be happy either way. Um, I don't know how we assess that when we actually don't have the community that we can go out and address quickly. The community is supposed to be represented through the MAG members here. 
So we need to find a way very, very quickly um, in the MAG to figure out what number of reviewers per stakeholder group we could all live with. Um, and it, that has to be on the basis of what you think your communities would be comfortable with. I think that's the only way we can actually attempt to get a community readout. Uh, Rush just said a doodle poll. I have to say I was sort of coming to the same thing as well. Um, you know, whether it's the three or the four, we don't need to know that today. Um, I suppose we could run a doodle poll and give those two options and, you know, ask the MAG members, you know, they could consult as they care to. They probably have I don't know, three, four, or five days to consult if they want to within their own communities. The problem with doing that kind of consultation back out of the communities is we need to make sure they've got the full story to send out to the communities. And if you don't do that, you're actually doing the entire um, process here a disservice because people won't understand the full totality of what we're trying to do here. So I guess I would come back to my original proposal and try and settle on three or four here now in the next two minutes so we can go to formats. Forcing functions are great things, as painful as they are, and you can't know how deep a breath I take when this actually closes. <laughs> Do we have um, anybody who can help us close on three or four per stakeholder group, either in the um, uh, online or in the room? Can Miguel, is that a new car? Okay. Miguel, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. It's just it's Miguel Candia for the record. Uh, just. Um, Practical question. If we have more 15, 18 members having the, the reviews, we, we increase the amount of proposals we're receiving as a group. So we take more hours per person. Is that what we want? Or we want to have a, a, lead, a bit less of workload for each human being? And on the other case, or three or four, uh, I, I certainly believe that uh, if we are having more members, it should be more per sector. But if we're keeping 12, three is enough. So one decision depends on the other. Thank you. Okay, if I understood your question, and I'm going to say this quite directly, uh, this exercise has never been about reducing the workload on the MAG. Um, you know, it really isn't. I've lived through MAGs where I've evaluated 250. It was actually trying to move it away from what was a fairly quantitative spreadsheet, Excel ranking sort of thing, into a much more thoughtful process, which actually looked again, as we said many times, against imbalances, corrections, desired aspirations for where we wanted the program to feed. That We built in two and a half extra weeks for that process in the MAG, for MAG review on the front end. And that's where I think the quality and the thoughtfulness comes. Um, and then the proposal is, um, if it goes up in number, it goes up for all. So it's either three per stakeholder group, which is 12 reviewers per proposal, or it's four, which is 16 per proposal. Um, Carolyn, you were up first, and then Nacho. Carolyn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. With respect to um, uh, your, your specific question of, you know, 12 or 16, I think that this conversation is very much about the quality of the review, which is what the intention is. Um, it's not about redu reducing the work for the MAC, but it's about increasing the quality and the transparency. I very much um, resonated with the comment from Russia that says, you know, uh, it's much easier to just start here, but then also with the very important point that Juan made, which is very much um, make sure that people understand the flexibility as well so that we can have a full discussion for the workshops that are deemed to be controversial. No, I, th I think that's clear. That's been uh, stated a few times. Nacho, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I think what's kind of uh, required for us as, as MAG members is to bring uh, balance to every decision we, we, we have to do. In that way, we should take, uh, we need balance for gender, we need balance for regions, and we need balance for stakeholders. Uh, uh, we have five regions, and we have four stakeholders. And the thing is, uh, I think that the best way would be to have five members, 
one from from each region, one from and and also take into account from uh, the, the stakeholder. Uh, that that way, I think it would be less. Uh, le le sorry, it would be less uh, hard for the community to understand the change uh, because it, it, I don't know. From the outside, it may sound that we don't want to to work, <laughs> and it, it doesn't sound good. So uh, we are a fortunate group of 55 people, uh, 55 persons that were selected to be here and to do a great job that many of, of the uh, out of the community members will want to be the, here and we're reducing our workload and it's diff i think it may be difficult for to understand for uh, to the community so at least we should uh, guarantee the community would be we will be respecting the balance they, the, uh, the the balance that mac has in in each of the groups Um, I'd, I'd really like us just to strike reducing our workload from this discussion. That has never been the driver um, for this. It's always been. I just want to make sure that I'm kind of underlining, uh, under, underlining that. Um, if we had more time, we would take a break and we'd get a few people to go away and talk to each other and, you know, ferret this out a little bit more and see where we were. Um, I am going to propose that we spend five minutes, ten minutes in here from Miguel on the format of the formats see if we can close on that. I think that's a really short, straightforward discussion. I'm going to think for a few minutes myself whether or not we try and put a number out and see if there's closure, um, take it to the list, um, or remain with the current proposal of three. Um, but Miguel, can you walk us through? That's the last piece we need to know for the call for proposals, um, which again, if you all will call the, the uh, overall schedule we're working to between now and June. So Miguel? Can you walk us through that? If you could take just about five minutes. I think everybody has a good sense of where it would be even faster. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to show you the, the results of the new session format during the last um, IGF. Well, the, um, you, the objectives of this format were to explore new or fresh formats to share projects, views, and ideas, and attract the broader internal community, um, mostly focused on, on youth. Uh, we tried three different formats. One was uh, the, the corner sessions. Uh, I'm not going to explain the format. I'm just going to say that they didn't work. Uh, the, uh, I think the, the main reasons were the uh, lack of communication. They were really difficult to explain. And maybe if we should, we, uh, we would define a subject or a topic to talk about, it would be easier for people to participate. Uh, that the, the the sessions didn't happen. Uh, nobody showed up, so we have to cancel. Uh, then we had the the unconferences. Um, we have good results, not as good as we thought, but um, almost every slot was covered, and we have an attendance of around 40 people uh, going, coming in, in and out. Um, we had better on-site communication. Uh, you will see on the pictures, and. The, and the format was also easy to understand. If you want to present something, you can you could do that. Uh, Luis, <laughs> this was the better communication we had. <laughs> uh, we had the the incredible idea to <laughs> put this board in in the middle of the of the the lunch area, so uh, people got notice of the format, and well, they they completed all the the board. Uh, these were the sessions that took place, and this was the, the room. Uh, the setup was different than we, we asked it to be, but it, actually uh, it was not a problem because uh, it was not, was not a full, a full uh, room, a crowded room, sorry. Uh, well, the, the lightning sessions were the, the best of the three. Um, uh, the, the, main, the main reasons for the success, I think, were the, that non-selected workshop proposals were contacted and they got really enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic about having the, the chance to present um, the, the space and the location provided, provided by the, the host was great. I think it was one of the things that uh, uh, got more attention to them. 
this was a place for the ones who weren't there. We had a lot of uh, participation from people, people who maybe didn't know that the sessions will, will be happening there, and when they got to maybe drink a, a coffee or smoke a cigarette, they, they found out and started participating there. Um, the, the reasons, or uh, Eleonora uh, ran a survey, uh, a survey. Uh, you cannot see <laughs> the question there, but you will see in the results. Um, the question were, uh, what did the, re well, what, what do you, what do you think about, uh, it's okay, Luis, and the other one, the next one, please. Right uh, what do you think about the sessions? Uh, well, people will answer uh, the were great uh, the, uh, and a welcome addition. Uh, it was a great idea, interesting content, an excellent way to include diverse and quick presentations. They enjoy, uh, enjoyed the, the setting, the, uh, the outdoor setting. Uh, it was an easy to find location. I, th I think that was uh, one of the keys. Uh, if you were walking around the, the, the venue, you will see the sessions happening, so you, you'll take part of them. And, uh, well, there were some problems uh, with noise, smoke, s uh, smoke and smell, because it, they were really near the, the lunch area, but uh, they didn't work uh, a big barrier. Uh, uh, when Eleonora asked them how they could be improved, they, they asked that uh, they should be actively promoted. Uh, the, we noticed that. Uh, we communicate them, but it was not enough. It, they could be better. Um, uh, well, they asked for also for remote participation. It was really difficult to have them because uh, the, the space was set up at last time, and uh, it was really difficult to happen. But it, I think it, it could be it could happen in the next IGF. And some said that 20 minute sessions could be made a little longer. That wasn't the idea. The lightning sessions are are short. That's why. Uh, I, I don't think they, they should be longer. They should keep short. Um, how valuable, how, how valuable the, the, the people who responded to the survey consider the program, the sessions were to the IGF program. It was an 80% uh, gave, uh, gave them a five, so they were really, really great. Um, well, for the future, I will ask the Max some, some questions. Should the working group continue with this work? Should the working group uh, continue do, uh, doing or trying new formats? Uh, I think that should be answered later in the, in the list. And if so, should we give a chance to the corner sessions that didn't work? Should we communicate it in, in a better way? Should we uh, gather people differently? Uh, should we continue and give more space to the young conference sessions that they were good, but uh, if we communicated better, maybe they could be, be better enough, uh, enough? And let's go back a little. Uh, should we continue with the lightning sessions as, as they are? Uh, uh, especially uh, for non-selected proposals, or should we include, the, include the, them in the first open call? Uh, that's something we, we should decide. And should we try new formats? And I have a, a proposal uh, I already told, uh, yeah, I think it was yesterday, proposed yesterday. Uh, Luis, if you want to go to. It's the hot topics. Uh, I will explain it very shortly. Some topics that may be hot in March or April, uh, but outdated by the end of December, we maybe we would bring, it, bring them into the IGF. Having hot topics could may, make the IGF more relevant for media covering, um, and how could we bring those topics while keeping the IGF spirit? So uh, the process for selecting workshops is really long. It's really hard. So. If, is there a process we could uh, define to get those topics, uh, uh, those topics inside the IGF? And well, the, the proposal is really simple, uh, and it needs a, a lot of work, uh, of course. But we could reserve uh, X. Is I don't know how many, but we could reserve X rooms uh, for the hot topics. And uh, some to hot topics could be selected 
For example, the procedure may be uh, 10 proposals by the MAG, uh, open them for votation from the community, and then, uh, for example, three, four, or five out of those 10. Uh, Miguel, got, just, just in terms of, I think hot topics or emerging topics is something that we can take up later when we actually talk about okay. the overall shape of the program, because it doesn't affect this call for, okay. for proposals, no so, and, it, and I don't want to rush it. Okay, um, I'll, I'll share the presentation with you in, no, no, in the I, list. No, I mean, I would, I would like you to, um, to just um, be very specific in terms of which, um, from the working group work, which ones the new formats you would propose keeping and ensure are in the call for proposals, and mm -hmm. if there are any that you think um, are not necessary to go forward again, that we just okay. know that quickly. And then some of these other topics are critical. We'll come back to them. The hot topics, emerging topics is, is okay. one that's a fuller discussion. Uh, I would like to keep the three uh, the one, uh, the, the corner sessions didn't work, but, but uh, I think I know uh, why it didn't work. We could do it better. Um, and also, it, the, we could change it or adapt it to the hot topics. Uh, the lightning sessions, I think they really worked, and the young conference also. So I, I would keep the three of them and uh, search a way to combine maybe the hot topic with the corner sessions or something like that. Um, thank you. I mean, and I hate rushing this so much as well. Um, I would like to ask the interpreters, though, if they could stay for sort of an extra 10 minutes, um, just so we don't end this end of the meeting without interpretation for the for the um, online record later. Um, Miguel, you did tremendous work, and I know every time I say I re everybody really liked the new formats and I had a lot of good work, he actually compliments Eleonora um, and Brian as well for helping him with that. So I have, I have never once said, um, Miguel, it was great work without him saying, you know, couldn't have done it without Eleonora. So I'd like to recognize everybody in that. Um, can we get a quick sense of the room here? If not, this is maybe one we can take to the list that we allow those sorts of um, new formats to continue to go forward through the call for proposals? I mean, I think I, I know in past discussions we've had, everybody was just so happy about it. Um, I will make the point, as Chengatai just said, remember, this is not Mexico. It's, it's uh, Switzerland in December. So nice outdoor corners and that sort of thing isn't... I think it could be a great incentive for us to get the IGFs back into September and October, though, for... Um, for the future. Um, so we'll work um, to um, ensure that those are reflected appropriately and in the guidelines piece up front that we're clear on what the, um, any sort of criteria or any additional information that we need to do to have people understand that new formats is a part of it is. And I, I really would like to, to you know, put on the, the table a, a sincere thank you to um, Miguel and to Eleanor for the work. I think it added a, just a great dimension and really it was under your leadership and your sort of continuing championing it that we moved forward. Israel, do you have a, a quick comment on this? That's, that's critical because we need to come to the... Okay, you have the floor. Thank you. Israel Rosas, for the record. Uh, just uh, to note that, the, the, if possible, I, I'd like to join Nacho to develop a more uh, specific uh, description about this, uh, uh, this, this job. That would be great. And actually, if you could do that in the next few days, that would be fantastic, because then we could ensure that any thoughts you had to explain um, them was um, embedded in the guidelines um, that go out at the time of the call for proposal. Um, the, I, 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 I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to go back to the original proposal um, as put forward on the table by the working group. This is not just Russia that put that proposal on the table. It was the working group, um, which had three per stakeholder. I appreciate some of the other comments that have, that have um, come in, but those numbers have been with us for some time and coming in with um, you know, significant numbers and a different objection that late in the process. I think we have to, um, to uh, put some reliance on the work of the... Um, working group. If people are really uncomfortable with that, you need to raise your flag either online or here and say so. But otherwise, we're going to um, go with the working group recommendation of three per. Chengatai? No, no. Uh, just some, something else. So I want to give time. Is everybody in the online queue? Are there any um, significant objections being raised, Anya? 
So, I mean, I want to thank everybody, obviously, for dealing through many hours of quite a detailed discussion. But I think, as Elizabeth said so um, nicely earlier, this really is about the work that we're trying to do. And it is about kind of informing and setting for us um, the right mindset as we actually um, go through. She said that much more elegantly <laughs> earlier. And we could look it up in, in the transcript. Um, you know, we, we, we will watch this process very, very carefully. Um, we will ensure that the front end and back end for the um, thoughtful um, human review, if you will, in the process um, is really everything it can be as we go forward. I do think we um, need to put together a, a package of materials or um, some additional text that um, explain to the community why we're changing the process in this um, manner. Um, it would be great if the working group would actually um, do that as well, since they've been so steeped in the um, in the discussion. And then we'll work towards the um, the launch. The the schedule calls for this to be launched no later than two weeks from now, the middle of March. I've forgotten the date off the top of my head, unless Eleanor or Luis have it. Yeah, I think it was the 15th as well. I could do the math if it wasn't so tired. Um, so I, I think. Um, we need to stick to that timetable. Um, there's a couple of pieces of work that are um, probably nearly complete, probably 85, 90% work, the forms, um, some of the guidelines. We've done this before. We'll um, you know, clean them up and make sure we've taken into account everything we've heard through this discussion and that it's actually reflected in some of those opening paragraphs. So it's clear what the motivation is and what drove this. And I think Renata has had some good words several times in terms of... Um, what we're um, what we're trying to do here. Um, I'd like to thank Renata and the working group. Sorry, Rasha and the working group. Renata was a part of the working group. Rasha and the working group um, for for doing this work and driving it forward. I do think it's going to make a substantive, um, qualitative difference in um, the program and um, the workshops that are chosen, as well as the feedback and value back to the community as well. Um, I actually think we managed to complete everything we needed to for this first MAG meeting, um, not without, you know, probably some little bits of pain and pushing here, which I hope weren't um, too, too much. And I really um, want to thank everybody for their forbearance with um, some of the kind of consensus calls we've had to take here. Um, with that, I want to ask um, Jorge if he has any final words, and then we have a few um, thanks to do here at the end. Thank you. Actually, I, I just wanted to, to thank you all for this excellent uh, work and this excellent cooperation. I think we have enjoyed these three days of, uh, of intensive work. Uh, we've made a, a lot of progress, really, and uh, we are looking forward to uh, continuing cooperating as host country with with uh, Lynn, with the IGF Secretariat, with UNDESA, UNOC, all interested parties, and of course with you, who are uh, really the key to make this program a uh, real success and uh, really interesting for, for all the outside world who, who is really affected by this uh, new digital life, this new digital future we want to shape. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I mean, I'm really excited about what we've done here as well, because there have been many ideas that have come up in the background and discussions, which I think is actually going to make this a really sort of rich um, IGF. And I actually hope that um, the efforts that we're putting in place in different places to really take advantage of international Geneva will actually help future IGFs as well. I think it will broaden participation and outreach, bring some new blood in, and increase the visibility in um, a lot of important um, areas and institutions where we probably haven't had as much as we'd like. So I think it's just a tremendous um, opportunity. Um, I'd actually like to thank um, both Ofcom and the Swiss Foreign Affairs, who are actually both sort of jointly leading and, and taking much of this. And we've had representatives in the back of the room here I can't even imagine what this actually feels like or looks like to someone who's not steeped in a multi-stakeholder community process. Um, but um, thank you very much um, for, for staying here and for all your efforts and, and support um, both to date and over the coming year. Um, I'd like to thank the interpreters. and Thank you, Madam.
as well. Um, both of those efforts are, are really critical um, to supporting participation. I'd actually like to make a separate call out too to all the online participants. I mean, there have been so many people that have gotten up in the middle of the night their time, 2, 3, 4 a.m., to start um, a very long, basically, I think probably a 10 day, a uh, 10 hour day. Um, it's, it's not hard, and the contributions you've made have actually been um, very, very helpful. And again, we're always open to, to ways to improve, but, but thank you so much. The, this discussion would not have been nearly as rich or nearly as helpful without the um, online participation. Um, with that, I think I thank the Secretariat and UNAG for hosting us and wish everybody a bon weekend. And um, thank you very much. We'll see you all no later than mid-June. Thank you.